Hello, everybody. <laughs> How are we doing? We are back at this again. I am here. It has snowed so much. There is probably at least a foot on my balcony right now. You can't see it's so white right now. Um, but if I brought out a ruler, if not a foot, 10 inches is a lot. Uh, Mambo is here. She has been hiding in here all day long because it is cold for birds. You know? She is a sun conure, not a snow conure. Hello, cool gamer. How are you today? What's up? I've had a long work day, but we are back to do the rest of the CL Canon Fantasy and Sci-Fi Book Fair, evaluating if they will, in fact, TBR. 
yesterday, if you missed it, we went through the featured reads, the fantasy and sci-fi sci adventure, and the young adult fantasy and sci-fi books. We have several more categories to go through today. Yesterday, we did 91 of the 199 I discovered there were. 30 of them made it onto my TBR. So, you know, a third of them did. Not bad. We are going over today urban fantasy and paranormal romance, followed by fantasy and sci-fi romance, followed by time travel, portal fantasy, steampunk, cyberpunk, space opera, and sci-fi tales, and fairy tale retellings, myths, and legends, then dystopian, post-apocalyptic, military, and genetics. Those are all of them that we'll be going through. I'm getting back to my spot here. Um, if you didn't already know what this was, this is an online indie uh, book fair featuring almost 200 authors, or at least 200 books, uh, and it's a lot. Uh, two of my books are featured this year. Yesterday we showed you Hisfakak, uh, Humane Society for Creatures and Cryptids. It is available on KU or for print. It's also available in my coffee shop. The link is in the description. You can also, if you've checked out the description, uh, visit my coffee shop for a variety of things. And you can join my viewer pool. If you see a book on here, you're like, you should read that next. You can put it in the viewer pool. Um, and it might come up during my TBR game. Or on Kofi, you can commission me to read a book right here, right now. Stop whatever I'm reading. And it goes into my reading pile for this month. Basically, the next book that I pick up, that's it. So people have done this to me in the past to torture me. Others have done this to be nice to me. It is your choice. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's what's going on. I'm kinda, I am kind of don't want to touch urban fantasy and PNR yet because I will have a guest host and I feel like these would be much more fun to go over with them. So I'm thinking we start at the bottom here and we go to the, oh, I need to actually pull it up there. Ba -ba, the dystopian post-apocalyptic military and genetics. Um, this is definitely a genre I don't venture into. Dystopian and post-apocalyptic more than military and genetics. So I think it'd be good to go over these guys first today. Maybe we'll work our way up and save the horror of paranormal romance um, for last <laughs> because I I tend to be very, very, very ick in the paranormal romance world, especially in the adult world of paranormal romance. I need glasses. What am I doing? We're staring at a screen, Q. Put your glasses on. I'm also very warm because I do keep it very warm in this apartment for her, but she loves to cozy up in this jacket, even though this jacket is very, very hot on me. So I might sweat during this stream. <laughs> Ugh. So, and of course, it's dirty lenses. Dirty, dirty lens. Fine. I'm good. I'm good. So, Hi and welcome. Uh, I'm going to say, you know what, let's look at some highlights from yesterday. We're just going to go through in case you missed some. Um, some of the ones that I'm like, these are the ones I'm most excited for. Um, Purple Door District actually seemed really, really interesting. Uh, Girls of Flesh and Metal was probably the one I'm still thinking about the most right now. Very excited about this. Um, who else? Where we uber into. I think Defender of Histories was also one we were all super, super into. And. Do, 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 do. I think. Oh, High Price is Priya. I think that gone on. Oh, Experimental Magics. That was one that a lot of us were very excited about. Spending scene with Wild Heart of the Storm. Um, looking on here. My Monsters Born and Made. Stealing Cinderella was a big hit. That was that looks really good, to be honest. Between that one and Girls Made of Flesh and Metal, those are probably my top two right now that I want to read. Um, do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Oh, look, Hispacac. What? We did discover, unfortunately, there were some AI covers in here, and I do not uh, support AI. 
the use of AI in cover art. Um, there are artists out there who do a much better job than what AI is coming up with. Last Arbiter! I was, I'm very excited about this. That looks, that actually is, looks really, really, really fun. Um, and that's where we left off. So those were the highlights of yesterday. Hello, Snazzy. I was just going over some of the highlights before we delve into the worlds again. Um, I will be having a guest. That's weird that the poll keeps doing that to you. Um, just saw that. You totally passed that last night. So we're going to start from the bottom and work our way up because I want to do Paranormal Romance when when Fee is here. Because we're going to have fun. So I'm going to go over dystopian, post-apocalyptic, military, and genetics today. First, like I said, we have 108 titles to go through. Uh, some of them may be duplicates, though. So that's 108 that I've counted. But there are, I believe, some duplicates from stuff we've already gone over. Starting from the bottom, and now we're here. <laughs> so we're going to kick it off with the Cardinal Sky. Did you have an opinion? Okay. Wait, did that just have a whole... That has a, a whole different uh, cover than here to here. So that's interesting. I actually like this cover better than this because she's looking at me and I don't like them looking at me and judging me. Um, I like... I, I like the color composition actually of this. This looks this looks well done. I, again, I'm not a person on the cover type of person, but I do like I'm okay with silhouettes and like she's looking away. She just better be blonde. I like the red better, Cardinals Red. Yeah. I do like the red, the kind of magenta we've got going on. But if this character is not actually blonde in the book, I'm gonna get mad. Because that's what books trick me with. So Let's take a look. This is book one of three in the Sky Saga. She thought she could survive anything until now. Ten years of constantly fighting for survival turned Sky into the type of person she always hated. Self-serving, with no hope for the future. Who could blame her? When no human weapon could ever penetrate the alien's technology? Or that's what she thought before she witnessed a stealth-like jet destroy two invader ships, then crash. Enamored by a glimmer of hope, she breaks her cardinal rule and saves the pilot dangling off the side of a cliff. But she should have left him there because now she's paying for it. Forced to join his dangerous mission, she must help him deliver stolen data to the rebel leaders before alien hunters eliminate them. Too bad the rebel base is across a thousand miles of lawless country filled with savage warriors and monsters lurking in the shadows. With the fate of the world resting on her shoulders, can Sky trust the pilot to have her back? Or will he betray her like everyone else in her life? She better figure it out fast because he might be more dangerous than the aliens. Okay. That actually seems really interesting. Uh, it's for me, like it's saying it's like Maze Runner and Walking Dead. I don't see Maze Runner. I see um, the fifth wave, fifth wave and last of us is kind of the vibe I'm getting out of this rather than these. Granted, I have not watched any of this, but I, I'm not getting Maze Runner at all. Let's take a look. The Cardinal Sky. Gotta look at the ones. I, you know me, I love looking at the ones. Of course, there's nothing there. How about the two? Hmm. This person complaining about the U.S. military. I don't care about that. I will believe anything when it comes to, like, alien invasion. So. <laughs> oh, this they're just picking holes. Okay, so nothing like this person's just picking holes, which I don't care about. Um, I'm much more into, like, is there something problematic in this? I don't see that there is. So... Oh, look, you guys can see what I'm currently reading. What? <laughs> I think this is going to go on the TBR. I love me some good... I do love a good dystopian post-apocalyptic. Um, so, we're going to add that. Yay, books. Ba-boom! And that is the first one of the day. Alrighty. 
Let's go back here. And we're going to go to RK King's Eye of the Storm. It's the Eye of the Storm. Sorry, there's a song by 1OK Rock that I love. Okay, we've got a Mad Max Fury Road vibe already. <laughs> Which, not a complaint. I love Mad Max Fury Road. Checking for AI-ness. But it doesn't appear. I don't, I don't think we've got AI. I, I'm okay with the font. I don't hate that. Let's go. A global superstorm. A stranger with a message. A quest for the truth. The only way out is through. In a world ravaged by cataclysm, where survival hangs by a thread, one young pathfinder's destiny is about to collide with the very forces that threaten humanity's existence. Get ready for an adrenaline-fueled journey through the eye of the storm in this gripping post-apocalyptic science fiction tale. Aiden, a resilient survivor, fights tooth and nail for a meager existence within the last haven on Earth, the eye of the storm. The Pathfinders, a tribe in constant motion, are locked in fierce battles with rival factions over dwindling resources and temporary territories. But when rumors spread that their sanctuary is on the brink of destruction, mere survival becomes an untenable reality. Everything changes on the fire nation all the time. When Aiden encounters a mysterious young woman, her words carrying an unfamiliar language that resonates deep within him. Her message, considered blasphemy by the tribes, hints at the existence of a new world beyond the eye, a place of untold possibilities. To uncover the truth, Aiden and his unlikely companions embark on a treacherous journey, plunging headlong into the heart of the storm. Within the tempestuous chaos of swirling winds and crackling lightning, they will confront unprecedented dangers and encounter wonders beyond their wildest imagination. As war relentlessly pursues them through the very fabric of the storm, they must defy their own limits and confront the danger of the world around them, all while discovering the true meaning of survival, courage, and the daunting path to maturity. Will Aiden and his companions endure the perils that await them? Will they unravel the secrets hidden within the storm's tumultuous depths? Prepare to be swept away as you follow their gripping saga, where life is far from certain, and death may be only a lightning strike away. Dune meets Mad Max. Well, 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 hello. Hi. We started in dystopia and a post-apocalyptic. Because uh, I wanted to save paranormal romance for you. <laughs> so far, this one I just like read. This this one feels interesting. Uh -huh. Okay, that doesn't help me, sir. <laughs> Find an editor. <laughs> uh, that's uh, yeah, whatever. I don't care about that. Just the music down a little bit? what? Can you turn the music down a little bit? Oh yeah, for sure. Better. Yeah. Okay. Snazzy says, hi! Long time no see. Yeah, I know. It's been ages, Snazzy. Mad Max in a cage. <laughs> Every time the chapter of the following characters are in it. Okay, that's not... That's a formatting issue. I don't care. Hmm. Hmm. Definitely not a believable happening. Who cares? It's fiction. Not a believable happening? What kind of wording is that? I don't know, but they're not a writer, so. <laughs> okay, so it looks like there's just people complaining about technical issues. I don't care about that. That's fine. They might have updated it since those. Um, but yeah, I you know what? I'll put this one on because this I love a good Mad Max-ish style. Because Mad Max Fury Road is one of my favorite movies. And oh, yeah. I'm I'm cool with that. We're two for two right now today. Nice. I literally just You've started. You've only done two so far? Yeah. I only started 20 minutes ago and I did like intros and recaps. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. I did a recap. So I started on the bottom. Because there's only these many. And uh -huh. Then I was like, either going to work my way up until you got here, or we can do Paranormal Romance next. It's up to you. 
Let's but, yeah. finish this section. Yeah, we're definitely finishing this section first. Next up, we've got Fracture. Let's look. Looking at fingies. <laughs> Everybody look at the fing. I like that she's in a tie-dye tank top. Like, that's funny to me. Yeah. I think I've seen that bag on Amazon, you know? Yeah. I like the the the, the font's really cool. The font is cool. I like that. This looks cool. It does not, as far as I can tell, it does not look like AI. Yeah, it doesn't. It looks pretty solid. Oh, eating pot pie. I had shepherd's pie. Oh, That's I'm so jealous of both of you. I don't have any other pie, though. I wanted to have my dog, but it's literally a foot of snow. Like, I could honestly put a, my ruler in it, and it would disappear right now. It's pretty bad. I don't get any pie today. Well, then you're, you're fired. I'm sorry. I'm just... Wait, this is book two! No! No! <laughs> Vortex is the first one. Let's look at the first one. All right, looking here. Oh, she's. Oh, wait. What happened to the baby? <laughs> uh, he got a different bag. <laughs> okay. I uh, think those are different people. Maybe it could be. It could the be other two people look like people of color. Oh, can you take this off now. Are you good? Yeah. Are you gonna poop? Okay. Oh my gosh. Poopy bird. Poopy bird. Okay. What do you want to do? You going to the couch? Where are you going? Can I take off this jacket? It's really hot in here because, you know, she's a tropical bird. So I want to strip. <laughs> but she's been in the lapel all day. Yeah. So, you know. Okay, let's read about the vortex. Where's my pen? There we go. What if there are no coincidences? Lenny. Good-natured and God-fearing ex-ranger hides from his past. Mm. Ron, Ron, self-declared master of the universe, revels in power he did not earn. When weeks of relentless rain culminate in a Category 5 hurricane, find out who will survive as the Vortex reveals the deep assignment that binds four strangers. Because there are no coincidences. That did not give me enough. Nope. Who's Lenny? Who's Ron? <laughs> I don't get it. Uh, that didn't give me enough. Wait, so what's the... Hold on, in Fracture. I want to see, is it... St it's still following Lenny. And oh, Seismologist yeah. Petra Amaryllis. What a name. That definitely is a name. So it's still following Lenny. So what happened to Ron? What happened to Ron? Where's Ron? That's my grandfather's name, by the way. Oh. We called him Bapa, but his name is Ron. And so every time I say Ron, I have to say it like my grandma did. Ron! It's great. <laughs> Missy Bapa! He was awesome. Nobody's telling me anything useful. <gasps> oh my gosh, Iris! Hi. Seven hydrates because you have been gone for so long. Um, can I hydrate with talking? No! I don't, I don't think that's hydrating. <laughs> I, don't, I don't quite think that does it. Your dad's a run! <gasps> Would have rather had a shepherd's pie, but I got Marie Callender. Mine was a Marie Callender shepherd's pie, though. Sassy. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Um, closed door adult themes. That's nice. Uh, Iris, I did not say Takis. I said Tahin, which is the, like, the, the chili lemon, or chili lime seasoning. No! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the only thing that's setting me off here is the, the God stuff. Yeah. That's what I'm, that's kind of preventing me from it, but if it's not preachy, then I'm okay. It feels like it's a little preachy, though. I don't know if it is, though. They say they aren't, but it isn't. 
Uh, this reviewer's preachy. <laughs> That's preachy. When 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 the the phrase God fearing enters it, yeah. That's where but I ah oh, man, I love a good like the nature destroys the world yeah, story. Yeah, those are fun. They're really that's one of my stupid favorite movies is San Andreas. Okay, leave me alone. <laughs> Fucking um, I love that freaking movie. <laughs> what's that one with Pierce Brosnan? Something no. Funny? With the rock, <laughs> no, no, the, uh, oh. there's Dante's Dante, Peak. Dante's Dante's Peak. Peak. That was another good one. See, I love Twister, my all time favorite movie. Mm -hmm. I love, I love natural disaster movies and books. And it was not an option at your grocery store. That's so rude. That's rude. Um. Yeah, this this part it, that's the part that's that's keeping me from wanting to put it on my TBR. And why is he a self declared master of the universe? Is, is Ron? I'm assuming Ron's the antagonist who did something. Have you guys ever seen the movie? It's not not the superhero one, but it's the spy one called The Avengers with Uma no. Thurman mm -hmm. and Sean Connery. Sean Connery's the villain, and his whole villain plan is controlling the weather. That's beautiful. And there's like this weird evil supervillain meeting where they all dress up in giant like teddy bear suits and they yeah. fight teddy bears. It's really funny. Um, I think um, who's wait, wait who's it? It's, uh, Ray Fiennes is the other spy with Uma Thurman in it. I think it's Ray Fiennes. That's a, oh, I should watch that movie again. It's so weird. But that's the vibe I'm getting from this Ron character. <laughs> so I, I do think, yeah, I'm a little worried about the God-fearing part. I don't know, though, but I love this. Like, look at this, Stormy. Yeah. But it's also like a baby. <laughs> I what do you think? Either, either decision on your part, honestly. I kind of want to put it on there. I am really a sucker for this type of stuff. And if it sucks, yeah, it sucks. Overlook, yeah, the, the fun, you know, because I've read other indie books that, that have that religious aspect, yeah. And I've been like, it's a bit much, but I still really like the story, yeah. So I'm okay in getting through it's just if it's like very like homophobic, transphobic type, you know, white supremacy type of religion yeah. that I'm like, no, this might just be, you know. Um, the world is ending. Hey, God, please don't murder me. <laughs> yeah. like, yes. So I think I'm going to put it on. The Vortex. Let's see if, who's it by again? Uh, Ian Feldman. Ian B. Feldman. Different, different cover. Better cover, in my opinion, because it doesn't have people yeah. on it. Let's put it on there. All right, we're three for three today. Iris, I'm so glad you're here. I like the covers, but you're right about it being a little weird to mention God fearing the synopsis. Yeah, that's that's my vibe right now with that. All right, next up, All Things Lost. And I didn't check if Mambo actually made it to her room. Hold on. Oh, he kind of flew into a window today. Ah, uh, good. Okay, good girl. She did. She got spooked. I accidentally, like, I was in the kitchen making her breakfast, and I leaned to the um, stove, and, like, I guess the handle wasn't fully on, and it made a big noise, and she flew into the library and smacked into the window. She's okay, though. She is unharmed, but things can spook her right into a window. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> I do love that you're here. I haven't like seen you in chat forever. And we've all been like, where is Iris? Like you can go back to all the other screens because like we're all shaking our bottles, going, Where's Iris? We're all yeah. gonna die of dehydration now. <laughs> we missed you, but I'm happy you're here because we're gonna do the paranormal romances probably next. And I'm really excited for everyone to participate in that. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> 
all things lost. This girl looks like the world is ending and she still is getting a bill for her credit card payment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It looks good though. Like I, I normally I'm like, ugh, with people on cover, I don't hate this one as I think it, it properly brings in the vibe. Yeah. Like, it doesn't look she does like look like to be a pretty person. Yeah. She looks like she's been through it. Things have gone to shit. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh no, we've got another inner world. Are you ready? <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> we did. We we were calling, we were praying, we're like our goddess has abandoned us, you know. I was getting ready for my bunker, you know. <laughs> right. Ahem. In a world ravaged by resource wars, society has crumbled, leaving only chaos and desolation in its wake. Daniel and Eva, two brilliant scientists, race against time to discover the key to survival. As they delve deeper, they discover a chilling secret that could shatter the last remnants of hope. In the heart of the Basin Territory, their daughter Mia embarks on a perilous quest. She is determined to uncover the truth behind a brutal murder and how it's connected to what her parents are hiding. Cocaine. Just kidding. Her journey takes her through old top secret tunnels, facing off with her crazy aunt and up against those whom she holds most dear. Can Mia unearth the truth and chart a new course for humanity and her family? Or will the secrets and mistakes of the past be its downfall this summer? <laughs> that actually looks really cool. I think it sounds decent. Zero reviews, and yet, you people. You people. I think that looks good. Hell yeah. I really am a dystopian girly. I can't help. You went on a... We were on a break? Iris, were we on a break? <laughs> All things lost. All things lost by who again? D.L. Bunch. There we are. Wha-bam! 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 Wa-boom. All right. Four for four. I think maybe this first row, it might make it fully through. I think right around here we might have some issues. <laughs> Maybe that's where we're gonna have it. We should have turned your faucets and praised it and prayed. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next up we've got rise. All right. We do have skinny girl in a tank top though. Yeah. She's way too pretty to be in this setting. Yeah, like she has got perfectly She's done makeup and hair. She just filmed a get ready with me for the apocalypse TikTok. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Take a lesson from the other one. Mia looked like she'd been through hell already. I, I don't hate the title though. Title, I mean, um, the title is good. Can you go back over to the, the building to the uh, right? Uh, top part. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, her hair is, she's advertising her new, like, skin and hair vitamins in this ad in the apocalypse. Yeah. Like, in the apocalypse. Like, the, the world apocalypse. may be falling yeah, apart, but yeah. your hair doesn't have to. Yeah. Like. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Mm. What's all the little, I'm trying to figure out what the splatters are. What are these weird splatters? No, wait, those are, are they... Wait, this part is plants. What are these? Uh, the AI getting confused with what it was doing. Probably. Yeah. Probably. Oh, no. It's a first person POV synopsis. It means I have to read it like a bitch. Okay. Because I'm going to read it like how I think she talks. Okay. Okay. I don't like new people. They come into our town and don't know the rules. They get up in our business. They mess things up. 
That's why when James Maddock walks into my bar, I'm suspicious. He might act like a nice guy, but for sure he spells trouble. And that's the last thing I need just when I've got my life on track. All I want is to keep my sister safe, but suddenly my tentative peace with the local gang, the Iron Fist, is exploding. People I thought I could trust are turning out to be enemies in disguise. Total fakers. Oh my god. And people I was certain were dangerous seem to want me on their team. Oh my god. Everyone's like fighting over me. I don't know where to turn. I don't know who is a friend and who a foe. What I do know is this. When the dust settles, the only person I can rely on to have my back is me. What about your fucking sister? What about you? You you don't trust your sister? Post-apocalyptic romance series. Four books. I don't like her. Uh-uh. I don't like her. Nope. Even if I hadn't read it in, like, the high school bitch voice, I don't like her. Yeah. Um, like, I would have believed this more if this cover wasn't like this. If it had, like, her and her sister. And, like, yeah. in an action moment of, like, protection or something. That would be way more appealing to me if we're going to have people on the cover. Right? Who's able to run a bar during the apocalypse? How do you pay? Money is relevant? I don't know. Ugh. The Iron Fist, really? Yeah. So, this one's, yeah, this is the first no of the day. Uh -huh. I... Come on, give me something. Okay. <laughs> Did not deliver on the premise. Doesn't read post-apocalypse at all. It reads war-torn area. Apparently meteorites hit centuries ago. There's no explanation <laughs> to what happened. Oh, I don't like that. I need explanations. Uh-huh. There's casinos. <laughs> yeah. There are casinos and hotels in a small town. It's not a romance. The book is setting up the romance in future books. Main beef is pretty much every character is unlikable and trustworthy and confusing. Okay. They keep changing whether they're a good guy or a bad guy. Harley is stubbornly delusional. Her name is Harley. I already hate her. <laughs> what? She's a known gang informant, as in everyone knows she's an informant, and yet she's convinced that she was under the radar. Yeah. I'm, yeah, this is the first no of the day for me. Not for me! Not for me, <laughs> Harley Quinn. Mm. Looks like a freaking teenager. <laughs> yeah. All right, altered. Okay, we have a red-haired protagonist. <laughs> um, why is her? She's gray though. Is she alien? Altered. Maybe. A lot of moons. Oh, whoops. Okay, maybe not AI. I don't see anything that. Yeah, nothing screams super AI for me. Yeah. Maybe a little bit in the hair, but. Mm. Mm -hmm. Not too bad. No. Nah. All right. Altered is by Cameron Coral. It's not pulling you in, but it's not. Yeah, it's not a bad cover. Um. I could honestly see this being like a movie poster, but it's like one of those that's yeah. not a very advertised movie. You just kind of go to the theater and you're like, oh, what's that? Yeah. Yeah. All right. The moment you turn 17. Oh. How long have we been 17? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they take you away. All right. In the oh, grim no. dystopia of what was once New York, orphans are forcibly herded into youth improvement centers. Oh, is this Ivy Ridge? <laughs> Thank you, Iris. Woo! Yeah! Uh, there's, only, there's one day every orphan looks forward to more than any other. Their 17th birthday. The day when they'll be whisked away to a better life. But, is that Ida? I would say Ida, yeah. But Ida Sarek knows better. The honey-coated promises are too good to be true. She yearns for the rough edges of the city streets. The companionship of the ragtag family she built among her fellow orphans. We all know I love a good ragtag. They take her away like the others, imprisoning her in an underground lab. There, questions are met with punishment and silence rewarded with invasive experience. experiments. 
When despair threatens to break her, Ida uncovers an unexpected side effect of the genetic manipulation. A miraculous hearing power pulses within her. As potent and baffling as it is empowering, can she master this newfound ability in time to defy her captors and seize back her life before they shatter her spirit? Fans of Hunger Games and Divergent will love it. Okay. I didn't hate that. It's YA. I hate that. Um, I don't hate YA. I, I, I love a good, like, let's alter the kids story. <laughs> That sounds weird. But like, you know, like I love um the one like Stephen King story that I really do like is Firestarter. Mm. So that kind of thing, you know, I'm a Stranger Things curl. Yeah. That kind of vibe. I'm I'm into that. So four book series. Oh, she cuts her hair and cuts it even shorter. Oh, and then grows it back. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> this is it's your transformation of your hairstyles. <laughs> then I don't think we're going to be growing it back out you never know I never know or it's like you just it, it's you you grow it back out unintentionally because you just didn't have the spoons to cut it again that can happen yeah. that's what yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay don't care about that review that doesn't no it doesn't I don't care if it jumps from scene to scene sure Rush the book instead of going to details. Well, nothing problematic. Hot dog, happy day off. Woo! Hi, Tag. I think this one I will add. Who's this by again? Cameron Coral. Altered. Cameron. Oh, different cover on Goodreads. Interesting. Very different vibe. Very. Very different vibe. All right, so that's five. Woo! Um, am I as am I as spotty as you are to me? No. Okay, because the internet was dragging there for a little bit, I guess. Let me know, guys, if my power is gonna go out. Like, like I said, we've got a, over a foot now. It looks like. I'm curious. Should I go out and tell you guys how much it actually is? Yes. Okay. Let's find out. Where's my ruler? I think my ruler's still on the table. Or no, it's not. Where's my ruler? Oh, there it is. Literally right here. Okay. Here. You guys can kind of, maybe it'll focus a bit. You see how much that is? Oh. What's blocking you? Oh, my fan. <laughs> I'm scared. Oh, I did it backwards. <laughs> 11 inches. Holy shit. We are at 11, 11 inches. <laughs> yeah, is my it ruler. still smelling? Yes, yes it is. Has it, it is not even briefly? No. No, it has not. <laughs> Ow. You are stopping. I am wet now. I'm a little wet. Whew. You got two or three feet in, in the entirety of January. We're getting all of it now. <laughs> <laughs> we've been we've been fairly dry. And this is wet snow, which we've needed. But like. I don't even know if that's accurate because I think because it didn't start like building on the bite base of my deck like it did on my balcony side. So my balcony is actually deeper than here. That makes sense. But I can't reach my balcony <laughs> from there. Oh, so. Yeah. So it's probably an actual foot right now. So it's wild, wild times. Also, I was going to start my e indie ebook of the Circus Infinite today, by the way. And then I realized I don't have the ebook. And it's not you on KU. Nope. I thought I did. And I don't. And then, but luckily, 
Pango, I still have some Pango books and someone was selling it for $5. But I went, nice. I can buy that because I'm not actually buying it. But I was very panicked for a second. Because even yeah. the K, even if the, K the Kindle was $6.99. It wasn't even like, oh, I could spend a dollar or something. Nope. No. So we're starting another arc right now. I get myself so excited doing this, guys, that I give myself asthma attacks. <laughs> I'm fine. All right. Second row of the dystopian, post-apocalyptic, military, and jernerders. All right. We're doing Hope Drowned. Hope Drowned. Sucks for her. I mean, oh, wait. What is on this? Oh, what? The internet is really, really rough. No! We have... Oh, she's got green hair. She's got very green hair. Very green hair. All right, LB Carter. YA disaster. All right. Okay, the waters of chaos are rising. It's time to sink or swim. Serena hasn't spoken since the day she was found waterlogged on a riverbank. Her lips are sealed around a lone, horrific memory, keeping her deadly ability a secret. When a bully begins tormenting her, she fears it's his life at stake. Mysterious new student, Noor, comes to Serena's unwanted defense while seeking clues about a fateful car accident. He needs to find what his family was hired to protect, but high school is more difficult than an undercover investigator anticipated. When they discover links between her past and his missing colleague, Noor and Rena fear foul play. The murky waters the past are churning in this small coastal town, dredging up dangerous truths that could put Rena's life under a microscope and Nor in the line of fire. Why is his name Nor? Like, what is that short for? Norton? I don't know. All right, I was Norm. trying to figure it out. I've Norm. heard girls called Nor. I've never heard of a guy called Nor, and I'm trying to place it. Maybe it's Norton. Storms are rolling in from all sides, threatening friends and family. Can Nor find a way to keep them from going under, or will Rena's truth surface and unleash a maelstrom of her protective fury? This isn't gripping me. Oh, Norman no. would be Norman, but they would short it to Norm, wouldn't you? I don't know. I'm not totally into this one. It doesn't it sounds super really flat to me. Yeah, it just doesn't. I was I was thinking this was going to be another like. Uh, post-apocalyptic or like uh, apocalyptic yeah. in general, like oh the world is going underwater or something and this feels more like mystery thriller yeah with maybe a bit of sci-fi aspect to it why a paranormal read um yeah i just i don't think this one is f-bombs galore do not let your young adult read this book. Because uh, definitely they've never heard the F word before as a teenager. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that's so funny. Well, maybe I will read it now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, this, is this something bad? I just, I don't think this one's for me. Yeah. I'm glad. Uh, yeah, I, I have it. This is the first time doing this, but it's because there's this online book fair right now. Um, so that's that's how I'm able to do this. It's you should if you haven't watched the replay of yesterday, yesterday was a wild time as well. Uh it's it's pretty entertaining. And it's good for, you know, if you want to get books on your TBR. But also yeah. I have opinions <laughs> and sometimes I'm a little bit mean. I understand <laughs> that. I'm probably going to be mean about this one because, hello, why, oh, hi, Aslan? Mad Max meets Chronicles of Narnia. <laughs> Lucy <laughs> Pevensey <laughs> ain't going to put up with shit anymore. <laughs> so, did you guys ever see the show The 100? No. Or the book? Okay, well, there's a show called The 100. This is definitely a character from it. Uh Wait, the panda? The pandas are coming? I guess. Like, what is she? What is she holding? What is this? I it's like a don't... really big switchblade. I don't know. What is that? I want to pet the the baby here. 
I want to pet it. It is baby. It looks, I, I don't know. Let's find out. What is Blaze? Oh, God, it's a reverse harem. I'm already hating that. Okay. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> nope. <laughs> but I'll still read the, the, the synopsis for you. In the post-apocalyptic world of Blaze, the remnants of humanity struggle to survive amidst the ruins. Dr. Isaacs, a small town scientist, had once discovered the cure for cancer, but his breakthrough had unintended consequences. All right, so we're stealing from I Am Omega or whatever that movie is. A virus was created targeting only humans and leaving few immune to its deadly effects. Kayla is one of the fortunate survivors. Sorry, I can't hear the name Kayla without thinking of the Legally Blonde musical. Because you know what I'm talking about. No, I have to be musical for some slut named Kayla. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, Kayla is one of the fortunate survivors, yet her immunity comes at a heavy cost. Scarred and hardened by the harshness of the wasteland, she fights relentlessly to stay alive alongside her loyal companion, Baby. <laughs> this baby. I Together, they navigate a world where danger lurks at every turn, where trust is a luxury rarely afforded, where beings with inhuman powers are the only ones to thrive and the rest are left to claw their way through hellish conditions and fight against monsters who crave their flesh. Driven by a burning desire of for vengeance. I like that they bold certain things. Yeah. Kayla embarks on a personal mission to find and bring justice to the man, man responsible for her mother's murder. With a chilling determination, she seeks to make him suffer as he made her suffer. But fate has other plans in store for her. Jesus long. Amidst the chaos and brutality of this ravaged world, four men emerge, each claiming a connection to Kayla. Okay, now I'm going into six. He says we have a connection. I think this time it's different. It's fine. They see beyond her broken exterior and believe she is capable of love and healing. Oh, so they're going to fix her. <laughs> Can Kayla find it within herself to open her heart to them? Or is she too damaged to embrace their affection? Oh. As destinies intertwine, a greater purpose reveals itself. Kayla and her newfound companions are destiny, destined, destined, I can talk, destined to save the world. But first, they must embark on a journey of self-discovery. Together, they must confront the truth of who they are and face the challenges that lie ahead. The echoes of war reverberate through time, forever changing the course of humanity as Kayla navigates the treacherous landscape. She learns that even the darkest of times, people can evolve, adapt, and find hope amidst the ruins. That was way too long of a synopsis. And I still know nothing. I know that I'm not reading it. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I know. I love that. This, okay, it says baby. We don't know if the lion is baby, but I'm assuming this is baby. And that's the only good point about this. My sister just sent me a video from Quinn. Um, I saw that Mambo had found a hiding place, but I can't find Quinn, actually. I think he might be getting a little cold, too. So, yeah, if you see Quinn anywhere, uh, let me know. What? Who's under there? Are you a bird? Yes. Yes. No. no. Do you want to say hi, Teffy and Bumbo? Yes. Where are you going? I'm my tractor boobs. All right. We're going to go watch a tractor movie. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I sent him a video earlier of Mambo hiding in the lapel, and he likes to do whatever Mambo's doing, so he's hiding under a blanket in this one. Uh, but then he wants his tractor movie, so... <laughs> <laughs> anyway anyway uh yeah this is a no for me i like this part the, the beginning of it actually wasn't yeah it wasn't bad it sounded okay before the romance part started but as soon as you reverse harem me i'm out any yeah. kind of harem i'm out <laughs> reverse or not <laughs> I, i'm not into the harems Right. Okay, I'm probably going to hate this one. It's a shirtless man. He's only wearing a vest. What are you? Who are you? Uh, they, they look like they're going for Negan. A little bit, Negan. Yeah. A little bit, Negan. A little bit... A 
a little bit Jared Padalecki as well. Yeah, a little bit. You put them together. <laughs> he looks 55. <laughs> I, I'd give him 43. Yeah, he's probably in his 40s. What, what, what is his tattoo? The gamer? What? <laughs> I don't know. World Fallen Pandemonium. I already am very anti this just because it is shirtless man on cover. We all know I am not a person who likes people on covers, even more so shirtless people on covers. Oh, the, no. Uh, oh yeah. no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh God. Hold on. I know better than to trust bad boys, but that was before the end of the world. I was a normal college student when the pandemic hit. Now the world I've always known is becoming a dystopian nightmare. Taking refuge with my cousin seemed like a good idea at the time. After all, he'd been uh, After all, he'd been preparing for the apocalypse for years. Nothing could have. Oh no, okay, it's not. Nothing could have prepared me for his best friend, though. Ripper Solis, ex-army ranger and current motorcycle club enforcer, is not a nice guy. I shouldn't trust. I shouldn't trust him. But I do. Ripper's everything I ever wanted. Sexy and commanding, protective, with law and order breaking down and the vile threat looming over our heads. It's not long before I need his strength and resourcefulness as <gasps> We need his touch. But in this dark new world where I've already lost so much, can I really afford to lose my heart too? I hate this. <laughs> oh man. You know who else was called Ripper once upon a time? Giles from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um. Yep, I hate that. I hate that. That is not. Why are there five books in this? <laughs> what does the other covers look like? Hold on. Oh, he gets even more naked. No. <laughs> look how naked he is. No, I hate this. Witchy <laughs> <laughs> Giles, yeah. Who am I supposed to hold this book to read if I'm busy putting my wrist on my arm? <laughs> <laughs> Really? Oh, that, 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 that they called him Ripper when he was a badass teenager. Ripper. You want a Buffy off? You want to do a Buffy trivia off? Let's go. <laughs> oh my God. Look at this. He, okay, he puts a jacket on in the third one and then he take, he fully takes it off. He gets tattoos by the end. I had a haircut. A haircut? Okay, now he's not giving that. What is he giving me? Oh, oh. 90s movie. Nineteen Maybe. Is it? Oh, Finn Rasmussen. Okay, that's who that is. Wait, is everyone a different guy? Because that looks like the same dude. Yeah. Who's this dude? Yeah, so Rupert's his actual name, but the nickname was Ripper. Who's this? Who's this? Kyle Chamberlain. Wait, there's like, okay, is each one of these a different dude? Because this is, who is this? This is Ripper Solis. Wait, this is the, what? What? I don't even know. Nina, welcome back. <laughs> We're in this land right now. Okay, I'm moving on to salt. This I have high hopes for. It looked nice. Well, like, I, I just saw, I didn't watch the interview, but there was an interview recently from another person I watch who interviewed the author for this. Okay. So I already have higher expectations for this book. Um, I like, I do love the cover, though. Me too. I love it. There's a good boy on the cover. There is. There's a good baby. Um, I like the style of the art on this. Looks great. I don't hate silhouettes. I'm okay with silhouettes. Um. <laughs> this land looks in love with Virginia Hanson and the other one. <laughs> what do you do with a drunken sailor when the world is underwater? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I can't not. 
Yeah, it could be good girl. It could be good girl, girl. We don't know yet. It's named salt, but two worlds after that it has the word spice. Is it salty or spicy? <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, a spicy new adult. It does have spicy in it. Uh, Shoot. All right. Well, let's find out. In a brutal, oh, sorry. In a brutal dystopian water world where survival depends on sailing skill and smarts, Bird Housley is a beautiful disaster, or maybe just a disaster, period. A drunken sailor and a magnet for chaos, Bird is one bad decision away from watching her life go completely down the drain. Her only lifeline, level-headed sailing teacher Sargo Paz. Where did that name come from? Sargo is a second generation immigrant striving to prove himself in a city where no one looks like him. And despite Bird's salty demeanor, he seems determined not to give up on her. But when a cryptic message from her dead brother sets Bird on a quest to find answers about her past, one reckless act puts her and Sargo in the crosshairs of a dangerous underground organization hellbent on their demise. Forced to flee their hometown, they embark on a treacherous voyage across the salt, where pirates, perilous seas, and close quarters stir up emotions neither of them expected. And they discover that the organization they're running from holds darker secrets than they ever imagined. Okay, I don't hate it. I don't either. I don't either. Pass yeah. is the first piece. Okay. So I want to know what they mean, like, no one looks like him. Because... Where is the set? That's my question. It's a water world. Yeah. I don't know. It would, yeah, honestly, I don't hate that. Helium? <laughs> Maybe? <laughs> what do we got from the author? Oh, no, don't, don't do that. Stop, stop doing that. I do love wa water world. Also, one of my favorite movies. Water world. Good movie. Love that movie. It's very slow burn. Okay. That's That's Much good. happier about that. Friends to lovers. Force proximity is, is kind of fun. Yeah. Cinnamon roll MMC with crispy edges. I love that. I do animal companion. Oh, and there's queer rep apparently in this somewhere. Fuck yeah. Okay. For oh my God. Five. Salt. Sand. Soul. Paz. Passage. We stopped the S's. We couldn't. Yeah. I mean, you could have called it Sargo because his name is Sargo. And then what's an S word for passage? So, I don't know. What's an S word for passage? I don't know. <laughs> Cerny. Yeah. <laughs> Cerny. Yeah. I, I don't hate that. Okay, well, that doesn't help me. I don't like you DNFers. DNFers, stop it. If you DNF for no reason, really, I don't I don't value your opinion. All right, I'm putting salt on the list. Do it. Salt. Salt. Ah, savior of the universe. I'm not. You ever seen that movie Salt with Angelina Jolie? No. I did. Wait, maybe. Maybe. The titles are so basic. How dare they? <laughs> <laughs> I wish they kept all the titles starting with S and D. Yeah, same, 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 same. Pattern. All right. Uh, oh, wait. Ca didn't we already get a Cameron Coral? This one. Cameron Coral, different, 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 different. Okay. Well, I already put one Cameron Coral on my list. Yeah. Can the other one? We have iRobot. Rusted, wasteless. So yeah, this is a whole different series. Mm -hmm. So they did what I did and just put the first books of their series on here. Steel Guardian. Oh, it's about AIs. They better have not used an AI cover. <laughs> All right. A timid robot. Oh, I'm already sold. A timid robot protects an abandoned baby in a post-apocalyptic world. Yeah. What? Is it Emma? <laughs> <laughs> I just... 
Mm. 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 I'm talking too much. Okay. <laughs> yes, add it. Yeah, DNF itself is an opinion. Uh, when I DNF, I'm saying this book is over. I will not waste my time. Well, that's the thing. It's it is an opinion. I don't want to. I don't want like extensive reviews from someone who's DNF'd. Unless because, it was like because of some traumatic thing. Or yeah, yeah, unless it's a really really important thing to know for another reader. If you DNF just because it's boring for me, I don't. You can do that. But if you're posting that as a review, because the reviews are for readers, but they're for also for other readers, for us to judge it. So I get annoyed when I see reviews that are like one star, DNF'd up 10%. I didn't like it. And that's it. That is zero value to me. <laughs> zero yeah, value to other like, readers. If they were like, I couldn't deal with the pacing. It seemed too slow up to this point. It might get better, but that's just my thing, you know? Like, I think that that's <laughs> Let's find out. The AI uprising destroys society. No internet, phones, or electricity. Machines turn against humans. The military soldier bots have one function, seek and destroy. Block is a simple cleaner bot. Oh, it's in the lives of puppets. I'm sorry. <laughs> Block is a simple cleaner bot programmed to scrub floors and serve hotel guests. Forced to leave his city, he must avoid dangerous soldier bots and find a new hotel he can call home. But when Block discovers a human infant, his surprise attachment to the girl compels him to protect her while traveling across the metal-infested wastelands of America to a safe haven. When he encounters Nova, a surly soldier who becomes an unlikely ally, they must tackle the biggest challenge of their lives. Together, they face mortal danger from bands of scavengers, militaristic soldier bots, and combat mechs. A cyborg bounty hunter will stop at nothing to find Block and the child, an infant who holds the key to humanity's future. <gasps> okay, I'm into this. I'm, I'm into more than the other one. I'm here for this. Oh, there's five. Look at this shit. Look at this shit. Yeah. <laughs> Reviews of things just has this. Okay. Yeah, this seems fun. This seems right up my alley. That seems fun. If there's no internet, phones, or electricity, then did the robots take it away? Because how is there such advanced robots? I think, I don't know. We'll have to find out. Maybe they're all solar-powered uh, robots. Or, or, or they're able to get themselves their own, like, generate their own energy somehow. Yeah, something like that. I'll be right back. Okay. That seems super fun, though. All right, and we are on to the final in. <laughs> it's also a cute. That's all that matters. It, it gave me In the Lives of Puppets vibe. And if you haven't read In the Lives of Puppets, I highly recommend reading that. Uh, we're going to the last one in the dystopian post-apocalyptic military and genetics category with Ruins of Ivy, the Aurora Project. Oh, those are those are furry people. Well, those two aren't. These two are. This is interesting. In interessant. Okay. Mm. We're, we, we scan for AI for those new. We're looking for, was this AI cover? Uh... It might be. There's some particle breakage in the back there. <laughs> Wolverine, that you? We've definitely got some sort of like cat person there. And then werewolf. Per this looks like a Ramus Lupin sort of situation, like third movie. But we do, I, I do think the background at least might be AI. Um. Might be composed with AI, but not fully AI. I'm not entirely sure. But that right there in the middle, that particle dis disapparating there, <laughs> dissolving building. Yeah. Yeah, a little more work. It could be a movie poster. Maybe all the people are supposed to look different. Who knows? It's a lot going on for a tiny space. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. 
This is an RPG. Okay, lit RPG. So that makes a little bit more sense that we would have that. Oh, goodness. Okay. We were, I was examining Ruins of Ivy. Uh-huh. I think I found some AI. Oh. I don't know if it's fully AI or if it's just the background and it's composed with it. Uh, settle on the characters for a second. Ah, uh, scooch over to the other guy. Hold on, let me let me make the screen a bit. I bigger. wish I could get closer, but I can't. Yeah, that's fine. Um. Oh, Iris, I will be going for so long. We only I, got through half of these yesterday, so we'll be here. I can't entirely tell, but I don't think so. Yeah. What? Wait. What? That guy looks like his arm kind of fades into nothing. Who? Uh, the guy who's furthest to the left, and his legs kind of don't look like they're entirely doing the right thing. I don't know. That could just be a body positioning. But it also looks like color-wise, his leg kind of fades into the ground. Maybe. In that plant. Maybe. I'm iffy on that one. Let's see what it's about. There were whispers that many years ago, humanity controlled all life on Earth. Was that true? I guess we'll find out. Left for dead after a brutal beating, Flint has a choice to make that could change the planet forever in ways no one could fathom. When news of his best friend's kidnapping reaches his village, he is left alone while others go to save her. We need commas, sir. <laughs> what yeah. is a good man to do but fight for what he believes in and finds his best find his best friend before it's too late? Leaving the safety of his home and all he knows, Flint jumps headlong into a new earth that is far more deadly and dangerous than anything. What? No, this is when you don't wait <laughs> than anything he had faced before. As he races across the new landscapes of his home, he is confronted by many enemies, plants, <laughs> Sorry. many enemies, plants, <laughs> <laughs> Plants, robots, and even family will try to slow him down, but nothing will stand in his way of saving his best bestie. So the question must be asked, what is true friendship worth in a post-apocalyptic world, and would you have what it takes to save it? Will Flint, or will he even have what it takes to survive? Okay. Fans of the hundred! And I haven't seen Gamma World. I don't know what that is. Let's look for AI in the second cover. Maybe that'll... Why? Oh. I don't like him. Uh, yes, I am going to say that is AI. AI. The bottom of the train. How, how like, the edges kind of go into nothing. Huh? And the shape of the wheel. How the edges on, like, the front of the, tr uh, the train thingy. I like they they start looking like they're the edges, but then they're just like random lines outside of there, and then the shape of the wheel. That's definitely AI. Okay. Well, that's unfortunate. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Even looking at the grass up close, I'm like. Mm hmm. <sighs> Oh, what? Doctor looks possible too. Looks what? Oh, possible. yeah. <laughs> that's an AI photo. Yep. I think that's AI. Nope. Sorry. I was actually thinking that one was going to make it on my list, but nope, it's not. Mm -mm. All right. Well, that settles dystopian post apocalyptic military and genetics. So out of 12, seven of those made it onto my list. Not Do bad. Go to fairy tale retellings. Time travel, portal fantasy, steampunk, cyberpunk, space opera, and sci-fi tales. Fantasy and sci-fi romance. Or urban fantasy pan and paranormal romance. Urban fantasy and paranormal romance. Well, okay, buckle up! <laughs> this is where I'm going to probably get mean! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry! 
again, like what you like. Everyone can read whatever they want to read. We are talking about my personal taste and ics when it comes to cover art and content, okay? If you're into this stuff, I might be judging you a little bit, but my opinion doesn't totally matter in your life. Yeah. It doesn't matter at all, actually. So she only has the power over you that you give her. I only have the power to judge feet. <laughs> I give her a lot of power, so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's blue and purple time look at all the blue and purple and the pretty skinny girls on the covers blue and purple blue and purple it's blue and purple time sometimes red occasionally blue or green or i mean green oh god how many are there 36 or something of these i think there's 36 yeah 36 we're going through I don't even know if I'm ready for this, guys. Am I ready? I am. Let's do Bloodsport. Come on, let's go. Bloodsport. Bloodsport already looks anorexic. Look how tiny that waist is. Are you okay? You're undead as hell. This is, yeah. I want to be Morticia Adams, but I want to have barrel curls and... <laughs> 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 Say it again. Very glad some people I know are in different parts of this list. <laughs> Not really. You got to tell me who you know. All right. This is who's this? See, wait. No, it's just see. Oh, this is an anthology. Never mind. Oh, this is an anthology. I'm not into reading anthologies. Plus, oh my God, I don't like pretty ladies on the covers of these books because they make me insecure. <laughs> huh, but I at least, hey. That's, go. that's nice. Proceeds that go nice. to charity. Uh, so this is, uh, yeah, Paranormal Romance Vampire, Vampire Stories, short stories. It's not going on my list because I am not into anthology. Sorry. All right. Wait, you got Inca York. Okay, where? Where? I think, I think those two are in oh, other. Yeah. Oh, wait. These are ones we were looking at earlier going, these look interesting. Oh, okay. These are ones I was like, okay, I might get behind this based on how she looks like the tired babysitter. Yeah. And like, I can relate to that. <laughs> Where's J.M. Selly? Maybe different category. Because yeah. generally they have a lot. <laughs> Today I learned that Melody is in fact not an essential. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> All right. Moving on to this Jim one. Jimmy. I need, I'm going to need so much more to, I should have bought alcohol for this. <laughs> this might actually make me start drinking guys. <laughs> so I hate this cover already. This is definitely at least some form of computer generated image. Yeah. Whether Thank it's AI you. or just, yeah. Uh she doesn't look like she's necessarily ai yeah. so potential um oh my god it keeps going off it just doesn't it looks like again old school cg video game but except the face yeah. but like I the body it, it doesn't look it rendered to <laughs> look better. She looks cockeyed. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. But. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Go back to the top of that building. Oh, yeah. That's as far mm -hmm. as it goes. I think that might be AI. Why? Show me what you're showing me. Okay. So you see how um, the building goes down and then out and then down again over there where it goes out. The little plateau thingy has an yeah. extra line up top that shouldn't be there. Um, I thought, I thought that was just another building in the back, and that's like a railing. <laughs> Even then, know. it doesn't go where it should. Um, Why not? And then, and then there's the random lights that are shining down that don't look like they're part of lights, and the windows are in weird spots. And yeah. Hmm. Unless there's a street between the buildings. Yeah, I don't know. 
I don't know if that's conclusive enough for me to be like, yes, AI. But, or at least they might have used the buildings as AI and then did stuff for the, the character in the front. Oh, boy. Here we go. Heaven has fallen, hell has ascended, and archangels rule the world with iron fists. Hold on, that... If archangels are ruling, why is hell ascended? I don't, that doesn't make sense. The only place left with any freedom is Sin City, the devil's playground. Grace Morningstar, gee whiz! The say secret, Grant. I don't think if having your name as Morningstar makes any of that a secret, my dear. Especially Grace Morningstar. I mean, come on. Come on. Secret granddaughter of Lucifer is living in Sin City, a dangerous metropolis. Once known as Las Vegas. Oh, what? Now oh. ruled by the devil and the seven princes of hell. Here, everyone has a sin that calls to them, even Grace. Oh, no. Despite the danger, Grace is determined to uncover the truth behind the sex trafficking ring that has preyed upon the human women in Sane City. With the help of her fallen angel partner, Jax, and her longtime crush, Finn, a demon bar owner, Grace goes undercover as a barmaid in hopes of discovering the source of the criminal enterprise. When Grace is kidnapped by one of the leaders of the sex trafficking ring, she is forced to fight for her freedom, only she fears she will be its next victim instead. The fight against good and evil has begun. Welcome to Sin City. Not. Not it. I don't understand. Okay, she's the granddaughter of Lucifer. But she's basically fighting on the side of good? Well, I mean, Lucifer doesn't necessarily want sex trafficking. I mean, think about the Church of Satan. Like, they're, they're just like, but you know. they don't even believe in it. <laughs> That's not what the Church of Satan does. <laughs> just, okay, hell has ascended. Lucifer, it's the devil's playground. He would love anything going bad in Sin City if that's what it's basing it on. Like, this is not telling me that this is a misunderstood Lucifer story. This ain't Angels Before Man. Okay? No, I don't, I don't see it as, as misunderstood. I see it as, uh, uh, you know... Do shitty, take the law into your own hands, you know, fuck a guy up if you need to. But I don't think you would necessarily consider sex trafficking. I think it. that's dependent on what universe this Lucifer is. Yeah, true. I think you're pushing your Lucifer agenda onto this book. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think this Lucifer is what we all think Lucifer should be. Okay, well, maybe she's going up against grandpapa well i would love that to be in the synopsis now wouldn't I? <laughs> let's look give me something no god dang it why the creator kicked all angels from heaven okay that's why they're there Uh. Oh. What are you reading? What are you saying? Um. It says even though she is descendant of demonic bloodlines, angelic oh. and human, she does her best. Oh, to does her best to do good. Uh, so like, uh, sh she's she's all of them. Spice level at two out of five. Most of it towards the end. We're definitely gonna have a. Uh, Love triangle here, though. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like this. Nope. That's a nope from me. Nope from me. Yeah, I don't want to read a book that uses sex trafficking as a theme for funsies. Yeah. No, you mean that was already a red flag for me. Yeah. <laughs> I'd not pick this book. <laughs> All right. Wicked Wishes. Okay. Why? Why? Girl. Okay, this is um, Walmart, the girl who plays Igrit in Game of Thrones. Rose Leslie or something is her name. What's her name, Rose? I don't know. I, I don't know. That looks like Jessica Rabbit. That's exactly what I was thinking. 
Uh, she don't have big enough titties for Jessica Rabbit. Or big she enough for her She just has red hair. <laughs> have you seen the size of Jessica Rabbit's rib cage? I mean, true, but it's the, it's the expression. It's the expression. And the sultriness. She looks bored rather than sultry. She actually, oh. actually, she looks like someone I know. Really? Yeah, I'm not going to name that person, though, because for their safety. <laughs> but it is an author tuber. Text or, me. They haven't posted in a hot second. But the way they have the resting bitch face right here, that is exactly that person that I know. <laughs> that woman has a wig on you and you can't... Con it is obviously a wig. Come on, you can almost see the lace. Looks like it slid sideways. Yeah. <laughs> she looks like a 1995 wannabe Wiccan. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right. I think, are we done being mean about the cover? <laughs> yes, we're done being mean about the cover. <clears throat> oh, there's oh, like, oh, it's an anthology. Yeah. It's an anthology. I didn't even look at that. Never mind. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Enough with anthologies. <laughs> Tired of it. Sorry. Oh, I hate this. Why? <laughs> Why? That is so bad. This isn't AI because you can tell because of how badly she's... That, that knife is not even in her hands. Yeah, it's not. This is just... I don't know how to do art. Yeah. Uh, this was... Uh, I was fiddling around in a... 3D image maker. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Boy, do I hate this. Oh, Paranormal Mafia. That's even worse. Oh, I hate Lord. Mafia stories. <laughs> I don't even want the synopsis. Too bad, Snazzy. If I have to suffer, you have to suffer. <laughs> <laughs> of they, course they call themselves the Syndicate. Of course oh, they do. Why else? Oh, it's Werewolf. Uh, werewolf the mafia. And Vampires. Of course it is. They call themselves the Syndicate, the Werewolf Rossi Clan, the Mage Winsdale Clan, the Fae Glove Fox Clan, the Demon Devil Clan. Come on! <laughs> the Desmond Clan. Give them a better name! Jesus Christ! The five paranormal families who rule the criminal underground. Being a vampire boss's daughter was a lot of work. Being the only girl heir from the five families, I'd always had to work harder, fight dirtier, care less. It made me into the woman I was today. Do you mean I am today? Causing fear in my enemies and a bloody trail for those who betray us. Let's talk about maintaining your tents. Uh -huh. Then my dad sprung on me that the other bosses and their sons were coming to town. Is this another reverse harem? <laughs> We wanted us heirs to all meet, to bond with each other. To top it all off, my dad shocked the hell out of me by throwing out a challenge to the other heirs. Whoever could keep me in their possession by force or by choice for 24 hours would win the rights for my hand in marriage. I hate this. The other doctors were all for it, wanting to get their man whoring, untamable, and workaholic sons to settle down finally. But I was not surprised to be one. I was Rayla Desmond, a force all her own, a syndicate princess that was not to be messed with. So these boys better be ready for me because I'm coming for blood. Boy, do I hate this. I hate everything so about The this. dads are cool with. Uh, Non-consent marriage. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. <sighs> oh, fuck's sake. This is a World of Darkness fanfic. Uh. Oh, that's exactly, basically what this is, Nina. If you're, yeah. Welcome, welcome to this side. Standing in the street genre. <laughs> Dear Lord. Come on. Someone roast it. Thank you. <laughs> Who doesn't like a tough princess? Me, when they're annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, the only one who showed a tiny bit of potential was Falcon. He was a Falcon. Uh, and not achieved. The guys were way more princess than that. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> they made the author made them all pathetic to show how badass her lead character could be. So we've mm -hmm. probably Mary sued it. Uh, I rolled my eyes so hard every time I gave myself a headache. <laughs> That's the type of reviews I want to see. Yeah. If you're going to shit talk a book, give me everything. Ah. Uh. Those one-liners, those zingers, I want pick them. Me. It's a pick me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was he wasn't like other girls. Oh yeah, I hate this. I hate royalty. Royalty, very rarely. Royalty will work for me. Mm -hmm. But this ain't royalty. This is mafia shit. Yeah. I mean, just still kind of all right. We've all suffered through that one. I'm hoping that's the worst one here. It's not. I'm hoping. I tagged it for that. But I don't I know. You it's not. I'm already nervous for the next one. Bad, but why are we half Skellington? That doesn't oh, seem like that could work at all. Mm -mm, this is ugly. Oh, God. What the fuck? Rips don't it. go down that far. Oh, no, what? that's fine. That's just fine. That's Never fine. Mind. Ribs are up here. Okay. I want to stick my finger in her nose cavity and just. <laughs> <laughs> and so, right, who was nothing more than strong man control. I feel that. I hate things that are like billionaire, mafia, and most things, some things, some things royalty I'm okay with. It depends. Especially like if it's in a fantasy world, I'm more into that. But like real world, no. No. Oh, oh okay. Um, All right. Me, just to let you know that I want to stick my finger in her nose part. That was my roommate, Cerulean, who is also with me, not me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. Sarah's here. Woo! <laughs> in case anyone I didn't know. Uh, it's another first person POV synopsis. Hold on, I have to get in character. How much hair does she have over here? And then, is that better? <laughs> Bad with superpowers? Check. Strong urge to right wrongs and bring villains to justice? Check. Impulse control problems? Check. Your girl's got a brand new job, and Washington, D.C. does not know what's going to hit it. Okay, I might be seriously underqualified for the job of enforcer, I'll admit. The enforcer is supposed to be a human for starters. It's usually an ex-special forces guy with big muscles and even bigger balls. And a knack for sorting out petty squabbles between the witches and vampires and the shifters in the city. And I'm just a technically dead nail tech. A technically dead nail tech. An animated skeleton with a talent for illusion magic and gold gel manicures. Um, bitch, where's your gold gel? Where that at? You're not even wearing any. <sighs> okay, where was that? But I've recently discovered that I can manifest some pretty big muscles of my own. I've already got the big balls, so I'm halfway there. <laughs> it's the sorting out petty squabbles part that I might have trouble with. I'm usually the one to start the fights, not finish them. But a girl has got to grow up sometime. My first job is finding a mis missing person. A half pixie girl vanished from her home a week ago. And if she doesn't surface soon, the local fae diplomat is going to raise hell. Her uncle is blaming vampires. Her boyfriend is pointing the finger at the local shifters. The clock is ticking. I'm determined to find her alive and prove to the soups of DC that I've got what it takes to keep this town on the straight and narrow. I hate this so much. He's actually half... Wait, I'm so confused. Is she fully animated skeleton? I think she is, and the illusion magic is, like, coming over, and that was supposed to be the effect, but I don't think it was well done. Bad bones, bare bones, broke bones, blood bones, burnt bones. Wait, it changes sides! 
Redfish, blue fish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I'm a nail tech. <gasps> ah! Come on, give me something good. I understand fantasy is fiction, but I can only extend suspension of belief so far. FMC appears to be just Bones, who was able to project an outer image. You got it. I mean, what the hell? I only made it to 8% of the story. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Too much reality. Too woke. <laughs> oh, well, that's, a, that's actually a point in its favor for me. <laughs> Again, too much politics. Uh, subplot characters. Pro that's great. Pronouns used is the warning. Oh, are people like, totally, like one star bombing it because it's woke? I swear to God. Instantly on my TBR. Yeah, now I'm like, okay, I will read this shit. <laughs> Just make sure you make time for her nose hole while you're there, please. <laughs> Now I feel like it's getting, yeah, did, did this just get freaking bombed because it had the nerve to be a little woke. I kind of hate this a lot. People suck. They do, like, but there's also valid points here. <laughs> there is... There is so much other shit for you to talk shit about with this book. Why is <laughs> anyone should be giving their pronouns? It's freaking walking magic skeletons, right? They want a book without pronouns. No more pronouns. Not allowed for anyone ever. Mm -mm. Everyone say goodbye to the word you. <laughs> Again, pronoun issues. People no are mad at pronouns. Issues. I hate that. How big is this? This is 260 pages. I feel like in order to defend it, I have to read it now. Fuck. Yeah. Fuck! I didn't want to! <laughs> <laughs> ah. There it is. Let's see. Did it get... I want to see the reviews on Goodreads. Let's see the reviews on Goodreads. Let's see. Too much pot. Yep, the same ones. Yeah. Yep. It tries to address abilities of workforce exploitation. Oh, that's what's oh oh oh. Uh-uh. What do you mean? They're mad that the women poop and pee? Oh, wait, they have magical properties? <laughs> That's weird. Yeah, not the worst thing I've seen in a book like this, though. <laughs> oh, no. Do I have to read this, guys? Ah. <sighs> Give it a one star and be like, all of these guys are assholes because this is what's actually wrong with the book. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Fuck. <laughs> oh no. I have to defend it. <laughs> okay. It's the woman who's doing the pooping and peeing is a skeleton. I have a question. Well, it's not. It's the fae. They were talking about the fae on that part. Yeah. So. All right. And they had properties like an aphrodisiac. Probably. So we're a ghost whisperer. So we are knockoff Jennifer Love Hewitt. Uh, again, the purple and the blue. Purple uh -huh. and the blue. Oh, wait, wait. Hover over that hand again. Oops. Five fingers. Okay. Five fingers. <laughs> We're good there. Looking at buildings, buildings. Here we go. Mm -hmm. eh. uh, there's a little bit of floating muscle lady here. Yeah. <sighs> 
See, Nina, that is exactly my point earlier. All of urban fantasy paranormal romance have the blue purple tones with skinny pretty girl on the cover. Mm -hmm. They tell me nothing. And that's why I heavily dislike covers like this because it tells me nothing. Ah, okay. I'm a ghost whisperer, not a catacomb crawler. But when you live in Paris, sometimes you end up being both. Oh, you're going to talk about the catacombs. Mm -hmm. You better know mm -hmm. your shit. Hi, I'm Alex. During the day, I'm a history student at the time-honored Sorbonne University. After class, I hang out with the ghosts of the revolution, the many undead misunderstood Parisian artists, and adventurous scientists that glow in the dark. None of them are alive, but they come to me to solve their problems with the living. When a recently deceased catacomb tour guide asks me to retrieve a mysterious personal item from the underground, things take a turn for the weird. Suddenly, I find myself in a city of ghosts, hunted by, a murderous, hunted by murderous cave crawlers and stumbling across haunting secrets. If I'm not careful now, I might end up a ghost myself. Um, I don't hate it. I hate that. Be um, yeah, I don't hate that, but I need to know more about you. Born in Germany. Okay, I feel much better. Mm -hmm. It's in New Zealand. Okay. Still don't know how much you know about the catacombs. But I don't want this book to encourage people to go in the fucking catacombs, because you don't go in the fucking catacombs. Don't. Do not. Yeah. You will die. God. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't hate this. I don't hate this one. Well, that's just freaking rude. Wow. That's rude. So I don't value that a person's opinion. You know what? We're putting this on. Ghosts of the Catacombs. Please get away from me, bad bones. I'm already ashamed enough. I have to read you and defend you. Here we go. How many books are there? Four. Four books. Ghosts of the Crusade. Ghosts of the Resistance. Ghosts of the Opera. Ooh. Are we getting a phantom? <laughs> it's okay. I'm down. It's <laughs> like. Ah, yeah, not that's on, of this row. That's the best one right now. Yeah, that's the best. This is obviously the worst. <laughs> <laughs> All right, purple with pretty girl. <laughs> oh God, these faces—they're all so. Wait, she has pointy ears. She does. Pointy ears. Oh, look at our really badly rendered Gargoyle Dragon. <laughs> that does not sit well in this cover. Uh, okay. That Same with that text. That is not, like, the textures on everything. It's, this is all too smooth and crisp for the rest of the cover. Yeah. It doesn't sit well together. Hold on. We need a crack at neck. Oh, no. Come on. There it is. I don't know if you guys could hear that. That might... Shoulder just cracked. Oh, look. Another book I never read. Yeah, Nina, I don't think any of these are really up your alley. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. These are not Nina books. Again, this is a sci-fi fantasy book fair. <laughs> That is not, it is not camp horror. <laughs> All right. Elf Haim Academy, book one. Oh, God. Slayer Heritage, the day my mom was murdered. I'm cat. God, damn, stop at the first person POV. Sorry. It drives me insane in a synopsis. I hate that <laughs> so much. <sighs> okay. I'm Cassie Morgan. I've I hate that name as well. God. Okay. Oh. Quick note. I have certain names in books I'm sick of seeing, and Cassie is one of them. Tess is another one. Those are the names that I see, and I'm just like, oh, I hate it! Because they're Cassie all there. Tess. 
Uh-huh. I hate Tess. I hate Cassie. I don't like them in books. I just don't. It's my own personal weird thing. I don't hate Morgan. I like Morgan. Violet is a name that I'm tired of. You're tired of Violet? Yeah. Well, <laughs> did you just read Fourth Wing? <laughs> no, I didn't, but I did. Yeah, don't read Fourth Wing. A while ago. <gasps> what? It wasn't recent, but I did try to read it a while ago. <laughs> I dread the day someone is like puts the sequel in the viewer pool. <laughs> God forbid commissions me. By the way, links to all that in the description. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Getting over my problem with the name and the first person POV. I'm Cassie Morgan. I've carried a feeling of emptiness with me since I was 12. When they took my mother's life, a part of me went with her. Now, thanks to a caring aunt and the passage of time, I'm ready for answers about where I came from and the mother I lost. I can't deny who I am any longer. The lure of the elven realm beckons. Surprises were expected, but I never imagined my journey would introduce me to a baby dragon or reunite me with an old friend. For the time being, all is well until it's not. Danger lies ahead. When my aunt is arrested, it's up to me to help. The question is, at what cost? I don't know where this trail will lead, but I have no doubt more trouble lies ahead. Dying for answers isn't part of the plan. This doesn't tell me enough. No. I don't have enough here. <laughs> Shen, I won't torture you. <laughs> yeah, you definitely read more horror. And there isn't a sci-fi fantasy horror category in this book fair either. Um, yeah, there's not enough here for me. There's just... Oops, whoops, whoops. Nothing. Just people leaving star ratings. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I voluntarily reviewed this story. I just think that's a funny sentence to say. Like, yeah. clearly you did. <laughs> you were held at gunpoint to <laughs> review <laughs> Um, yeah, it's just, it's not giving me enough. There's not enough. Yeah, I know nothing about this novel. I, I, yeah. I like the dragon. That's cute. <laughs> Look how happy we are. He's a big Sorry. Uh, this is two ninety nine. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I'm just going to pass. I just don't have enough. Nothing in here. Yeah. Nothing wowing me. I want to be wowed. Okay. This is America's Next Top TBR. <laughs> <laughs> You're not bad for not caring at all about dragons, but I will be offended if you don't read my Sweet Pea and Sniffling novels when they come out, Thog. Because they're going to be great. <laughs> Origin! Uh, well, at least it looks more like an actual person than, yeah. than the other ones have been. Five fingers. Okay. But again, it's, that's Canva. This is made on Canva. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. Um, not enough. Again, very generic cover. Not enough to tell me by that. Oh, I don't know how to pronounce this name correctly. Is it Win? Is that how you pronounce it? Win? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Something like that. I'm so bad. Well, I love a, a, a POC. Yeah. Hey, Lena! Lena! Hi, Lena! Anyone who can make Canva can do good things. Yeah, like of the ones we've seen, like, yes, it's a Canva cover. You can tell it's a Canva cover. But it's on the better side. It's not AI. <laughs> what? It's pronounced Nguyen. Nguyen. I had Nguyen. friends with his last name. Everyone was like Nguyen, and I know that's wrong. But I know because it's got the mm, the mm -hmm. Nguyen, Nguyen, Nguyen. I'm so bad. I'm going to try my best. Okay. 
Every hero has an origin story. Mine begins with an underground cage fight and ends in a secret identity. By day, I'm Willow Nien. Oh, that was so bad. Yeah, ah, skipping. Not so mild-mannered teenager searching for her missing mother. By night, okay, I'm the same. But it's easier to break into Banks undercover of, <laughs> undercover of dark. <laughs> Jesus. I kind of like her. I kind of like her too right now. My world is divided into the Academy and the Kings, the Law and the Thugs. At the center of their power are the Espers, like me, the telepaths, psychics, and illusionists. What I can do change the balance. Oh, shit. What I can do could change the balance of power in Melbourne, so it makes sense for me to keep a low profile. It's not my fault that I get drawn into an illegal cage fight. Yes, I did have to become a psychotic. I can't do Australian. I did have to become a psychotic king's nemesis. No, I won't stop fighting until one of us is dead. With great power comes great pain in the backside. I just have to make sure it hurts them more than me. Willow Nguyen might just be a girl, but Spectra will become a legend. This, you know what it's kind of giving? Uh, Spider-Man? No, well, a little bit, but no. It's giving Nightmare from <laughs> Renegade. It's giving a bit of Nightmare. Yeah. In this. Slow burn romance I saw. Woo! I don't hate this one. This actually looks like it could be real fun. It does. Yeah. Let's see. Anybody? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Let's do this one. Woo! -hoo! Uh, who's by Lanchon? Origin. Origin. Oops. Oh my god, my keyboard does not want to respond today. Mm. Let's put it on the TBR. Woo! Love the accent. Thank you. I'm really bad at doing Australian. That is one I cannot do well. It's giving a bit of New Girl vibes, but... <laughs> This could be fun. I'm hoping this is fun. It's all, it's very short. It's only 160 pages, apparently. Very short. Okay. I want Jughead Pie. I could order, but I don't want to make anyone drive to me. This is so bad. Lena, how bad is it where you are? Where, yeah, uh, Lena! <laughs> Lena! Lena, we have to go to Meow Wolf. <laughs> uh, you only have six inches? We measured. I went out and measured. I had 11 right now. It might be more now. It definitely looks like more now. It's so bad here. It's really bad. So bad, I need a chocolate egg thing. I'm fine. <laughs> All right. So we're three, four, eight right now. Mm -hmm. We knew that was going to happen here, though. <clears throat> oh, she's looking down. Okay. I hate that less. I thought she was glaring at us. <clears throat> Examine. 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 Hmm. I feel like I've seen this exact same cityscape on like two other ones. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Hi, Kamama. We've had a couple. We're in yeah. we're in paranormal romance land right now. There were two that I'm actually uh, interested in seeing Stephanie's review for. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh, my actual review? Yeah. You want the review of Bad Bones? Uh, I mean, I do, but not as much as I want the other ones. Like, I want to see how actual two books ago good they were. How's that? From this one, maybe? Let's compare. 
No, that no. Not that. No, this one had the castle. Yeah. Bad bones, maybe? No. Okay. I mean, yeah, they all look really similar. <laughs> really hard to uh, make your book look different from everyone else's book. See this problem? None of these really tell me what this story is. That's why I hate this trope, this 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 style choice right now, where it doesn't tell me anything. Except except you know what it does tell you? Huh. It's a oh, paranormal it's romance. Yeah. <laughs> All it tells me. It tells me I don't want to pick it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Could be the same street, but not the same building. <laughs> All right. Hold on. Okay, my chocolate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm fine. Charmaine, I already hate that name. Wait, it's spelled two different ways. What? E I N I A N I. Oh, I hate that. I'm gonna need another beverage soon. Okay. <laughs> Whew! Oh my god, I've already been going two hours. <laughs> okay, the Angel of Harmony is about to become a warrior of destruction. It's been 67 years since a spell gone wrong devastated the planet. All that is left of humanity exists in the demon ruled sinking ruins of what was once New York and New Jersey, home to fallen angel Charmaine. Now, by the grace of God, she has been given the chance to save the world and her angelic standing. All she needs to do is work with a deplorable witch and condemn a fallen brother, the demon lord, to eternal imprisonment. Charmaine would do anything to earn her wings back, but when she does, who will be there to save her humanity? I'm so glad Shayna is not in the comments right now to hear my horrible accent. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm -hmm. <laughs> the second choice comes. I, I have to. As soon as I know where, where this is set, yep. we have to do this. <laughs> Should I do the audiobook for this person? <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, it's Mama. <laughs> it's okay. You can make fun of me. I'm from Minnesota. Don't worry. They just don't <laughs> write books set in Minnesota. <laughs> oh my god. Should I read like Twilight or something with a Minnesotan accent as if it's set in fucking Duluth yes. or something? <laughs> yes. Oh no. My accent is giving me the egg props. Wait. Wait. Do I still have one of my <laughs> one of the smutty books? Oh my god, if I did Icebreaker, but it's a Minnesotan accent, that would make sense. <laughs> that would make sense. I don't care if that story is actually set in, like, I don't I think it's California or whatever. Everyone in that fucking, it's hockey. If it's a hockey romance, it should always be done with a Minnesotan audiobook narrator. Either that or Canadian. Canadian, yeah, one of the, same thing, really. <laughs> Let's yeah. be real. Minnesota is Canada. <laughs> I am indeed and i know the people who went to his university i'm from minnesota yeah sure you betcha okay i can make fun of my own people very easily i like making accents i think they're super fun you know yeah sure you betcha okay <laughs> i feel like i have to do the rest of them all in my thick accent yeah this is also a reason i don't drink alcohol that is why. Oh, your Minnesota accent comes out? Big time. I, 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 like, it happens even when I'm, like, just drunk on, like, energy from people. I will bring out the accent unintentionally. Bro. But I do not drink for that reason. <laughs> <laughs> why did she suddenly sound Amish? <laughs> How dare. <laughs> Woo! 
Yeah. We'd pay good money to see cute drinking a few beers. Me too, yeah. buddy. Me too. Not everyone tries to. It ain't working. I don't cave to peer pressure on this stuff. But I don't know. Reading through some of these synopsis has made me want to drink. <laughs> Stephanie, Stephanie. Yeah. What if you set a Kofi tier where if you get $100 of donations specifically for this cause and nothing else, you will drink a single wine cooler? <laughs> <laughs> sure. All the different tiers of what I drink. Yes. A thousand dollars, I'll do one shot of Jaegerbomb. Oh, God. <laughs> a thousand. <sighs> yeah, I don't drink, just in case anyone wants to know. If you didn't know, I really don't drink. But uh, yeah, that the, that is definitely one of the reasons I don't. Like, this is when I lived in Minnesota. Everyone, it was in college and stuff. I wasn't a big drinker, but I would visit my aunt who would shove a drink at me every time I go see her and would make me drink with her. And I just became my aunt. <laughs> okay. If you go back to my old videos in Japan where I use puppets, Hammy the Hammerhead Shark is my aunt. That is That is a caricature of my aunt. Really? For sure. So that accent is my aunt. Now, when I did my accent just here, that's not my natural Minnesotan accent, but it does come out. <laughs> my natural one will happen, especially in O's. O's is where you're going to get me. Okay. Uh, it happens sometimes when I get like really excited or passionate about something. I'll be like, no, I'll do that. That's my natural right there. I see. That no, that's how I sound. Beautiful. <laughs> anyway, I've forgotten everything about this book. So <laughs> I need to see reviews. Give me something. So give me something to read about. That's for all the Buffy fans out there. <laughs> this is book seven. Wait, what? Book seven. How many? Book seven? I don't think it is. Which oh. way is the correct way to spell Charmaine? <laughs> They're saying this is book seven. <coughs> Let, Goodreads. Goodreads will tell me. Who's this by? Deborah Christie. It is. What's the first book? Fall. Oh, whoa. We. Oh, God. There's 12? Jesus Christ. But why? It's missing a bunch. Fallen Halos is the first one. And we have this man on the cover. Uh Oh, I hate it already. Death of Wife and Daughter. Nope. I'm not into that sh that fridging, so I'm gonna yeah. pass. We're passing on that. that was by Hayes Hamilton. What? That was by Hayes Hamilton. Who? The 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 fallen halo. Aaron Hayes, Rebecca Hamilton. Yeah. But wait, why is this one? Deborah Debra Christie. I'm confused. I'm so confused. And then this one's by, are they all by a different person? Yeah. Oh. Huh? I don't like that. I don't like that. Is it like an anthology universe series? Maybe. I don't like that. I very rarely like that. <laughs> Moving on. Immortal blood. I keep Hi, Jensen Ackles from Target. Uh, yes. Uh, I keep keep getting the feeling that these are just like the same book and the uh, same series, just a different book. But uh, it's repeatedly not. 
<laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> uh... Christina Applegate? <laughs> yeah! This is, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a me. You know, for we, it's a me of Christina Applegate. <laughs> Oh, okay. A true blood heir of an otherwise extinct fey bloodline, a thousand-year-old magic spell, and a lichen attack. Now my eyes are wide open to the world full of monsters. <sighs> First person POV. I have an innate fear of fangs. So when I learned that the super hot guy that saved me is a vampire hybrid, I'm just as scared as I was when my life was hanging in the balance. But it's not just him that makes me hot under the collar, as I find out what I missed over the centuries. Turns out, it's not just lichens who want to take a bite out of me. As every monster takes an interest in me, I soon learn my blood is a curse. And as I learn about my history, it's not only myself I need to worry about. The truth of what I am places my friends and family in danger, too. But it's the vampire royals with their ridiculous demands that leave me in the most perilous situation of all. If I pay their price, I turn to traitor to my nation. But fighting back means I may have to sacrifice the two things that matter more to me than life itself. Pay the price or fuck off. Sorry. I'm I'm not digging it. No. Also, if it says I don't know who Bella Forrest is, but I don't like Jennifer L. Armentrap books, so Nope. <clears throat> it's the no 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 <laughs> no no <laughs> It feels very um, reverse harem. What? I said it feels very reverse harem. Yeah. <laughs> One paragraph to another can take you three days ahead. Seems smoother quality writing from eighth grade papers. I think I only made it four chapters before I was so irritated. There must have been AR readers to even get the star ratings that are on display. <laughs> uh, yeah. Repetitive and boring. I yelled at my Kindle paper white. Get on with it then! <laughs> then there were a few eye rolls and you've got to be kidding me. Uh, yeah, the bones are there, but the house fell flat. Okay. Yeah, it's not, it wasn't gripping me anyway. Is that a big kitty? What is that? It's a big kitty! It's a kitty. Is it Tanuki kitty? This is, this is how they draw the young girls in. They put cute animals on the cover. I mean yeah broad daylight well there's a yeah there's a kitty so there's already a plus point on that <laughs> it looks weirdly rendered though once again uh, those buildings are definitely ai yeah <clears throat> oh yeah we're in berlin do so I have to do a German accent? Hold on, I have to get into my German accent now. In the vibrant city of Berlin, bodyguard Cameron McKay thought she had seen it all. I can't do German, apparently. Apparently not. <laughs> Wait, is that a young Kristen Stewart? <laughs> yeah, it's, it is definitely giving... Um, not just Kristen Stewart, but... Oh, Disney! Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know who I'm talking about. Yes. Oh, what's yeah. her face? Cerulean, do you know? Hmm. Disney girl that looks like that. Oh, uh, Jade. <coughs> Jade? Jade from Victorious. Yes! Is it Nickelodeon? Hold on. I don't, it's one of those. But yes, Victorious. That's exactly what I was thinking. Jade. Yeah. That's exactly what that was giving me. Okay. Her, Elizabeth Giles. Ninja with unmanageable strength assaults a client. She's launched into a hidden world she never knew existed. Paired with the empath Leon, they must confront the mystery, mystery of a vampire's immunity to sunlight, a riddle that threatens to shatter the delicate peace between the supernatural factions. I'm just trying to channel Flula and it's not working. <laughs> 
As secrets from her past unfold, Cameron finds herself a vital player in a power struggle that pits were cats against vampires with the witches caught in the crossfire. With her courage, strength, and heart tested, Cameron must find a way to survive this dangerous game. There's were cats, though. <laughs> I can I want to you want to want me to bet what the vampire's immunity to sunlight is? You know what he has? You know what it is? Uh, it's the fancy ring from Buffy. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Uh, I don't I don't hate it. And there's were cats. <laughs> I feel like I feel like it might be campy enough for me. Oh, I, what? You don't even look. Now you're Nina Dobrev. Okay, give me it. What? Ah, oh, come on. These mean people aren't mean enough. No. Um, it's adequate. <laughs> Met urban fantasy. <laughs> people need to stop with that. I'm leaving this review voluntarily. Your your line is. I received an advanced copy uh, in ex for free in exchange for a review. <laughs> Don't say voluntarily. It makes it sound like every other review is at gunpoint. Yeah. Yeah, Nina, I'm not good at the German, even though I am German. <laughs> I'm not good at it. Um, okay. I'm going to accept it puzzling. Uh, it does. A yeah. German accent if I'm actually speaking German. Well, do the whole thing in German. <laughs> I can only do it if I'm singing Barbie Girl in German. <laughs> this is not off camera, my dear. This is called off page. Uh... Oh. <sighs> I'm on the fence. You know what I'm gonna do anytime I'm on the fence now? Call it that. Like they get out there when you are. Coin. What do we think? Is rough seas no and smooth sailing yes? Or the opposite? Rough seas is yes. Rough seas is yes. Yep. Embla. Great. <laughs> okay, where cats? Here we come. <laughs> uh, teen Wolf. It's giving me Teen Wolf. But like Teen Cat. Okay, this I have higher hopes for. Because we have two big kitties. <laughs> <laughs> um is ND Jones from an African country? They are they are POC at least. I know that. They live in Maryland, but they are POC. Hmm. Okay. So yay, it's not another white man doing this. That that is true. <laughs> the sex is off page, but dismembery is on the page. I could get on with this. <laughs> All right, a queen's pride, <clears throat> feline nation. I like why other, but here's the thing. I mean, can you have two males like that? Um. Yeah. Can you? Maybe. Maybe. I don't, I don't think that's how it works in lion culture. <laughs> anyway, maybe it works in here. For centuries, humans descended on shifters' lands, killing and claiming. They devoured all in their path, gold, God, and glory their battle cries. What? I don't understand this. Okay. From the flames of destruction on the Zephyo continent, two nations emerged the human territory of Vumaris and the feline nation of Shona. No more wars, no more bloodshed, eight decades of peace. For 18 year old Asha, traveling to Vumaris with her parents, 
lion alphas of the kingdom of Shona should have been a simple matter. Recommitting to an 80 year old peace treaty between their countries should have been easier still. Yet greed and corruption know no boundaries of uh, time and place. So when a group of mercenaries converges on Sanctum Hotel, hell bent on kidnapping Asha and assassinating her parents, her family trip turns into the bloodiest night of her life. Will Asha lose the clo those closest to her heart, her parents and Econ? Econ? Mm. A young bodyguard she loves. If so, will she forgive her enemies or seek divine retribution? Only time will tell, and it's running out for Princess Asha of the Kingdom of Shona. Now, Warning. real quick. Real quick. Um, it does say that both of her parents are lion alphas. Yeah. Is it gay parents? I don't know. As in the lions on the book. Yeah, I know. That's that's also my thought. But I don't know. What are all these? Why, why is this? Our, I don't understand this marketing method here. Uh, these are all the hot guys you'll meet in the series. I guess. <laughs> I don't, they're not even, it's weird because they're not even like, holding the book or anything they're just it's the phone is right there and they're yeah. just that looks really weird to me <laughs> a giant phone hot glued to their chest yeah <laughs> ah. okay nothing i hate how far down it drags me okay they're just mad at too many povs i don't have that problem Oh no, it's political and conscientious. Oh, whatever should we do? We're back in handsome men land. I don't hate this one. I'm, I'm like, are, they're, they're lion shifters then. Yeah, they're cat shifters again. Yeah. I'm assuming that at least. Yeah. But yeah, I do want to know, are your parents gay? Okay. I gotta know. <clears throat> okay. Oh, uh, you put that in own. Oh, shit. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We're not even halfway. Still have to get uh, to this nonsense. Woohoo! Oh, you didn't even see. They said this nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. Next up, the devil you know. Um. I don't know. Her positioning just looked really weird to me for a moment there. Like yeah. when you look at it from back, I'm like, uh, it looks like broken hip situation i don't know yeah why is your zipper all the way down that far uh mobility girl, girl. <laughs> oh my god oh my god harry styles yeah <laughs> that's him there he is <laughs> oh it's an anthology again never yeah. mind never mind Never freaking mind. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> There's one cover that's different. <laughs> Is it though? It's still blue. But it's Harry Styles. <gasps> it's it's Harry Styles, but make him a little bit of a who. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like I do some time in the morning. We're moving on to Inca York's. Jenna, are you still here with us? This is your friend, apparently. All right. Oh, come here. The birds are interesting because they're like... Are they... Is this a... I'm, oh, paper. Paper starlings. That... Okay. okay. Maybe if we read the title, that would make sense. Okay. I do like that she's in comfy clothes. Like, yeah. now I believe she's going to, like, save the world or whatever because she has the flexibility of leggings and stuff. Or I don't even know if they're leggings. They might just be jeans. But, you know, I do like the font. Mm -hmm. 
Font's good. Yeah, okay. Paper starlings. <clears throat> Let's see. Oh, Lord. What if the ordinary family you crave finds you? Only they're not ordinary. Neither are you. And <laughs> saw this start. <laughs> okay. <sighs> and neither are the vampire oh, vampire neighbors raising your twin sister. An accident is all it takes to turn my mundane life. Oh no, it's first person on the synopsis again. Okay. An accident is all it takes to turn my mundane life in a, in a London children's home upside down. Power and magic lurk at the Priory, my new home in the Oxfordshire countryside. And I learn fast that nothing is ordinary around here. Not my newfound family, the Penhaligans. Penhaligans? Penhaligans? Is that Priory? Priory. Are there oranges? Uh, the I don't know. Priory? We'll have to find out. <laughs> Not my long lost twin sister and not the hostile new neighbors. A coven of vampires. They wolves? What's a they wolf? Oh. Guess we'll have to find out. And demons. As I grapple with family secrets, four powerful new brothers, and latent abilities of my own, my sister and the man who raised her find themselves in mortal danger, and danger that draws me and my family into a battle to save them. Finally embracing the meaning of family, two questions burn at the back of my mind. If vampires and demons exist, what are the Penhaligans, and what am I? Oh, you have this autographed? Yeah, I don't hate that synopsis. Uh, what it, can Jenna, can you explain what a Vey wolf is? What does that mean? What is a Vey wolf? Uh oh. It follows a violet. Oh. I'm so sorry. <laughs> what? What I think it, but I don't know what it is. That's why I'm asking. Is it a vampire, werewolf, and fae? Okay. I just want to, I want an explanation. It's basically a vampire werewolf. Okay. Well, what happened to the werewolves? Magical vampire werewolf. Okay. Well, no one or two stars. Let's look at the three. Again, I'm reviewing this voluntarily. <laughs> Guys. Guys. I'm worried about your other reviews now. <laughs> Oh, the plot moves slow. That's fine. Fun and realistic. Love that. Wish the reveal of information was more active. Scenes instead of info dumps at the midpoint of the book. Eh. Mm -hmm. That's an opinion. Prose is well written. Imaginary is evocative. Okay. We've got a bit of a sister. Sister! Sorry. <laughs> That's immediately what I thought of when it said, like, the secret twin sister was raised by someone else. Yeah. I was like, okay, it's Twitches. Are we watching Twitches? Uh, what are we? <laughs> I, yeah, I don't hate this one. I think this will go on. A storm of paper starlings. No, I get that. But what the phrasing I usually see is... I received an art copy of this book in exchange for a review instead of reviewing this voluntarily. That's the normal phrasing I'm familiar with. The reviewing this voluntarily makes it feel like all other reviews are held at gunpoint. Okay. <laughs> That's what I mean. And that phrasing is getting people's account taken down. Yeah, it's- Really? Yeah, I've always done it with, I, I've received this as an ARC uh, in exchange for a free review. So <laughs> that's that's what I've always seen it as. But apparently oh, that's it's good chunky. That. That's a good chunk. All right, well, the, the sequel is the next one here, so we don't need to read it because um, we just yeah. read the one. 
Steaks and bones. Okay. This is live action Mulan. Uh, oh, that is hello. Yeah, that's definitely AI. AI. I don't even need, I don't even need anyone to tell me. Look at all that. Yeah. Well, at least we have five fingers on that side. Again, we might have AI background, but not AI person. I don't know. I'm concerned for your top, my dear. That deep of a weird V on a yeah. tank top worries me. <laughs> ah. Seattle Slayers. Great. So Twilight Buffy. Ro oh, it's Roxy. I, you can't name any character Roxy. I will only think of Chicago. I'm sorry. Yeah. Roxy. The name on everybody. Stakes are gonna be Roxy. <laughs> okay. Roxy's got two hammers, a bit of breaker magic, and the deathbed promise she made to her father. How many oranges did she buy? Sorry. Okay. <laughs> the Seattle Slayers, an elite cadre of fighting fighters and of dead. Oh my God. Hello. I can't read anymore. We've reached that point where I can't read anymore. Yep. Elite cadre of fighting. <laughs> I'll read it. Yeah. Seattle, the, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> the Seattle Slayers, an elite cadre of fighters dedicated to protecting the city, is having their trials for new initiates. Uh, oh, my dad was a slayer, one of the best. I thought his legacy might give me a, an edge in the trials, but I was wrong. If anything, it made them harder on me. But joining the Slayers is my best chance to save my mom. And maybe I need to see if I can fill my dad's shoes. The only thing standing between me and my dreams are all the other elite fighters and magic users who want their spot on the Slayers too. I will battle them all. Fey warriors, river demons, and vicious animage who hates my guts. And I I've got you my fucking later. Uh, yeah, probably. Uh, mage. Uh, I've got my hands Full, but a certain vampire prince link further complicates my life even as he saves it. Oh lord. Uh, he's powerful, handsome, and uh, and deadly. A combination I find hard to resist. You can't resist a vampire prince link. <laughs> uh, okay, well I don't hate it as much as I thought I would. Yeah. It's on the better side of what we've been looking at. This is, I, I might have to flip a coin for this one. I do think it's a dude who wrote this, though. Is it? I for, Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Okay. What? She spent four books turning herself inside out to save her mom's life when she could have been saved by simply using her words three paragraphs later. Mom's all better. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Anime Age Vampire Series Black and Severus Snape. <laughs> uh, this isn't a review. You just synop you just summarized. Yeah. You summarized. You didn't review. <laughs> ah. Oh, there's a Marnie. You don't slander the name Marnie in this house. How dare you? Roxy fumbled too much. Uh, oh, come back. Yeah, it is by a man. You are correct. There's two, two authors. Yeah. Why does it need two authors is also my question. Mm. Maybe she helps him write a realistic female POV? Maybe. I don't know. 
Should yeah, I flip it? Kind of meadow did for uh, Vin and Spencer. What? Brando Sando did that for Vin and Spencer. Oh, okay. But they're not credited. Uh, well, Jancy is credited, I think, for... For the novella. Yes. He at least says that he heavily used Jancy's help with those. Yeah, but she's not credited as an author in the Skyward series except for the novellas. True. That's why I'm like, mm. And how big is this book? 372. Huh. I'm going to say no. Okay. I'm going to say no. I don't think it's going to be, you know, I don't think it's going to wow me. Nah. Wolf and flame. Hi. There's a baby. Why do you want to hurt the baby? No hurting the babies. We just want treat. We want you to throw the ball. Wait, go back to that hand. It's got the fingers. We're good. Okay. We, we have all our fingers. It's not a great... Uh, this is another, like... Not, Terribly done 3D animation. Yeah, yeah. That's what that is. But... Wolf and... Why do you do that? This is an author. This is this is your publishing thing. This is not. Uh, looks like a wolf statue coming to life. Maybe. Let's see. Divine plans and mortal pawns on an urban battleground. Wait, hold on. How is this urban fantasy? Look at him. Mage meets Shifter and the world goes to hell. Caspian and Kara didn't sign up for this. Oh, that's another name I hate. He's an untrained mage with a demon bloodline, and she's a wolf shifter druid with no powers. Brought together by karma, they must forge a new path to power as blood wars and demonic forces threaten to tear their world apart. But little do they know, the gods of the divine realm have been keeping an eye on them. And by keeping an eye, we mean they're tracking their cultivation stats. This is a cultivation double? Oh, good lord. <laughs> Yes, even gods have jobs, and apparently one of them involves meddling in the lives of unsuspecting mortals. As the blood wars rage on and legendary evil rises, Caspian and Kara must choose between family loyalty and their unbreakable bond. Will they succumb to the darkness that calls to them, or will their forbidden attraction be their salvation? Mm. With the fate of the world at stake, the gods will make the choice for them. In a world where the gods and demons battle for control, Caspian and Kara must forge their own destiny or risk being consumed by the chaos around them. Um, this is, how is this urban fantasy? I don't know. That's, that, uh, what? Give me it, come on. Damn it! <laughs> Uh, wait, it says it's in modern times. They say it's modern times. Hmm. It's a cultivation novel, though. <laughs> but it's written by white people doing a cultivation novel. Hmm. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. So wait, is this Kara? <laughs> She's a wolf shifter. Wait, but how is she a wolf shifter with no powers? Or is it just she has no druid powers? She just has her wolf powers. You can only Aru. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, what do we think? I wouldn't personally chat what do you think i'll let you debate while i get another beverage get another beverage beverage hey guess what it's still snowing oof 
Tamamen ses e. <gülüyor> Apparently it's mama beat snazzy to it. What? To mama said eh. And then snazzy said to mama beat me to it. <laughs> Ow. Okay. Also, I brought my cookies. Woohoo! My cookie! Ooh! I made it! I made a macro! Oh, I didn't know. I should probably put all light on, huh? Yeah. No, oh, I'm fuzzy. What kind of cookie is it? Sprinkles. That's it? Yeah. Sugar cookie with sprinkles? Yeah. Okay. Hold on, I need to give light to my camera. Light! Come on. Do something. Look at my face. Look how creepy I am. Whoa. Nothing? No. Nothing. Nothing. Tra la la. You get fuzzy. It'll fix okay. itself eventually. Wow. All right. Onwards and upwards. I hate this already. Yeah. I'm sorry. What is that on her eyes? A mask. Is it though? Maybe. How do you see out of it? Uh, little tiny holes, just the size of your pupils. That doesn't look like it's made for just being a mask. That looks like for a specific purpose. Yeah. Oh, it's anthology again. Yay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh, what's this shit? This looks terrible. I disagree. I think that looks phenomenal. That's like the best cover so far, besides the Humane Society for Creatures and Christmas. I don't know. Let's count the feathers, see if it's AI. <laughs> <laughs> this, this annoying ass person, I don't know. I'm you want to read this one? You can read this one. It looks like crap to me. Levin Connolly, blah, blah, blah. Levin Connolly never wanted to return home after leaving the small town of Ashport three years ago. She thought... Oh, it's fucked up. I got a, I got a typo. She I'll thought she was free of the embarrassment that comes with having ghost hunters for parents until her uncle passes away, making her the heir to the Ashport Conservatory. Levin is prepared to sell the place and get out of Dodge, but soon learns the hard way that her uncle has been keeping... One of the most powerful creatures in existence hidden in the house. The one and only Phoenix. Being a creature of immense magical power, everyone wants their hands on it, including a horde of vampires, a pack of werewolves, and almost everyone Levin meets. The only Levin, oh, sorry, the only people Levin can uh, find she can trust are a stranger fighting with his inner demons. <laughs> 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 Two older friends who aren't exactly what they seem, a warlock who refuses to move on, and a self-serving exiled fairy. What could go wrong? Everything. Everything can go wrong. Now, here's a funny thing. I swear to God, I've actually fixed that typo multiple times. Because this what? dog also should be capitalized, and I know I've gone in and fixed it. Damn. Okay, let's see. Oh my god, someone gave me a two star. Oh, but they didn't uh, tell me why. Fuck that. I don't know why you hated it. <laughs> Roast me, come on. What did Leora do? Huh, the send line. What about this one? I'm dying. Oh, yeah, the first meeting of Avery. That's pretty funny. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all, if you've read this, y'all need to go in here and actually leave reviews as well as on Goodreads. Oh, these are nice. Some people I know, some people I don't. Wow, who's this person? No clue. 
<laughs> is realistic fantasy a thing, Lena? <sighs> That's funny. I like that there's people I don't know on here. Yeah. That's cool. Wow. Y'all have shitty taste. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Fuck you. Roast me! I want to be roasted! Roasting is my love language. <laughs> I mean, no excuses for 2020 leave. Like, I'm recording the audiobooks and I'm roasting myself as I do it. Yeah. Okay, literally I was recording chapter six and I fucked myself up real bad, y'all. I did a thing that I hate. Was it the breath? <laughs> I'm reading it and I'm recording and it's June and I went he let out a oh no <laughs> it's on the recording <laughs> I asked the book to be oh no I did it but it's there Beautiful. so we all grow as writers I want to put that out there I've been a <laughs> shitty writer too <laughs> I have my shitty writer moments I have good writer moments but I have shitty moments too. Yes, please do tell me you saved that. It's there, it's there, it's there. <sighs> okay. Anyway, that bitch. We can we can fuck off with that bitch now. Guess hope we don't have to hear from her again. Huh. Good thing we already we already went over this nonsense. Yeah. It's funny. All right. Please roast me. Okay. I want everyone to one star bomb my books, but just with roasts. <laughs> or you can five star bomb it, but roast it. Yeah. Okay. That is my personal request. Okay. All right. And when if you want to go on to Memory of the Hoop Away and yell about the breath that June let out that he didn't know he was holding, you can do it. I give you permission. <laughs> You're allowed. Um, All right. Right here. She always complains about these stupid tropes and then she does it in her own book. Oh my God. What a bitch. What an ass. What a bitch. What a con. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is a prequel. Okay. What is the, how does that offer any support? I'm sorry. How does that not fall right off of you, my dear? Okay, wait. Why does... This looks like animation. Yeah. And then... It's, what? It's like, they're like, okay, we're gonna give a lot of detail up here, and then fuck off on the rest of it. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. Here we go. Can of... I'm gonna burp. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I just started drinking a Diet Coke. Um, can a fiery mage heal an airy witch's broken heart? My older sister was a sorceress. The clergy feared her protection spells. They shunned my family and compelled my father to curse her. Now she's dead, and it's my duty to carry on her legacy. <laughs> duty. Of course, my outcries angered the clergy and my own people. The only way I can escape my sister's fate is to bind my heart to a Teuton priest? I guess. Sure. A member of an ancient caste that views women as naive fools too weak to wield magic. Obviously, that goes against my beliefs. Someone has to continue my sister's work, and it might as well be me. I won't let some mage with a master's complex upend my plans. Then horse walked into my life. Horse? What is that name? Horst. Horst. Uh, it is, okay, it is NC-17. Teutonic? Wait. Is that a thing? I know it's a thing. I just don't remember what it is. It's a Catholic thing. Uh-oh. Yeah, from way back in the day. Like, I know the term. German. Oh, walked into a bar. The bartender asked why the long face. <laughs> Horst? 
You bastards. You know, like me, eh? I want tea! I mean, I do like this, the, the, I mean, it kind of feels surface level feminism. Yeah. But that usually, when you get that in certain books, like that can always be a good gateway into like books with better, more deeper feminism. That's yeah. why I don't get mad at certain ones that give you a surface level of like, like a social issue. Yeah. Because it'll, it makes me want to research more, you know? That makes sense. Um, that's why, like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to say something controversial here. I'm not mad at TJ Klune for House in the Cerulean Sea. And the re like, I get why people are mad about that book. I get it. Why are people I mad about the book? Because uh, it was, it's like fantasy when they did the reservation schools for Native Americans in Canada and stuff. Oh, I didn't even make that, that came from, And in his, like, notes, he says that's what this came from. So it's kind of taking, it, it is, you know, taking away the voices. The reason... I mean, I'm a white person, so I can't really say that it's not taking away the voices. I, those reviews are totally valid and stuff. The yeah. reason why I still think the book has some value is because I'm a dumb American. And I didn't know about these things. Yeah. So having that in the book and then learning, oh, that's what it is. I then went to do research and could learn more about it. True. So, there are there is value in things that may have problematic origins. Yeah, like even even like the the movie Split. I didn't know enough about um, dissociative identity disorder, and I saw the movie Split. Now it's not a good representation of DID, but it sent me down a rabbit hole, and I learned about better representation and what it actually was and stuff. So mm -hmm. I will say, even if there have problems with the actual content itself, there is a bit of good things like that can do. Yeah. There's my soapbox for the day. <laughs> okay, cool. Oh, my brother-in-law just sent me a series of tweets. It does. One goes, could y'all stay inside the house for a whole week without stepping a foot outside for $100,000? And then the next one says, I have done this, but I did not know there was funding available. <laughs> All right. Um, I want to know who Horst is. Yeah. Uh, he goes I want to know. <laughs> I want to know. So we're going to know. How are they going to know? They're going to know. I've seen, have you ever seen the original where that comes from? I just recently no. saw the original video. No. It's, it, it's very bland. I see. It's, it's bland. <laughs> All right. Trick of Fay. Trick of, go, 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 move, move. God damn it. I was just informed about something and now I'm nervous. Oh? Yes. I don't want to say it out loud, but I've informed. Cool. Great. Me. It sounded like a drum roll from our end. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, trick of fate. Dark urban fantasy fairy tale retelling. This is the Hallowed Hills book one by F. L. Mason. Okay, we have Triss from Divergent on the cover here. Mm -hmm. I like. I actually like the font. The font's kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah, I like. Yeah, see, Nino, I, I like this cover more than the other ones. This feels it's again. It has a more action to it. Yes, it's more dynamic. So it's not more purple. It's green. It's green. <laughs> oh, why is the font so big, big, big? 
In a game of hide and seek, the Fae will always win. All the fairy tales told us they were right under our feet, if only we believed them. Sarah watched as the Fae lured millions of men and women to their death in one night, then did what anyone would. She ran. They offer Sarah an impossible choice. Become a contender in the strange underground Fae games or die. Join us and die. Can Sarah learn enough fairy magic to make it past the first challenge, or will she become another victim of the Fey Games locked in the Hallowed Hills for all time? It's a contest with one rule, compete to live. So we've got, yeah, Hunger Games. Stop! 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 Stop using this! Ah, what is this progression fantasy? What does that mean? Uh, Thank you, Jenna. I was also thinking a bit of that. If it's not labyrinth fan fiction, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Wait, did it say no explicit sexual content? Okay. Well, nice. then don't compare yourself to Akatar. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to make the thirsty girls mad out there if you compare it to Akatar and you don't deliver Akatar. That's like the primary reason most people like Akatar. It seems to be written for young readers. It's a YA. Yeah. Younger than the typical. <laughs> because you probably don't read the young adult that's actually meant to be yeah. an adult. Okay. Not anything like. Uh oh. Now we have a, this is why I want to see negative reviews. Okay. Oh no. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh no. No. Oh, this is a no now. Yeah, no. That's, a, that's a strong no. Big no. How dare. That makes me pissed. No answers. See, no, this okay. is the value of the negative reviews. Now you have told me what I would be incredibly offended reading. And now I can avoid having to do that. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hold on, we're gonna, I'm gonna, hold on, I'm gonna fix something here. Yeah. I'm gonna do this. Open this. Do that. There we go. Fixing a small thing. We're good. Mm. Bitten by surprise. Now this looks campy as hell. Yeah, it does. I, it, that's, and it seems kind of fun like that. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Like, the cover is, like, kind of thrown slapdash together. Definitely, like, in a Canva or something like that. But I think it's on purpose. I'm hoping it's on purpose. I'm also hoping it's on purpose. <sighs> okay, Thog, have a lovely night. Thank you for joining. Bye. All right, please be camp. Please be camp. Please be camp. As a vampire-hating psychic, Char should have seen it coming, but she didn't. Too focused on creating a cure for vampirism after watching her father turn into a blood-sucking menace, she looks at little else until it's too late. Not her lab being attacked and destroyed, her life's work being stolen along with her lab assistant, <laughs> or the attractive and dangerous vampire Julian, who swoops in to save the day, give her a job and the chance to set things right. But when her lost serum turns up on the streets used as a murder weapon against vamps, she's forced to hide the truth about her involvement in its development from her new boss in order to join the investigation. As they work together, she's inexplicably drawn to the very type of creature she should be terrified of. Suddenly, the idea of being bitten becomes a turn <laughs> If it's Julian's <laughs> better boss, forced to admit everything she thought she knew about the bloodsuckers was wrong, Shar is left with a decision. Should she create an antidote to save the vampires being murdered and possibly the one she's falling for? Or should she finish what she started and try to cure the rest? The wrong choice could mean a sacrifice she's not willing to make. It still could be campy. It could. This next cover here. Ugh. Camp. 
Yeah? I'm hoping it's camp. I don't know. Give me camp. Someone give me camp. Didn't like the ending. I prefer a traditional romance ending. What does that mean? What was it? Nothing. What does that mean? It's adorable. I like adorable. I will not stand a hot guy changing a life goal. <laughs> yeah. I will be donating this book. I'm praying it lands in the appropriate hands of someone who will love it. Ah. This, honestly, I think I'm going to read this. I think this is going to be silly. Do it. I, I don't know. I, 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 have a, I have a feeling. I hope so. Actually, I have to show you guys another book that I read that I did end up hating the series, but I read them because it was at a time where I didn't even DNF series. I had to read the whole thing. I have unlearned that. Um, Can you go back to the, uh, the the series or the book page? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Um. Crap. What is? What's the name of it? Shit. Hold on. I gotta look in my lists of what I've read, and I gotta get to like my my two star ratings and stuff because this is what it's giving me and this book was these books were super campy um but they made me laugh okay because of how campy they really were here it is andy m longs let me let me get the first one that's the fourth one in it it's the series is called supernatural dating agency oh god vampire wants a wife this <laughs> Beautiful. Oh my god, it's so camp. It's so camp. There is weird smut. I remember reading this. I think I was on an airplane reading this, and I was like, I am sitting next to my mother. Uh, <laughs> but it was like the climax moment. And the text is just like, Whoa! Oh god! It made me laugh so hard. And there's so many of these. There's I read them all. That's oh, I didn't read a prequel. <laughs> what? Sucks. Oh, uh, devil of a date. Hate date or mate. Here for the seer. Didn't see it coming. Foreign peace. Acting. Oh my god, no, wait, there's more now. There's more now. <laughs> do I need to go back? Yes, you do. These are really bad guys. These are really bad. <laughs> they're, they're, yeah, look like at my one star review. <laughs> this is my review. <laughs> we got super weirded out because the vampire and the girl, they have a baby and then that baby grows up and, and then I think this is her story. It's, this one or this one is their child's. And because it's, it's a Renezme situation where the kid grew up really fast. Oh. And it's weird, and I'm like, nope. <laughs> anyway, that's that. That's what this is giving me, and I think it yeah. might be better. I'm hoping it'll be better. Maybe. Oh, but it's funny as hell. I'm fine. <laughs> Why don't you just look these up in Goodreads? What? Why do you keep using Amazon? Why don't you just look them up in Goodreads? I guess. I just like it's clicking is easy. <laughs> Mm. Oh. Oh. Anyway, we have the darkness revealed. Oh, this is why. So I can do this. I can't do this in Goodreads. Oh, right. This is that texture. He looks like uh, Josh Hutcherson a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. And this is like the background is giving AI though. Is that not directly taken from like Full Metal Alchemist? <laughs> Very possibly. Is it not? Oh my god. Um 
Yeah. Okay. I was about to say he looked very generic, like Josh Hutcherson. <laughs> what can you do when the thing that you hate most in the world is the only thing which might keep you alive? Ryan Blackwell, never, generic name, never wanted to have magical abilities. He'd rather leave them as far behind him as possible and never look back. Arriving at the Military College of North Shield, North Shield or Northfield High School, sorry. <laughs> North Shield University was supposed to be a chance to start over and build a new life for himself, one without magic. Thank you very much. But North Shield holds a secret, a powerful nexus of ley lines where there, where these converging lines of raw magical force intersect. Strange things can happen and even stranger beings are attracted to the site. Almost overnight, Ryan is faced with a choice, accept his magic or die. But even that may not be enough because as the threats grow stronger and students begin dying, even Ryan will fill, find his power tested to the limit. It is Boy Buffy. Boy Buffy. This is Boy Buffy. <laughs> Lovely. Boy Buffy. Yep. Why did you AI yourself? Okay. Why does that look like Rhett from Rhett and Link? <laughs> strange things did happen here no stranger would it be i got you tamala all right this book was not my cup of tea excuse me was not my cup of tea okay that's it just not their cup of tea uh, teenager attending military school. Gross. Mm. We have, uh, typos. Oh, there aren't any typos or misspelled words. That's nice. Okay, cool. Plot makes sense. That's good. Problems are the magic system really doesn't make any sense. Magic mean characters back doesn't really make sense. Okay. Not, it's a one person book with no real secondary characters. That's sad. I like secondary characters a lot, though. Yeah. Uh, it's basically a mechanism for wish fulfillment. It's uh, some kind of structure when there really isn't any at all. Oh, no, I don't like him being loved by everyone in the book. No one ever doubts him about anything. No one gives him a hard time about anything. Wow, this is like a male Mary Sue. This is very much that. Only one teacher is named in the entire book. I like a bigger cast. No, six or seven students die and no one seems to care in a week. Wow. <laughs> they don't think, hey, maybe we should leave some cops here in case there's more problems tomorrow because they go three days in a row. Yeah. I'm going to say no. Yeah. Saying no to that one. Oh, shoot. I keep doing that. I'm so stupid, guys. All right. Oh, whoa. Very stu. <laughs> I accidentally fully... Yeah, it is a Gary Stew. Yeah, that, that's what it's called. When it's a Mary Sue, but it's a guy, it's Gary Stew. I did not know that. Yeah, and that's the actual term. Um, I need to get a washcloth, and my eye is doing its super fun thing that it does every day. Aww. Uh, how, how are you guys doing? Uh... Oh, hang on. Uh, hang on. I'm thinking of a story. Last time I gave you guys Target Chicken Wingman, what are some other bullshit stories that I regularly tell people about my... <gasps> G is for giraffe. Oh, wait. Stephanie's back. There we go. Okay. <laughs> uh, we were trying to figure out a story that Cerulean could tell to entertain the people while you went and did your stuff. Oh, I see. I just have to get a washcloth. Oh, I have okay. to hold it to my eye. I don't know why my eyes do this. It's like I get like an oil or something in my eye and makes it hurt. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why. Well, I hate every one of these books. I can't help but being envious of the zero dollars in the Kindle. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not available. <laughs> wow, Nina. Not even search for the Phoenix. Whatever. I won't be insulted by that. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Dark Genesis. Why? 
Why this pose? This, 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 I don't know. Wait. Why? This is a very specific male gaze pose. Yeah, it is. Don't like. Uh, it doesn't seem practical at all. No. Okay. When a mysterious client hires seasoned supernatural hunter Artemis to track a rare creature, she never expects to stumble upon a terrifying web of illegal experiments and dangerous hybrid monsters. Forced to join forces with her rival Declan, Artemis finds herself battling threats she never imagined in a desperate bid to expose the truth. Can Artemis and Declan take down the shadowy forces exploiting paranormal hybrids without losing their own humanity? Or will the dark experiments succeed in creating an unstoppable new breed of monsters? That's it. Uh, nope. Yeah. Button boobs. Po yeah, it's giving discount Laura Croft. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nothing. I like her profile as a Lego, though. Give me something. Damn it. Come on. Okay. Well, uh, god damn. I need to stop being stupid. Someone make me stop being stupid. Because that's all I do. Okay. Whew, two more rows of the paranormal and urban fantasy, y'all. Two more. Let's, okay. I'm going to, let's play some bets. I'm going to go. I'm going to read this one. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a bet that you're not gonna put any of these. That's your bet. None of these are gonna make it. Yeah. Anyone want to bet? What do you, if you think any of these are gonna make the cut? Place your bets now. This has the best potential. <laughs> I don't know. There's a cat on this cover. I will not take that bet. <laughs> okay. You'll take a chance on one, two, Idle Heart. Uh, as for his covers, this is my most the most intriguing cover. What is that? Oh? Uh, is it a cocoon? Maybe. We got butterflies. Of the covers, I like this cover a lot. You know? Yeah. A routine investigation gone awry, a charming stranger, a life-changing kiss, hands that glow, and a sweeping romance for the wait, what glow? I like I like that. That's good. <laughs> Cleo is a hard-working, art-loving, very non-magical police officer mm, who hasn't been on a date in four years. While investigating a vandalism complaint at the train station, she meets Rask. A charming man who, unbeknownst to her, is both the leader of a magical preservation society and on the run from rival relic hunters. When a railway foot chase leads Cleo to a chance encounter with an ancient idol and an unexpected kiss from Rask, she is left with glowing hands she didn't ask for nor wanted. As more magic bursts loose, romantic heat swells, quirky friends meddle, and rival thugs present a looming threat. Cleo hopes of getting rid of the power and returning to her normal life hinge on not Hinge on not being Rask's soulmate, but should she hope for that? Rask is the name. You are. I, the thing that set me off, it's a cop. Yeah. I don't like cop stories. It's only 92 pages. This is very short. Th that is very, very short. Very short. It's reading here for the spice. Yeah. And I'm hoping I'm wrong. Yeah. And what the fuck is idle about this? I think the relic. But there are two oh, idle, two hearts. idle hearts. Did it mean the other spelling of idle? I hope not. I feel like I've seen that author's name earlier. R.A. Clark? Yeah. Hmm. 
could have swore we ended up seeing them somewhere else. And I don't remember there being a very positive review on the other book either. Hold on. I'm gonna good read it. Okay. Maybe in the... No, I'm not seeing one. No? Mm -mm. <clears throat> I could be wrong. I do have memory. Okay. Well, it's a no from me. Yeah. Same. I don't like cop stories. And also super short ones. Look at this floofy cat, though. That is a floofy cat. Very floof. But, like, the texture from cat fur to hair is very strange to me. Yeah. I her eyes look that's, weird. That's reading, that's reading AI. It is. Very, very strongly. Can we look at her hand? Her I hand? Did. It's oh. got... It, yeah, it looks like those two last fingers in the back kind of fused together. That one's bending wrong. The, the, the creases in the hand are in the wrong spot. Is that supposed to For be... For me, it's a wrist. It's what the hands. Like, I can get, like, doing this with your hand and stuff. Like, that, whatever. But the it's the creases in the wrist area there that are weird to me. And that the, the, the bracelet <laughs> just kind of starts disappearing. Yeah. That and the, the way that the textures don't really seem to be consistent. Yeah. Yeah. Like it feels like they keep swapping between like coloring methods there, and that's that's reading AI. Very AI. Trying to look at the background here as well. Mm-hmm. Uh. Yeah, even from afar, it just it looks off. Yep. Yeah. It's so weird. All right, well. Brigitte Donovan is divorced adrift and might be going nuts. Her desire to restore her family's decaying Victorian mansion isn't going well. <clears throat> Mainly because her werewolf contractor is murdered on the job and the only other choice to take over is the hot, if sketchy, cousin to the local coven's head witch. On top of these problems, her fluffy rag... Is that really a rag doll? I yes. had a rag doll growing up. That's a Persian rag doll, probably. Yeah, I'm like, that does not look like Worf, who was my cat. Well, my sister's cat, really. But he was a ragdoll, and he don't look like that. Her fluffy ragdoll cat is now speaking to her. That can't be normal, right? He tells her she's the great-granddaughter of a fey lord and very powerful. That's all fine and dandy, but where's her magic? Her search leads her to discover that her magic was taken from her at an early age and splintered into 13 pieces of jewelry that she must find, reintegrate, and learn to use all before she before the local witch coven finds it first, and they play for keeps. Luckily, she has a best friend, a splinter cat, a griffin, a teenage dragon, and an angry werewolf pack to help. Everything should go smoothly, shouldn't it? Okay, that's reading my, <laughs> my style of, yeah. of synopsis, but... 600 pages is also my style but i yeah i i don't think i can support it if it is an ai cover <laughs> mm, our love. it looks more like a seal lynx point cat than a ragdoll sure <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's I only know what a ragdoll is because I had a ragdoll growing up. <laughs> so. uh, yeah, seems kind of an insufferable um, I just, I main speak. character. So, nope. 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 Yeah. Oh, boy. Who's going to get ready to hate something with me? It's I'm probably gonna hate this. I'm probably gonna hate this. Okay, yeah. Hold on. I have missed the juice. I got missed jurors. 
Why? 5,000 mercedes. Okay, everybody calm down. Everybody calm down now. Mm, sorry. I'm fine. Secrets. Oh, wait, I didn't. I'm not sharing the tab. My bad. Here we go. Secrets of Shooting Star Lake. Oh, what's your name? I know you. He was in American Gods and he was in the hundred. Oh, is that Jason Momoa? No. No. <laughs> no. No. I forget the name actor's he looks like name. He's That's duck lips. What? He looks like he's giving duck lips. Like, oh yeah, he definitely is. He's doing the power. I was like, this wolf looks like he's adding peer pressure. Do drugs, man. <laughs> oh boy. I'm gonna probably not like this. Okay. It's gonna be your favorite one so far. Bet it. Oh, I don't know. oh no. <laughs> No. Okay, 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 okay. Fighting primal instinct is not for the faint of heart. Adam, all I needed from the wickedly smart pastry chef was the land that would give my pack an advantage in the upcoming war. I never expected to need her. But Merit is my fated mate. Every fiber of my being is telling me to claim her. It doesn't matter that it's forbidden. It doesn't matter that choosing her could cost me everything, even my life. All I know is what I feel in my soul. She's mine. Merit. I thought the isolated cabin would be a perfect place to recover from my latest romantic disaster. I was wrong. Turns out the woods are full of supernatural creatures who want something from me. And one of them wants all of me. Sexy yeah. Adam Landry says I'm his soulmate. Police! I'm willing to accept the existence of shifters and a potential paranormal war, but I'll never believe in eternal love, no matter how much he makes me wish I could. <laughs> okay, you know what's funny though? I keep, you know those? Okay, for a while it stopped. For a while this stopped, but it's back, and I don't know why. What? But I keep getting those advertisements for those really badly acted Omega Verse style. Yes, me too. Movies. It's okay. You yes. know those? Yes. yes. I keep getting them, and I'm me like, this too. is not it happened for a while, and then it stopped, and I was like, oh, thank God, I'm out of that. And now it started again, and I keep getting ads for like it's like my Lycan King or something. Yeah. Oh, it's so annoying. But that's what this is giving. It's giving those short movies. Yes. <laughs> the dry heaving in the background pairs perfectly with the synopsis. <laughs> <laughs> so should I read this one, guys? What do you think? Should I? <laughs> no. I'm on the fence. <laughs> <laughs> well, then flip your coin, Stephanie. <laughs> flip your coin. Find out. Oh, man. I got to see reviews on this, though. I got to. Oh my god, it totally is like those, those stories because it has the inner wolf that they talk to. Oh. <laughs> near perfect? It's near perfect? There's a plot twist in the end. It stunned them. <gasps> the only way this is going in my TBR is if somebody makes me. Okay. Don't you fucking dare. Yeah, I was going to say, that sounds like an invitation. Because no, it's not I an invitation. $30, guys. I'll read this. Give me <laughs> this. I'll read this again. Oh, look, it was a Peter Klein's down there for you. I'll read this. 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 I'll read those. Please don't make me read this. Please don't read me, make me read Omegaverse. Wait, 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 what is that bottom tagline in it? What? 
Uh, in the where it has like the sections of pictures, there was one on the bottom. He is inhuman. In the back of my mind, a small voice caution: "You are kissing a man who can morph into a beast." <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Me too. <laughs> oh, let's do the bloody billionaire. Thing. Billionaire. <laughs> I told. Okay, I wanted everyone to know ahead of time. This is where we're going to be mean, because this yes. is my, one of our least favorite things to look at. Yes. If you like this type of stuff, that's fine. Read what you want, but we're gonna lose our shit over it. <laughs> <laughs> Just read this. That's you're gonna have to like pay me a lot of money to do that. Make me read it live. Oh, that's that's gonna. You guys gotta pool that money together. Okay? Yeah. Okay. I bet I bet Stephanie would be much more willing to drink a wine cooler before she read that bullshit. <laughs> oh, I, I will be drinking full on shots of whiskey to get through that. <laughs> So that's a Draco Malfoy from AliExpress. <laughs> what? Nina says that's Draco Malfoy from AliExpress. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what AliExpress is. Is it like Timu? Because that's what I was thinking. Yeah, it's basically like Timu or Wish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't like his lips. He's a bloody... You don't like his lips there? Mm -hmm. I don't like his lips. He's got, he's got some But I love you so much, Seru. Mm, give me a kiss. <laughs> 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 oh, I should do this more often, huh? <laughs> oh God, it's another POV. What first person POV? Oh God. Okay, here we go. Character. <clears throat> So I'm in this sticky situation where the world of the supernatural clashes with the humans. As a skilled blood giver, I have dedicated my life to serving the royal vampires. Wait, is this a? I don't know who's who's reading this. Uh, since it's someone serving, I bet you a billion times that this is uh, the female role. Okay, hold on. Bloody billionaire. Oh yeah, the bloody billionaire wouldn't be wouldn't be donating his blood. Okay, rest restarting. <laughs> Wait, I need to be sexy then. <laughs> so I'm in a situation with a world of supernatural clashes with humans. As a skilled blood giver, I've dedicated my life to serving the royal vampires. I know their ways inside out, if you know what I mean. <laughs> their customs, behavior, and weaknesses has been my life's work. But something flipped my world upside down when I met King Quinn, the anime. Despite my duty, I can't help but being drawn to him. Every interaction is charged with dangerous energy that leaves me feeling conflicted. And to top it off, my sisters and King Mar are getting more suspicious of my relationship with King Quinn. All while the vampire clan is getting restless with the war. I'm wondering if I should remain true to my mission or give in to the forbidden love that I feel. I'm torn between duty and my boobs. I mean heart. <laughs> Plot twist if it was gay. Good point. Oh, I mama. hope it is. Wait, is it? No. It doesn't. It's not, I don't think it is. Yeah. Imagine being yeah. like, I'm so good at bleeding. She's your blood therapist, you fool. I'm <laughs> sorry. What? I would love, I would read it if it was gay. But it's definitely not. Oh, we're not God dang it. Oh. I hate it. Okay. Bye. All of these <laughs> are ones that, like, you gotta pay me a lot of money to make me read this and review it. Uh, <sighs> Some gays in the board housewives. There's multiple kings. It's also giving the Omegaverse, but with vampires. What's that for? Yeah. What do you call it? Omega versus yeah. for vampire for werewolves. What would be vampires? A caste system. 
<laughs> I'm just, I don't know. Why isn't that? <laughs> yeah, I like that one. Which one? Trickle down economics. Trickle down economics. <laughs> good. That's good. All right. We've got no sugar coating it. Femme fatale monster. Wait, 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 wait. Femme fatale <laughs> monsters. Oh, I'm so nervous. Oh, no. Oh, no. I already hate the first line. Yeah. I already hate it. Okay. She was supposed to be another notch on his bedpost. Byron Waits has it all. A job that pays bank, a bevy of women waiting to sleep with him, and a fit physique. Content to go through life treating people like crap and suffering zero consequences for it, he finds himself in a candy shop run by a buxom beauty with raven hair and the most incredible rock he's ever seen. He swears she's the woman of his dreams, but little does he know she's the woman of his nightmares. He was supposed to be a stepping stone to a promotion. Faith's job as a lesser, of course, a demon named Faith. Faith's job as a lesser demon of the second layer of hell is to siphon the souls of the damned and collect her paycheck. She's on the verge of being fired when she gets the brilliant idea of opening up a candy shop to lure poor, unsuspecting damned souls through her doors. But when a human male with a sweet smile and, a, and submissive streak enters her shop... <sighs> She might have gotten more than she bargained for. Oh. This book is incredibly spicy. Bye. Bye. Wait, there's other ones. Sink or Swim is another one in it. Uh-uh. I'm good. Move on. Having someone at your mercy is always a pleasurable experience, but having someone submit to you because they want to, it's as close to divinity I'll ever get, and I don't want this feeling to ever go away. <laughs> oh, 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 no thank you! <sighs> yeah, that's a, that's a no. That That's a no. That's Why a not? No. It doesn't have any one-star reviews. Good. <laughs> Clearly, it's good quality. Yeah. Guys, who's ready for one night with a demon? Uh -huh. Oh, wait, it's book two. It's book two. Hold on. The series title. The series title. Monster Escort Agency. What? Hold on. I'm pulling up the first book. <gasps> That looks like something I would have seen on my mom's shelf as a kid. <laughs> uh. Okay, here's the thing. I wish this category had been split up and we had, like, the eroticas somewhere else. Yeah, I agree. I don't want my baby, my clean baby, in the line with all of this. Yeah. Okay? It's going to give some people some unrealistic expectations uh, and not everyone reads books for sex yeah yeah the vampire one line is hard to read is that i mean that, it's, it's not uh, a oh it's it's dollar store keanu reeves and helena bonham carter <laughs> fair <laughs> Getting edgy couple in high school in 2000s do a photo shoot in the hallway. <laughs> They're definitely in marching band, by the way. He's <laughs> got the spirit Halloween contacts on. <laughs> yeah. All right. After a considerably long dry spell, Ashley finally succumbs to peer pressure and does the unimaginable. She contacts an exclusive escort agency. To her astonishment, they unveil a unique service catering to her preferred literary realm, a paranormal romance. Oh, Yet God. what she could never have foreseen was the agency's arrangement for a night of passion with a creature straight out of her beloved books, an actual bona fide vampire. Wait, does this make fun of itself? Uh, for knowing? Does it know? Is it, it self-aware? 
This is a short story. It's 53 pages. All of these are, apparently. Yeah. One night with a demon. One night with a gargoyle. Ooh. <laughs> this makes me laugh, laugh, laugh. Oh, good golly. Okay. You know, you can get your kinks how you want to get your kinks. Yeah. True. Cool. Anyway. <laughs> We're on the last row. We're on the last row, people. Almost there. Eternally bound. Okay. This is Spirit Halloween Jennifer Lawrence. Yep. Yep. Look at our little blood vial. I hate the, the text on here sucks. That's a Canva. That is a Canva effect. Yep. That is a full Canva effect there. Okay, okay. Spring break in Europe was supposed to be a once-in-a-lifetime experience with my four best friends. It turns out fate had other ideas. When a fun night out turns dangerous, it lands me in the one place I never expected to be. In bed with a stranger who swears he's my husband. That's not even the most problematic part. I'm not even sure if he's human. Eternal love comes at a steep price. I'm just not sure if I'm willing to pay for it. Uh, no. Nope. Nope. Eternally bound. Eternally cursed. Eternally damned with nothing on it. it nope. <laughs> wow. The ending what, what me like what? <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, it's, yeah, okay. Uh, nope. Bye. Bye. Okay. Demon in the librarian. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I'm ready for this. Let's go, Chloe. Archer. Give me something good. Look at how badly photoshopped your horns are. I love it. Oh, that's the worst. I love it. <laughs> it also looks like store-bought Pedro Pascal. Yeah. Like early Game of Thrones Pedro Pascal, not current Last of Us Pedro Pascal. Look at their art. Oh, campaign. he was in Game of Thrones? Yes. Oh. He's the Viper. Who? He's the Red Viper. He's. I don't he know. He dies pretty fast. It's unfortunate. I got That actually made me really mad when I was watching Game of Thrones when I actually cared about it. Because um, they brought in this character who was super badass. And then like two episodes later, they killed him. And I was like, the yeah. fuck? And that made me mad because I'm like, why did you establish this big arc for a person, like this big backstory and stuff, only to kill him? Yeah, that made me mad. Because then they never did anything with the with the rest of the Sand Snakes and stuff. So, Chloe That's Archer, <gasps> it's gay. Oh. It's gay. <laughs> I just get so excited about that. Okay. See, I. I I told you, this is the one that would get on the list. Did I not say, I bet it's going to be this one? And I didn't Hold even on. know. Okay. Hold on, Stephanie. What? Women writing spicy male male romance. True. That's, there is there is that issue. But we don't know. We don't know. Um, already the out. description isn't comforting. Yeah. Because I've seen there's some people who can do it correctly. This is dependent. Like, I have gay romances in mine. Yeah, yeah. True. true. But yours are... See, I think the main problem lies in how straight women actively sexualize the idea of a male-male romance. That's fair. And I am i don't know. We'll see if... I mean, this potentially does do that. Yes. This is but let's see. Let's see. Yuki, I'm hard. Oh, okay. I'm nervous. Accidentally summoning a sexy demon at work totally isn't my fault. It's because of the new addictive soap opera, The Young and the Montrist, I tell you. <laughs> they just had to introduce a new mega hot demon character. So of course I needed to do some research. That's me. <laughs> but my insatiable librarian curiosity has gotten me into hot water because now I'm magically shackled to a demon who claims he's my mate. That can't be a real thing, right? It's got to be some kind of demon trick. Cassiel. Being summoned is every demon's fantasy? Is it? 
Uh, wait centuries for a momentous occasion. At barely 200 years of age, I get my lucky day. This is such a happy... Is this a himbo demon? Maybe. The interdimensional gong of demonic destiny rings for little old me. Wooing Yuki should be a walk in the park, but my trusty seductive wiles aren't working on my prickly mate, and the clock is ticking. I only have two weeks to convince him to accept our bond, or it will be permanently severed. My work is cut out for me, but I'll do whatever it takes to sneak into his heart. I'm kind of hating this person. I don't hate it. I think it's kind of funny. <laughs> Why does he sound like he'd answer the phone with yellow? <laughs> Don't say that. That's what my dad does. <laughs> it tracks. I mean, no, 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 but I mean, like, it's not what you'd expect. Super short. This is super short. It's 117 pages. <laughs> this sounds so funny, though. Okay. I would it say no to me, funny. but I'm not going to do progressively it. better. Uh. Okay. This sounds so fun. I mean, I, I am very anti-fated mates, but I like it when, like, one person is like, no, 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 bye, 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 bye. And the other one is just, like, desperately trying to be like, but I love you. True. It's reading himbo. Demon himbo, and I think it might be funny. Give me something, come on. Also, I agree with Nina. I don't think there's ever a good book out there with the oh, word I doubt, yeah, I'm not saying this, this, this is not a Pulitzer book, okay? This just seems funny and like. It's not going to take me long to read it. This seems like it would be a hilarious thing. I'm putting it on the thing. Do it. You can do to stop me. I hope you enjoy it. Genuinely. Wait. 0. 0.75? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Their tails. Wait. Okay, hold on. Let me put the book here. Excuse me. Like we gotta know about the boogeyman and the school teacher. <laughs> it doesn't look like a boogeyman to me. <laughs> Emrys. <laughs> okay, this is really short as well. It looks like all she writes is male male. Yeah. Well, that's this. At least this series is definitely male male. I don't know about her in particular. The orc and the manny. Oh, I hate that. Mm -hmm. When you call male nannies mannies. Yeah. Why does... What is the... <laughs> it's green Johnny Depp. Ugh. The Hulk has calmed the fuck <sighs> down. Uh, it's so... Okay, let's see what else. Does this author do anything else? Wait. Yeah, male, male, sci fi, fantasy, rum, 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 with laugh out loud humor. She's from Minnesota. I do not trust a single. Chloe is a fur mama, two adorable Yorkies. I do not trust a single female author who only writes male, male. I yeah. Oh. Uh... Oh. Uh... Yeah. I'm still going to read the one just because it seems funny. I don't think I'll continue with it, but I feel like this is one that I think is going to be hilarious. Believe bad. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Has color your, your shirt is the monster and your birthday is a impression table somewhere and is using it to its full potential. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly this. One of the funniest books I read was about a biologist and a human dragon, so who knows? See, yeah, one cut on the TV. <laughs> it's funny. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, I'm fine. I'm not crying. I. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, hey, it's GM Sully. Who's that? 
Uh, one of the people that Lena mentioned. Hmm. Or that Jenna mentioned. Oh, was it Jenna? Jenna, yeah. Okay. All right, Jenna, I'm going to be real. I don't like this cover. I don't like it. I just, it, it's, it's, I think it's that, 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 um, it's not meshing together. Like I can very easily see the cut. <laughs> what is that? I don't know. It's just, it's, it's weird. The cheekbones are weird. She's added way too much contour. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> On life of Lisa Cooper. Conviction. For over century, over a century and a half, Lisa has kept the toll of her curse at bay. In doing so, she's maintained the remnants of the woman she was in life, but she has denied herself a great deal of power. Such a sacrifice can be dangerous in nights filled with supernatural threats. Matters complicate when a mortal becomes entwined in her life. Can Lisa keep her secret from a new friend while protecting him from the horrors that threaten herself and everyone close to her? That's not enough. No. There's, I don't even know what her curse is or that she's definitely undead. Yeah. What is it? That's not enough. Everyone in the book cover world has the exact same pair of earrings. <laughs> Probably. Uh, it It just does not it's not, there's not enough. This is, this is a huge no for me. A very, very, very strong no. Okay. Me. I mean, I, I have stronger no's for other books over this one, but. I mean, do we, do we need to go back? Do we need to go back? <laughs> Yeah, we don't need to go back. I didn't say it's the strongest no. I just said it's a very strong no. Okay. <laughs> it's also, a, it's it's currently a no for me. I just, there's not enough. There's nothing from that synopsis for me to go off of. So, yep. Yep. All right. We've got Love Lies and Immortal Ties. Oh, we're a rapper. One review, but I highly doubt it. Like, Highly doubt it. Okay. I think we've got some freckle representation. That's good. Yeah. Her hair texture changes quite a lot. Our curl texture. Hair changes. texture is actually a very common thing with uh, AI art. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's that. That's where I was going with that. Uh oh, sister. And the house, I'm uh, thinking, doesn't look right either. Yeah. Look at the yeah. look at the fencing. <laughs> the fencing doesn't all connect. Like there are some parts that are just kind of floating in there. Yeah, it's giving the gothic can of stuff. Uh huh. Is it a ginger with black eyebrows? Ah. I think that could be brown. They're, yeah, they're kind of brown. But yeah, that texture, the the real drastic change in curls. There's three different curl patterns. Yeah. Right here, right here alone. So that's giving completely AI. Also, Nina, I dye my eyebrows red, uh, black, but I'm a ginger. They do. They look like they don't have eyebrows if they don't do it. It's true. <laughs> Boom. Okay. Well, let's see what it's about and judge further. I moved. I moved to Whitby, expecting my days to be filled with grief and heartache while I watched my father die. But turns out the town has much more to offer a teenage girl like me. His name is Marcus Davenport. Rich, powerful, admired by the locals. Not human. If I were smart, I would have run the other way when I realized what he was. But there's this undeniable pull between us. A heartbeat that brings us both to life whenever we're together. I convinced myself it was fate drawing lines in the sand. The beginning of a love story that would end with forever. But I was wrong. 
Turns out the blood running through my veins is tied to Marcus in a way that corrupts everything we feel for each other. It's no longer something I can trust. Nothing is as it seems. The paranormal residents of Whitby altered my reality forever. And now I'm caught in a web of dark secrets and deadly deceits. The future is more uncertain than it ever has ever been. And I have no idea what's going to happen between Marcus and me. Oh, and then there's Luke, another one of the town's little secrets. And one huge complication. That's a nope. terrible way to introduce that there's a love, a love triangle. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like this. There's not enough as well. Like, for how much it was talking, I, I didn't actually get a plot. No. Nope. Um, and, yeah. Oh, even worse AI cover there. Yeah. I really wish they'd put better regulations on that shit. Really, really would. But, no. Tor books themselves don't do that, though. And Tor is known for being, like, a really good company for that kind of shit. That's good. I'm so... No, they wait, don't put regulations. No, they're bad. No. They're yeah. they're doing so bad with their with AI. So, like, Gothicana just came out, and that was a big one. Uh, they did uh, it to Mr. Paolini's Fractal Noise or whatever. Yeah. Just, they're I doing so. it, and they are companies who can afford artists. That's what I meant by they're they're like one of the a, a, a really good company for that. Is like they have the ability, yeah, to not. They're choosing they choose. not to. They're actively yeah. choosing to be art thieves than do this. That's funny. And shit. Bad and just lazy cover. It's lazy. So, two more people on this side. It's taken almost four, it's taken four hours because i've got to get through these two to get through yeah. urban fantasy and paranormal romance that was the biggest chunk though it is it is the biggest chunk night snazzy night. blood and ashes canva font this is reading ai as well what are we holding? Yeah, yeah what? What? Whoops. Very much AI. I don't like why we got the rogue hair. We've got rogue's hair. What's wrong with the eyes of these people? <laughs> Wrong is AI generated. <laughs> blood holds the power to both heal and destroy. The fingertips of a blood witch hold enough power to heal or destroy the entire world. Yeah, you could have combined that into one thing. Kaylin discovers that she has incredible power at her fingertips. The power of blood magic. How many times are we talking about fingertips of I blood? I don't could take a shot every time she says blood. This okay. could also be AI written. I'm just saying. That's fair. She's capable of both healing and destroying. A few drops of blood. Bring an abandoned baby hey. back to the head. Oh As she God. struggles with her newfound power, Kaylin meets an alluring stranger with eyes unlike any Kaylin has ever seen. She finds his blue eyes with a ring of lilac around the pupils, absolutely memorizing. I hate that line. However, he may have entered her life with more than a romantic relationship in mind. Stepping through a door in a decaying factory, Kaylin falls through a portal into a frightening world. There, a sickly woman with coal black eyes, rimmed in emerald green. Girl, why? Why? She demands the return of the child and threatens consequences if her order is not obeyed. As Kaylin hides the abandoned baby from the authorities, and where did the baby come from? Well, where did the baby come from? <sighs> She hides the abandoned baby from the authorities and runs from those who threaten her. She relies on the man with whom she's fallen deeply in love to save her. The question remains, is there, is he there to help or her or betray her? In the land of fairy, the unseelie are dying from the spread of a fatal disease. Only the child with special blood can save them. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to say that this is also AI written. That seemed, it's, this is a terrible, terrible summary. That's terrible. She brought yeah. it back to life earlier, did she? Yeah. Where? A few drops of her blood. Oh, brain. I told her I was too busy doing shots. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Diet Coke. <laughs> okay. Got it. Thank you. I'll just spend so many words in eye descriptions. Yes. Don't do that. Oh, my God. 
poison for Cusco. Cusco's poison. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly. All right. All right. All right. We are on the last one. Now, there's a very specific reason I already don't like this cover. It's a girl then, on a car. What? It's a girl on a car. No, not even that. I mean, sure that, but it's giving 80s. Yeah. And I don't I don't like the 80s. <laughs> it's a stupid reason. <laughs> but that's true. Uh maybe early 90s. I have seen this exact fox on so many other things. <laughs> okay. Um at least it doesn't look AI generated. No. It's just an aesthetic I'm not a well, fan of. Actually, maybe. Maybe those trees are. Well. Yeah, those trees are. Never mind. Damn. But then it's like slapdash on here. So Yeah. You might have yeah. just used the background for AI and then slapped a bunch of pictures on other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> eye communication is not reliable eye communication. All right. <clears throat> also, this is a white author, it looks like. I don't know. Uh, it's small. Hold on. Uh, it doesn't... Wait. Yeah. A little nervous about that. A little nervous here. Our mystery begins in Richmond, Virginia. Okay, hold on. I got to get my Southern Virginia accent. Out there. <laughs> Janice Lynn Parita is pissed. Two days before her 16th birthday, she was murdered. She thinks if only she could remember what happened and get someone to believe her. Right now, wait, that didn't end. If only she remember how to get someone to believe her. Okay. Right now, she's stuck with giant, giant mate. Giant Maddie, a grumpy forensic pathologist who's actually a raper living in exile. But Jay won't listen. He thinks Janice just needs to find her ferryman and then he'll be done with her. Ghosts are no longer his responsibility anyway. At a crime scene, they stumble onto a dark conspiracy that goes well beyond a ghost without a ferryman. Jay and Janice are thrust into a twisted mystery that winds its way across a supernatural America and even to some places beyond. The unlikely companions travel alongside a reluctant demigod, a memory-challenged psychic, and a not-so-friendly demon as they unravel the threads of corruption in the fairy courts. Uh-uh. Back for my lurk. Memory <laughs> challenge psychic uh -huh. is my new gender identity. <laughs> what did you say? I said memory challenge psychic is my new gender identity. Do you have a southern accent, Snazzy? Because you should be reading it. Because from Virginia. <laughs> they say the ers instead of a's. They say ers. Um, I don't hate it. But it's a bit more too much crime scene, you know? Snazzy, how's my accent for a Virginia? Virginian. How do I sound? Can I blend in if I come visit you? Probably not. I feel like I should have a really good Southern accent, you know. You're from Michigan. Why would you have a good Southern accent? Uh, no, sorry. My family's from Michigan. I pretty much grew up in Tucson. We don't talk with Southern accents in Tucson. If anything, we sound Californian. I I have met many many uh, white people with Southern accents in like the cowboy regions out in Three Points and shit. That's because they play acting. They fucking migrated. <laughs> <laughs> Three Points is like. Out, outskirts, like long stretches. You're of too south. It's it's got to be southeast. The southeast is where they've got that thick accent. You're not Bible Belt. No, I'm not Bible Belt. That's where the accent really comes in. Is with Bible Belt. My sibling kind of sounds like that. Yeah, yeah. I believe it. Where do they live? Georgia. I, this is this is what I'm really on the fence for because I'm I'm stuck in this accent now. Uh, I'm on the fence for it it's just because there's nothing bad about it that I can see. Wait, let's look at the reviews and then maybe. 
unique read, A Magical Adventures Road Trip. Janice. Heart, heart, heart. Janice. Damn it, Janice. No. There's trolls in here. There's what? Trolls? trolls. They got trolls. Interesting. Don't give them attention. That's what they want. <laughs> I don't hate it. All right, let's see. <coughs> Good. Oh, it's got a different cover on Goodreads. Oh, no cover coming soon. Didn't, didn't quite update that now, did it? All right. Well, that is out of 30, 36 books. I'm really stuck. Hold on. Get me out of this accent. There we go. This happens from time to time. Oh, yeah, sure you betcha. Uh, out of 36 books in the urban fantasy and paranormal romance category, seven. I I'm have so much put 14 books on my list. All right. Where would you like to go next? <laughs> fantasy oh, and yeah. sci-fi romance. Time travel, portal fantasy, steampunk, cyberpunk, psychic opera, and sci-fi tales. Or fairy tale retellings, myths, and legends. I'm actually curious about the fairy tale retellings. I okay. think that there might be some good ones in there. Okay. Okay, going back to learning, if there's another VA book, I might be summoned again. I will do. <laughs> All this start speaking in a real bad accent for you, Snazzy, and that's your cue to come on back. <laughs> <laughs> Seven is pretty good considering some of the books on there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I also got hungry. Me too. Working on it. Okay, this one we don't need to do because I've already done this one. This is a duplicate. This is also a duplicate. So we're, we're not starting. on the page with you. What? Oh, shit. We're not on the page with you. My bad. No this is a duplicate and this is uh -huh. a duplicate. Okay. I've done those already. So we will start with this one in a moment. To betray a king. A frog prince retelling. Oh, sorry. This is where I, oh, this is. Very much potentially AI. Yeah, this is very. Oh, what the frog? Look at him. Look at him. Nina, it's almost 3 a.m. here. I should be sleeping, but here I am roasting books I'd never read. It's fun. <laughs> I love I love a good roast, okay? Every you are all welcome to roast me at any time. I love it. Yeah, that's AI. Yeah. That's funny. Okay. My frog needs some medical attention. What? <laughs> what? Oh, <laughs> Yeah. Look at him. He kind of looks buff. Like the arms look really thick. His his legs, all four of them look really un unnaturally long. Yeah, he they do. Shit about the book and he's on his way. <laughs> okay, y'all stare at him for a second. I'll be right back. Is it time for Gene to wrap? Sure, go ahead and give Gia the draft. Okay, so once I had to work for this damn answering service, right? And there was this lady, and I can't really blame her too much because I'm pretty sure that English was her second language. But uh, the company policy was that we had to, uh, anytime they gave us something like an email or a name, we had to spell it out phonetically every time. And if they corrected us, even if we were right, we had to spell it out phonetically all over again. 
And this lady did not believe me for jack shit that draft started with a G. And so, like, I kept trying to be like, no, ma'am, draft does start with a G. And she's like, no, G is in girl. G is in girl. And I swear, we went back and forth on this for like 10 whole minutes. Most of the minutes spent going through phonetically. But yeah, no, eventually I caved. G is in girl. Please make this conversation end. <laughs> There are 12 novellas in this mm. series. All right, while my food is heating, we're doing this. Yeah. A princess tasked with poisoning a stranger, a handsome gentleman distracting her from her purpose. Phelan is a princess of Morwen, or at least she used to be, forced to flee her kingdom. She's dependent on her cousin, King Jeshua, to keep her and her family safe. But that safety comes at a price. She must act the part of a commoner in order to administer an unknown substance to one of the king's enemies or else be handed over to the man who usurped her father's throne. As she tries to find her way into a house party where her victim is a guest, Phelan meets Bram. She retrieves something precious to him and in exchange asks a favor. Give her food and a place to stay. Though their meeting starts with manipulation, she can't help but like Bram, and he takes an instant liking to her, but she can't possibly entertain feelings for him, not when her freedom and her family are on the line, and not when she's being forced to hurt his friend. But Bram is patient and earnest, and his constant help and kindness are impossible to resist. It can't last, though, not when she'll have to flee the moment she's fulfilled her assignment, and not when Bram will hate her as soon as she does. Where's the frog? Bram is a frog. Is he? I don't know. Where is the frog? No clue. It's my head cannon and the most interesting idea that I have so far. So I'm not <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna grab my food real quick. The frog is at the doctor's. <laughs> what? <laughs> Nina says the frog is at the doctor's. <laughs> Better be. I have garlic cheesy bread. That's what I'm eating, by the way. Ooh, I finished off my garlic cheesy bread. <sighs> survive. Do I need to bring you bacon offerings to keep you safe? Where, how is this a frog prince retelling? How mm -hmm. is it? The weirdest frog prince retelling I've ever read. I'm not saying it was horrible because it was delightful or boring, but because there was plenty of plot and compelling characters to make me want to not only keep reading the book, but to made more of Larson's books in general. Felt rather unorthodox to me. Oh, it's after the Disney. Mm -hmm. Or no, they said their frame of reference is that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Star crossed lovers, political intrigue, reluctant friendship, chosen one. Not in its own capacity. Just fine. Yeah. I want to know where the frog part is. Where is the frog? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I wish I could act, ask questions. This just like control F frog. <laughs> Well, it's everyone say frog princess. It's not gonna. It's gonna be a yeah, lot of other frogs. Like, you can find one through there. Maybe. It doesn't have a drop of magic in it. How do you get a magic frog then? I'm confused. Ah. Uh. I think Nina's right. You'll have to read it to meet the frog. I guess. I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. Did anybody else tell me about a frog? That person, wait, that's not the story title, but okay. Can I ask, should I ask the question here? Where is the fucking frog? Yes. <laughs> All right. It's there. Oh, really? I want to know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I want to know. Leave me alone. <laughs> Hmm. Song of Ebony. A Snow White retelling. Wait, is that by the same person? No. Okay. Never Grace White. Kitty! A Sorbo! That's not an ocelot? Oh, it might be an ocelot. Oh, no. No, you're right. It's not a servo. It wouldn't have, it would have the point of your ears. Yeah. I just saw the coat pattern and assumed serval. Get her snow white because her hair is white. Yeah. Uh, I'm a little... Good. A little worried you know, about that. Yeah. And doing... Eb is the character... Wait. Okay, her name is Bianca. I was going to get real annoyed if that character's name was Ebony. I will say, though, that it is a very common issue for white people to portray black women with white hair or blonde hair. Yeah. Um, and the fact that she doesn't have natural looking hair. That's definitely yeah. a white woman's texture. Very true. I hate this with everything in my heart. Wow. Yeah. I wasn't going that far, but... I will. It's okay. Alright, well... In a city trapped in the treetops, one princess's song will change everything. Crown Prince Bianca has always been unusual. I, too, am strange and unusual. <laughs> um, sorry, I was reading Nina's comment there. Yeah. From her snow-white hair to the strange way her words dance. But just like every other Selvanin, she's restricted to the trees, unable to set foot on the deadly soil. That is, until her stepmother betrays her on the eve of her coronation, sending Bianca to the ground to die. Except the jungle floor is not what Bianca expected. From supposedly mythical elves to magic on wild, it seems there is much she didn't know about both her kingdom and herself. Prince Farron never intended to get trapped in Silvana forever. He only came to find a cure for his brother's terrible affliction. But after two years, he's no closer to his goal. And his continued survival depends on his ability to navigate both the treacherous Selvan Selvanin jungle and the ways of the bargain-loving miniature elves. When he crosses paths with an exiled princess, his course takes an abrupt change. It's not just because he's rattled by his all-consuming determination to keep the princess safe. Most Sylvanans then... More Savannans and Bianca will pay with their lives if the pair can't find a way to outwit her enemies and harness the power of Bianca's voice. Mm. Yeah. Well, I already... Well, here's the thing. I also hate Snow White retellings anyway. Uh, I, it's my least favorite... Um, least favorite fairy tale of all time. I hate Snow White. Um... <laughs> He's emotionally stunted. <laughs> um, but yeah. Yeah. Not a fan. I I do agree on the like the whole texture and stuff. Like, yeah. Like, this is a fairy tale kingdom in the trees. I don't think they have relaxers there. Yeah. To make it a normal, a normal style. So. Okay, okay, this is the one I, I'm kind of excited. Look Let's at our beautiful. <laughs> I pre looked at this one. I was I didn't read the synopsis, but I pre looked at the cover and I'm just like, look at that, man. <laughs> you were saying before it was like when uh, Beast turns into a human. And every young girl got disappointed. Yeah, everyone was like, oh. <laughs> You're exactly right, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. 
And that's Vanessa Hudgens. Yep. That's her. There she From is. From the Pixar Switch. <laughs> Random tentacles over here. Oh, it's a Little Mermaid retelling. That's why. <gasps> is it reverse? Is it gender swap? It must be gender swap. There's 12 books in this series. Fine. Sorry, I get this thing from my salivary glands that stings sometimes. Oh, no. It really hurts. I've had it since I was a kid. They've never been able to tell me what to do about it. I was sure this is WD the Beast. You're like, yeah. Fuck, that hurts. Can you stop? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, crap. Is there stuff going on? Hold on. What's that? In the murder mystery readathon. Ah, uh, I see. <laughs> so Snazzy's in this with me. Yeah. Someone in this was like, I'm pretty suspicious of this other person because she doesn't seem to like being suspected. And I'm pretty suspicious of Snazzy because she does seem to like being suspected. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, this person, this other person they're talking about is a little bit like taking too much offense to being suspected. So The one you were talking about last time? Yeah. Yeah, he is definitely giving Fabio. He's giving, like, Gen Z Fabio. I mean, there's the sentence, he's confident that he can win her affection. He's irresistible, after all. Like, oh, buddy. Uh, buddy. Yeah. Well, let's hope that's character growth. A voiceless prince. A desperate princess. A sham romance that turns heartbreakingly real. When cocky mer prince Karis, Karius... Kyrius impulsively saves the human princess from drowning. He doesn't expect to fall in love with her. Yet her human fragility is so unexpectedly sweet uh, that he is soon head over tails. At least he didn't say female fragility. True. A human. I can get behind that because humans, yeah. So he bargains his voice to the Lord of the Deep for a chance to court her on land. He's confident he can win her affection. He's irresistible after all. <laughs> But he's a fish out of water in the human world. He didn't expect it to be so difficult to make Marin appreciate his charms. Her father is ailing. Her kingdom is threatened from multiple directions. And she must choose from among several foreign suitors to keep her people free. Thinking Kyrius is no more than a mute stranger, she asks him to pose as her suitor to give her leverage with the foreign lords vying for her hand. But not all of them are so easily deterred. And they won't take no for an answer. Kyrius will have... To show the princess that his love is not just an act, but how can he win her? Much less save her without a word. Okay. I'm hoping for major uh, character growth, which I think it would probably do. Hopefully. I think it, I, I'm hoping it will. The little mermaid. <laughs> and you know, I'm not. I'm not against I'm not, this one. I'm not opposed to this one. I think I, I would do this. didn't have AI. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The Silent Prince. And I love a good gender swap. Yeah. I want to know what other ones that this person's done. Let's put this on. Hold on. Books. Sharing this tab. All right. Let's see. What other ones are in this series? Because it's not listed as a series, but. Lord of Dreams. The Wraith and the Rose. That's got to be Sleeping Beauty. Yeah. Maybe. What are all in the series? Hold on. Oh, oh, they're not even listed over there. Oh, it's another one of those. 
that has all the different authors. Oh. See, we've got Deborah Grace White, Kate Stradling, Alice Zivinia. Okay. Oh, this is a Robin Hood one. Midnight Prince. <laughs> Are they all, they're all gender swapped. Are they all gender swapped? I kind of like that. The Poisoned Prince, yeah. That's a pussy post retelling! <laughs> I am! <laughs> okay. I'm I fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Oh my gosh. There's our Beauty and the Beast. Whoa! <laughs> Hold on. Witcher, is that you? What? The Witcher. The oh, Witcher. I thought you said Winter. I'm like, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to start with Silent Prince. Yeah, it's also fake dating to lovers, which I do love a good fake dating trope. Hell yeah. I'm not going to lie. That is a trope I can I can get behind. I don't hate that. Okay. Oh, that's one. Oh, we got it. Is that the second one I put on now? Yes. Okay, um, we don't need to do this one. I've already done that. It's also an anthology. Yeah. Into Fairland, not Fairyland, Fairland. Into Fairland. Stop it. Um. AI. I like how you guys are just immediately AI, and I'm like, I don't know. I do. There are very, very clear tell uh, signs and stuff. What? The pattern on the hilt. The guard? No, 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 no sorry, the, the, the hand guard. What about it? Okay, do you see how, like, there's that pattern hatching? That is in a lot of things. That plus what? How the, plus how the uh, rose vine melds into the sword. Oh, true. It doesn't, though. It doesn't, though. If you're looking closer, it doesn't. It, it goes behind. I can see on mine, it goes behind. It doesn't go into the sword. No, I know it does, but there are tangents that lead from the sword hatching into the vine. Oh, wait. That. Sorry, I was thinking you were looking over at this part. Mm. That, that part, that goes through it. Like, it's just, it's, it's definitely AI. Okay. I just don't want to throw out AI accusations if it's not really, but that, I, I see this thorn going through it now, and that makes more sense. Yeah. This part, no, because I can see it going behind. That part, yes. Immediately thought Utena. <laughs> okay, we never steal children. We only swap them. An eye for an eye, a child for a child. Aiden's mission to retrieve the sword master from demon territory doesn't go to plan as he falls dangerously in love with the sword master Kira. She's pretty as a fae and a strong, graceful fighter with every mo movement she makes. He falls harder. Kira and Aiden both ignore all the warnings, marry, and have two beautiful daughters. Meanwhile, Kira's swords forged with cold iron and adorned with fae silver have angered the fae. Determined to pay the humans back, the ruler of Fairland, Queen Persephone, orders Letty to switch... Who's Letty? Uh... Orders Letty to switch her beloved changeling, Nada, for one of Kira and Aiden's children. Letty's heart breaks as Nada is torn from her hands and replaced with a snotty human child. Now the one person she loved in all the world is gone. She will do anything to bring Nada back, including killing Kira and Aiden to end the fairy bargain. I don't even care about this story, though. Yeah, Letty is apparently one of the main characters and hasn't even been mentioned, like, anything it takes, about her. It takes three paragraphs to get to her. Yeah. So, no. That's a poor summary. But rows and swords coming out of places they shouldn't be coming out of. Yeah, what is, I don't I don't know what this is a retelling of. I guess it's not necessarily a retelling because it can be fairy tale retellings, myths and legends. So it's just like basically the changeling. That's mythology. yeah, it's a changeling. So that's the actual title of this of all this. But that's a no from me. Pink guitars and falling stars. 
That's cute. I like that. Cover. This is a Rapunzel for Sherzies. Yeah. Oh, and another. Whoa, there's double Rapunzel. Um, AI. <laughs> I'm like, that's a violin thing on a guitar. I mean, I guess some guitars might have that on them. I don't know. It might not be AI. If it's not, then it's somebody, an artist who really took inspiration from AI art. That's, <laughs> then that's fine. <sighs> oh, it's about to pop in, though. Masters, the AI. It's a Viatar. <laughs> The Hollywood music scene isn't all glitz for pop diva Zelly in this modern Rapunzel retelling. Her fame comes with hidden costs, enduring chaotic hair extensions that flow the length of a football field and dark magic that threatens to ruin her voice forever. Aspiring indie musician Justin is determined to kick it to the top of the Rampion Records Pro versus Amateur Live Singing Competition and the favorite to beat none other than Zelly. These, those ridiculous hair extensions coupled with her bubblegum pop sound are an affront to everything Justin loves about music. He vows to become her nemesis until a stolen kiss reveals the woman behind the fame and sparks blaze between the two singers. Once inside Zelly's world, Justin encounters sinister shadows beneath the facade of her rock star life. In their quest to allow Zelly to stop, step into the spotlight free of Rampion's hold over her, the pair must confront the malevolence behind the dazzle of the mega record company's success. If these star-crossed rival celebrities can't rally their own brand of magic to defeat the darkness, they will lose everything, including each other. I don't care, because I don't like pop star stories. Bye, Tamara. Yeah. Have a good night. Good night. I don't, I don't, I don't like famous people stories. I don't, yeah. I don't like those. Those are not my, not my jam. Not my jam. Not my jam. Not my jam. Her sapphire blade. Generic paranormal cover! Uh, this moon, we've seen this exact moon before. I mean, I guess the moon doesn't really change, but it's like the positioning and everything of it is exactly the same. They had to name the male pop star Justin. Yeah. Her sapphire bleed, a guardians of Ki oh no! I also am not a big fan of King Arthur stories. Oh yeah, definitely I, not. I am known for that throne of glass pose. <laughs> <sighs> the legends got it wrong. Morgan Le Fay has never been good at magic. That's bullshit. Despite her aunt's insistence that she has great power and royal blood in her veins. It just never felt true in her modern London life. The tales she heard as a child of the kingdom of Camelot and her place in it were just stories woven to bolster her spirits. And when her magic fails to protect her loved ones, Morgan is certain she's not meant to be a witch. Until a stranger appears on her doorstep, insisting that she has a destiny to fulfill in a kingdom she always believed was fantasy. The moment she sets foot in present-day Camelot, the connection to her magic she's longed for snaps to attention. Even still, she'll need to master her skills if she has any chance of taking back her throne. She arrives on the eve of a tournament of magical champions in honor of Prince Arthur's impending coronation. Barely able to gain entrance to the challenge, Morgan must best witches, fae, and dragons for her chance to take on Arthur. But even if she makes it to the final bout, proving her claim to the crown would cost her everything. Is this destiny worth risking her life for? So it's it's a no for me just because I don't like I don't like King Arthur retellings and stuff. Yeah, with a splash of the Matrix leather aesthetic. King I'm Arthur not, Matrix. I like the Matrix. I'm not a fan of this book. Go. Yeah. Er, I like I like King Arthur stuff. I mean, did I say mm -hmm. the Matrix? Because I also like the Matrix. Yeah. Well, it's fine. To like the Matrix and stuff, I just, I just don't, I don't, I'm not into King Arthur stuff because there's always for me whenever I hear a King Arthur story, I immediately go, "There's going to be a cheating aspect," and I don't like that. True. But this is granted, this is Morgan Le Fay's side, 
which is more interesting to me than any of the other ones. Yeah. But my money is on that she will orchestrate the cheating with, with Guinevere and, and Arthur thing and Lancelot. Yeah. And that will happen because you can't really have a King Arthur story without that iconic moment. And I don't like it. So yeah. I'm just not into this one. That's that's about that. Another one I'm just not, not that into it. For a second, when I looked at the smaller version of this one, I thought it was misspelled, but it's not. It's fine. Nameless Queen, the prophecies of Ragnarok. Oh. Eh. 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 It is, yeah, it's kind of a boring cover. But at least it's not like every other one. <laughs> all right, this is a prequel of 69 pages. He keeps sh showcasing all these prequels. All things end and all must die, but death is not always the end. When I'm not even going to try. Wait! Loki's yeah. daughter. Oh. That's Loki's, that's Loki's daughter. Was stripped of her name and cast out of Asgard, torn from her family and the life she had known. She thought she'd lost it all. But in the shadows of of uh, Ifelheim. Thank you. She discovers the path to her destiny and what it truly means to be queen. Um. Oh, because it's Hell. Why didn't you just name her Hell? I don't know. Yeah, I'm allowed to have some art criticism. <laughs> Go for it. I mean, there's not a lot, but granted, it is 69. <laughs> Um, I love hell. I love yeah. stories about hell. Uh -huh. I think she's a badass, and I'm here for it personally. I, this tells me absolutely nothing. I have yeah, it doesn't give me enough. I, I am concerned about the cover, um, and I think that this person probably did it really poorly. But I would be happy to look. Enjoy! Garagor is a Valkyrie and not Loki's daughter. See, I didn't know that name. I didn't either. But Loki's, the, the, her last name means Loki's daughter. Yeah, that I got. Yeah. What's the rest of the series? Because. Midnight Sun. God damn. Oh, okay, they're both tiny babies. Yeah. They're both prequel short stories to the prophecies of Ragnarok. This is for Balder. Oh. <laughs> Nina, I instantly hate all of this. It's not enough for me. And plus, it's so short. It's just not enough. Not enough. Never enough. It's never, never. I'm fine. I am. I am a sucker for Norse mythology. Um, I'm not. I'm not. I'm gonna be real. I'm not. Yeah. It's kind of. It's it's kind of gotten the like the overhyped treatment like everyone is like well I'm into Norse mythology rather than like other ones it seems oh, to I'm be also like a sucker for Greek mythology and well, yeah. I'm also a sucker for like any other mythology mythology yeah, yeah. <laughs> right now in our popular world it seems Norse is the thing this is gonna be another King Arthur because it's Merlin's apprentice well it might be Sword in the Stone kind of thing. I mean, like, not Sword in the Stone. Uh, uh, a Merlin-specific, like, Maybe. Merlin well, story in okay. King Arthur. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. <laughs> that one only has three. And yeah, wait. That's, that's a messed up hand. 
Yeah, and the finger is melting through the arrow. Yeah, I'm like, wait, what is that piece there? Hello, AI. Hi, how are you? AI. That's AI. See, that time I can spot it. Yeah. <laughs> Young Pip must embrace his magical powers to rescue his family from slavery or help the king save the realm, a decision that will tear his world apart. Desperate to keep his family together, Pip hides his powers so he can be sold with them. But when his father and brother are sold to different mages and the slavers attempt to separate his mother and sister, Pip loses control and injures the slaver with magic. The uproar catches the attention of the Southern King Druid's advisor, Merlin, who quickly offers a place to Pip, his sister, and his mother. On the road to King Arthur's court, bandits attack their camp, and his family is further torn apart. Pip has no chance but to work with Merlin, who may not be the evil mage Pip assumes him to be, to learn to harness his power so he can help King Arthur stop more dread. Only then might Pip have a chance to see his family together. There's the cataract we've come to know and love. There it is. Uh, yeah, no, it's AI cover for surezies, at least on my part. I'm like, yes, that's AI. Yeah. Nope. Bye. Heart of Destiny. I was really expecting to have a lot more reads out of this because I love retellings and stuff. Yeah. <sighs> hey, look, she doesn't have glowing eyes. Dragon! Uh, her hair texture does morph into her grass texture, though. Yeah, it does. At least she has all her fingies. Why does the look at the dragon's leg? Look at his toes. Yeah, and what like, is that? Compared to each other, yeah, it just gets worse and worse the longer you look. Did it look? Oh my god! Even up top, the what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. What the hell? She doesn't have any eyes, so it doesn't count. <laughs> Does need a good hair oil, and that looks dry as hell. <laughs> Yeah, nope. God damn. Y'all need to stop. <sighs> magic suppressed, magic exiled, magic murdered. During the Great Purge, all magic was destroyed, and those who could well, they even driv was driven into exile. From that time on, the world of Gaia churned on in relative peace and prosperity. When the Emperor of the Central Citadel suddenly dies, his apprentice takes his place. Benevolent, loved, the new Emperor is a benign ruler, bridging the age-old conflicts between their provinces. The Citadel is a symbolic as well as physical barrier to maintaining the fragile peace. However, the brazen kidnapping of ten young women shatters the accord, and the counselors of the provinces gather at the Citadel to demand justice be served. It is a flame dropped into dry tinder. Rife with suspicion and hatred, each province accuses its neighbor of treachery, but the emperor has other plans. He alone knows who is responsible for the kidnappings of the young women, and he has no intention of sharing that knowledge, because I bet you it's his. Where magic is involved, there can only be one conqueror. The fight for ultimate control of magic has begun! Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't hate the description. I'm mad that this is AI because I can't support it. Yeah. I'm mad about that. Like, I would have read your shit if you didn't support an AI cover. That makes me upsetty spaghetti. <laughs> wow. How many? I've done three. Three? I kind of I kind of want to look for like books with AI covers and then just like message the, the author and be like, hi, I'd be willing to do a cover for you. 10 bucks. <laughs> I'm honestly right now, I'm like, should I contact CL Cannon and be like, I think for the next time you do this, you should consider if people are doing AI covers or AI, even, even AI stuff as well. Cause I don't remember that being in the form about like checking for AI and like if you have that. I and do I, think that would be something to suggest. I think I think that needs to be suggested because this is too many in a row right now. Yeah. That I'm that we're finding. And if we're gonna actually stop this blatant theft, then we need a lot more people to really participate in that. And I'd be more willing to purchase a book with a solid cover 
a solid color for the cover and the title in Comic Sans than one with AI art on it. I yeah. It. I agree. I would rather a really shitty cover than, you know, than doing anything with, you know, stolen art. Yeah. You don't know, and if you're watching this on the replay, AI is stolen art. It yep. is not manifesting these things out of nothing. It is taking art that was un non-consensually taken. Non-consensually, big time non-consensually taken. Yeah, using it to create these ugly, nonsensical pictures. Yeah. And on, I don't know if the reason why this stuff is allowed is because everyone here has paid for a slot. But I, I do think that that we need people with like this big of a platform should be standing with artists rather than shitty AI covers. I agree. Moving onward. Tales of Ruma. Come on, get away. God, stop. <laughs> oh, is this an anthology? Yes, it is. Greek and Roman mythology, though. Uh, based on the textures, I think this might be AI. Yeah. What is this random? Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, there's that weird edge of that building there. Uh-huh. And then the, the, the random strips not really attached to any yeah, I don't that like that. Yeah. Well, it's an anthology, so I wasn't going to read it anyway. Oh, it's just making me sad right now. I'm getting so depressed. I know. I'm losing faith in all this of humanity. Like, we were having fun before, and now I'm not having fun anymore. <laughs> I'm just mad. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh god taking medusa uh, um, i kind of hate that a lot based on medusa's fucking story yeah i hate that title what the fuck look at your hair this is so bad oh what her eyes are doing the ai derpy thing uh-huh that is a concern uh I hate it. I hate that the snakes are like that. Medusa, like, you can't keep Medusa pretty. That's the whole reason she was cursed. <laughs> because yeah. she was too pretty. <laughs> the cataract returns. Uh... <laughs> I can't. This is like Mambo being in my hair. <laughs> Like, the snake turns into hair. Yeah. Do you barrel curl your snake? Like, what are you doing? No, no, no. That's how she makes the snakes appear, is if she gets a perfect barrel curl. Oh. Is it hair <laughs> or is it snakes? Decide, God damn it. They just pop up like video game achievements. <laughs> My blood can cure death, but it can also be the deadliest poison on Earth. And the gods will try to kill me just for existing. Hades wants me to join him. How dare you make Hades a villain? Zeus is still bitter about an age-old prophecy that the dark gods, the monsters of Tartarus, will rule Olympus. And Poseidon is the, Poseidon's a fucking dick. Is the key to everything. <laughs> Maybe even my hat. But his son, Triton, rules Atlantis. And I accidentally killed his daughter, Coraline. All I know for certain is the cause has mistreated us monsters long enough, and I'm yanking through the ribbons of fate to change my history before I'm beheaded all over again. You were never beheaded in the first place. Um, what the fuck? Wow. And why would you call yourself a monster? You know you're a gorgon. One of those names are not like the others. <laughs> what the fuck? Fuck do 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 do. What the fuck do 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 do? I hate this a lot. I'm mad. Me too. I'm just mad. Well, yeah, 
but she ain't dead in this. So yeah. what the hell? She There's no mention. Of, oh goddamn! Sorry. There's no mention of Perseus here. Of that fuckwad. We don't talk about Perseus. I hate Perseus and I hate Theseus. I hate them all. Anyway, it's fine. Um, <laughs> like so, this this insinuates that she is perfectly fine. And oh god, she's wearing snakeskin dress too. I just noticed that. Wow. Oh. That seems uh, a little bit inconsiderate. And the shape of her boob is all wrong. Her what? The shape of her boob is all wrong. What the hell? Hey, some of us have the boob boobs, boobs, okay. You're offended. Maybe it's a re I don't I don't even care enough. What? <laughs> no. I'm mad. Uh, I'm just mad. Please, one of you be good. Please. One of you, please. 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 Please, I beg you. Um, we got a werewolf thing going. A Cinderella thing going. Is this an anthology? It's a full trilogy. So this is a whole three books in one. 930 pages. Yeah, okay. Three books in one. We've got... A defiant Cinderella and Prince Charming with a hairy family secret. A deal gone wrong for Red's mom. Oh. Okay. And Loopy Oz. A Loopy Oz and a villainy godmother masquerading as a witch or two. Okay. I see our Emerald City here. Yeah. Okay. Grace made a deal. In exchange for the life of her newborn son, she will get Ella a her happily ever after. A license to be evil. Hooray! That was it, wasn't it? Three years of living in the Magic Kingdom and all the sleepless nights might have made her forget a few details. There's no point in asking the mirrors anything. They are definitely lying. The only thing Grace knows is that her son's third birthday is approaching and it's urgent she marry boy crazy Ella off. One way or another. Uh, I'm kind of sick of Ella as a name too. Yes. Yep. Um, okay, so this is kind of so we have Cinders, Dark Cinderella retelling from dual POV stepmother and Ella's. Where Ella is no wallflower. You might hate her a little at first for being a bit too self-absorbed. That seems so wrong. <laughs> Ember, yeah. here's the second chance Red Riding Hood retelling where Prince Charming's hairy secret is revealed. Ash, Crooked Fates, a twisted Wizard of Oz retelling where a certain unlovable villain may or may not get her happily ever after. Wait, fifth? Where's the fourth? You went one, two, three, and fifth? Yeah. I don't know. Well, they did mention Red Riding Hood. Yeah, but that's here. Oh. Yeah. Bella, Della, Fella, Jella, Kella, Mella. <laughs> Bella is my least favorite name for a dog because everyone names their freaking dogs Bella. They do, though. You have so many dogs named Bella. Mm -hmm. I don't like this. Why am I not liking anything anymore? I just, I don't like that. Well, number one, the whole thing with Cinderella is that you're supposed to like her. I don't like yeah. changing it like that. I don't know. She is a kind, wonderful girl who yeah. gets shit on a lot and you want to see her make her big break. The word for bark in German is Bellin. Thank you. I love that. Um, but yeah, I I'm not into that. I'm not into it. Hey God Stephanie, dang. what's the what's the Japanese word for bark? Wong wong. <laughs> wong wong. Uh oh, this is a book two, so I need to get to a book one. Hold on. Okay. Okay, so this is actually book one. Visions and nightmares. Oh, it's antho. Is this? It's anthology. Hmm. 
Is it anthology? I don't know. It kind of, it's, I mean, it says it's 10 stories of dark fantasy and horror. And it's about 10 girls. Yeah. TBR is to be read. Hello Hi, and welcome. Okay, Nina, have a good night. Uh, I think this is anthology, so I'm not into it. Yeah. Not into that. But that's a Canva. I can tell you that much. Hey. <laughs> hey. All right. We're almost through. Okay, we're going to stand. I, I kind of was betting on this one. Fingers crossed. Maybe. 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 Let's see sand. Oh, come on, computer. Oh, oh that patterning of AI. Oh, no. As oh, no. Oh, man. Wait. Molly Neely. I thought we read another one by the same, or maybe I've just been staring at this one for too long. I don't know. I don't know. Um, what is going on here? Those are definitely supposed to be wings of something. Azazel! Okay. A bitter feud in hell. Powerful birthrights to claim or deny. Lilith and Azazel, hell's greatest general, make a bet to settle their hatred for each other. Each will have a child with a mortal, and their progeny will settle the score. Malachi mm -hmm. Ben Sinai, born of a nomad woman and raised by kind, the kindly Thaddeus, wants nothing more than to live a life of peaceful existence. Ra, Lilith's son by an Egyptian pharaoh, sees the mild Malachi as a pushover to be tortured and destroyed. Their rivalry spans the centuries from the birth of Christ through the Roman Colosseum. And is that how you spell Colosseum? No, I don't think so. I think you're missing a letter. And on on into the modern age. Malachi despises the birthright offered to him, rejecting it with all his heart and soul. Ra keeps pushing and punishing anyone close to Malachi. No, I hate this. It's C-O-L-O-S-S-E-U-S. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, it's missing an S. And it's supposed and, and to be no. Malachi. Yeah. yeah. This is spelled weird. Uh, I don't like... Wait, I need to learn more about this author. I don't like that they named one of them Raw. Yeah, I don't like that. I'm not. No. No. Uh -huh. Damn it. I just want to find a good one. Ah, anytime anyone takes Lilith, too, I'm like, you don't know about Lilith, do you? And yeah. I. They have to go, let's go make a mortal child. No. I have not read Fifth Sorceress. I don't even know what Fifth Sorceress is. I'm going to look it up right now. I can't find it. Who is it? Bye. Is it Robert Newcomb? Because that's all I've got here. Let me know if that is correct or not. If you want for Fifth Sorceress. It's considered the worst fantasy novel ever published? Beautiful. Ah! Oh boy. Is it? Is it this? I mean, all I'm seeing is one star reviews on Goodreads for the Robert Newcomb Fitz Sorceress, so I'm assuming this is it. Oh, it's homophobic, sexist, misogynistic, rapey, cliche, world breaking, the worst it's ever put to paper. This makes Twilight look like a work of art. Yeah, that's Robert Newcomb. Okay. Oh, yeah. no, I have not read it. And please don't make me. <laughs> please. Oh, you can spend $30 to do so. No, thank you. No, thank you. Make it 60, actually. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I don't know. I'm just, no. Nope. We've got two more in the fairy tale category, people. Okay, well, I don't think this is AI. I just think it's poorly done. Yeah. Yeah, I think that there would be a lot more things melting into things. Yeah. I like the text. I like the font. I Let's hope. This might be not great cover, but good interior. Let's open mind. Open mind. <laughs> James, James Tulo's review of it. He really rips into it. But I will. I will look at that. <sighs> Could the artist fix AI? What? AI doesn't fix anything. I'll tell you that. I hate AI. <laughs> All right. He is an elf prince. She is a human. <laughs> Sorry. What? Oh, I think they're saying that uh, it could be AI that was then altered slightly. Oh, by that's fair. That's fair. Could be. Got it. Could be that. Uh, can they save a kingdom together or will their love endanger everyone around them? Another Ella. Ella's father is a wealthy merchant, but his deal with the king could destroy centuries of peace. Altair. Altair? <laughs> Sorry, I love that. <laughs> Altair's mother is a cruel elf queen, but she is powerful enough that nobody dares challenge her. Ella and Altair never should have met, but when they do, a chain of events begins to grow bigger than anyone would have guessed. It swallows up lives and changes destinies. Who will live? Who will die? Who will love? Who will rule? And how can a rose change the fate of kings? Nice. It's a reimagined Cinderella story with elves. Okay. I don't hate this. I don't hate it. What are nineteen pages? Skater boy reference. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yes, it was. <laughs> yes, it was. Okay. Okay. A retold three little pigs. Okay. Fun story. Do you want to know Maybe. my favorite three little pigs retelling? What? Wait. Hold on. I'm gonna find it. Crap. Show you. I love this. This was my favorite, one of my favorite books as a kid. The True Story of the Three Little Pigs by a Wolf. I love this book. I love this book. If you haven't read this book, it's just a kid's book, but I love it. It's my favorite. Uh, I also bought it while I was in Japan to read to my students. And made them and made them do um, a folk a folk faux jury a fake trial to determine if the wolf was truly guilty. I love that. <laughs> it's my favorite. Literally, was it with fantasy and royalty secret nobility? Everything is epic except for the uninspiring names like the great ones. Yeah. Yeah. This is my problem with sci-fi stuff, too, okay? I talked about it on the last stream, how I was annoyed with, like, Dune, and the main character's name is Paul. And his mom is Jessica. And I'm like, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> it just, it annoys me. But anyway, y'all should read this. It's freaking cute and adorable, and it's my favorite. I don't like, I, I guess I should put, put this as I've read it. Yeah. <laughs> I've read it a million times as a child, so anyway. Oh wait, no, we're gonna put what is it called again? Ella and the Elf? Yeah. And the Elf. There it is. We're putting this one on. Finally. Nope, nope, that one. There we go. Good job. <laughs> Four. Right. As long as it fits. Little oh, fit. Yeah, when you have like literally everybody else in the name in the world with like a six syllable unpronounceable name, and then you got Paul and Jessica, like why? I you said Paul. <laughs> when you call the world Alandra Ladinandian and the MC is Bob. The only yeah. way that's okay is if that's intentional to be weird and campy or something. That's the only yeah. time it's okay. You know? You know? So 
Okay. Uh, back over here. We have one. Oh, wait, but this is, this is an anthology. I'm not even going to bother. Yeah. So we have finished the fairy tale retellings, myths, and legends. So out of 18, four of them, four got onto the TBR, which puts us right now for today at 18, which in total puts us at 48. We still have two more categories to go through. Would you like dystopian post? Wait, no, I did that. Never mind. We did that already. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, okay. Time travel, portal fantasy, steampunk, cyberpunk, space opera, and sci-fi tales, or fantasy and sci-fi romance? Um, I'll let chat choose. Chat! We got how many in this one? We've got another 18 here. And 24 here. I feel like there's going to be more uh, picks out of the time travel portal fantasy, steampunk, cyberpunk, space opera, and sci-fi tales. Which is weird. <laughs> since we're talking about Stephanie. I mean, I love sci-fi. Yeah, but you do tend to lean on... I read a lot of fantasy romance. I know. It's quite the... Based off, based off of covers, specifically. What? I said this is based off of covers, specifically. Yeah. Bog says not romance, so I'm assuming we're going into time travel, portal, fantasy, steampunk, cyberpunk, space opera, and sci-fi tales? Let's do it! Woo! Okay, we've got Choice of the Traveler. It does have that generic look to it, though. With a hot girl on the purple cover. Woohoo! Give me your hands. Give me your hands! <laughs> oh, that's dubious. Oh, that's dubious. That zipper is looking fucking funky. A lot of this is dubious. We got cataracts! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Cannot confirm. Uh -uh. A war between two worlds. A destiny she can't escape. A power that needs to be anchored. Betha, that's an interesting name. Yeah. Betha transfers to her best friend's university to study business. <laughs> Her dream to open up her own cafe could finally become a reality. All she has to do is pass a few classes since she's been coffee slinging for years. To celebrate with her... I mean, you also kind of need, like, money and a venue and, you know. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> to celebrate with her friends, they go out dancing. The night. <laughs> I like Beth, but it needs to be sci-fi. Betha! <laughs> the night is shattered when demons invade. As powers, Betha doesn't didn't know she had to begin. Oh, blah, 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 hi, we've reached another point where I can't read anymore. As powers, Betha didn't know she had begin to. Emergy. Mm -hmm. Emerge. Hopes of stopping the invasion fall to her. Carter, the head guard, is tasked with keeping her alive and teaching her how to fight. Betha has no fighting ability, no matter how hard she tries to learn while keeping her crush on Carter hidden. With Carter and her other friends surrounding her, will she be able to unlock the truth of her magic in time? Or will a cloak of darkness and despair shroud the land and destroy everything she loves? Carter is also like, here's Betha, we're going to be sci-fi, and then Carter. Yeah. Um, I don't, how is this, what's our, our genre again? Portal fantasy, portal fantasy, cyberpunk, space. This does not. This is, this is paranormal. Rope. This is paranormal. Yeah. This is not the right category. And I'm not into it. Bye. Oops. I accidentally stop sharing my screen. This one. Boom. 
wholly generic Batman. <laughs> Isekai is basically, yes, Isekai and Portal Fantasy are basically the same thing. Yeah. I just, I get weird when, when white people call their books Isekai when it's like, no, this is a very specific anime thing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Stephanie is uh, uh, traditionally uh, uh, trained Classic. in stuff. Classically. Classically. There we go. That's what I meant. Trained in opera. You bet. <laughs> do I professionally sing anymore? No, I do not. <laughs> Unknown realms. Oh, it's an anthology. Never mind. But I'm gonna check it. Mm, oh, Fiction Atlas Press is CL Cannons. This this is her press, I think, or something like that. Like she's always in this. So, mm. just kidding. Was it hell or was it hell? <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Not a good time. Oklahoma. Here we go. Criminal impulses. I think this is Yannick, right? Yannick Bryn. I don't think that's Janik. <laughs> it's Yannick. I would go with Yannick personally. That is an unfortunate last name. Yeah. I would have used a pen name. I, I wonder if that is their pen name. Oh. Oh no. Is that? No, oh, this is totally AI. Look at all those yeah. kanji that are messed up. Yep. No. At least uh -oh. these signs, these are correct. These signs here, the no signs, those are correctly the ones they would use in Japan. Yeah, but, but wow. This is really bad AI. Really, this is I mean if you yeah, no. I'm mad. Stop. I'm I'm so mad I don't even want to read it. This is San Francisco. So is this supposed to be Chinatown? Maybe. So then that doesn't make sense why you would use this is this is Japanese too because look, there's katakana right up here. Yeah. So this is Japanese landscape, but it's San Francisco. Mm -mm. Right? They could have at least hired a cheap fiber. They could have done that. No. I, I don't this. like this. He's a car thief. I don't care. <laughs> I'm too mad. I'm I'm too mad at that. Sandy. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm mad at that. I'm really mad at that. <sighs> Dawn of the Elite. Most people don't understand the difference with sci-fi, especially eventually all cities turned into Japanese, which so annoys me. So another fun fact, I used to live in Japan. I speak Japanese. <laughs> and yeah. Okay. That's all she up. Yeah, that does not read AI to me at all. So I'm happy with that. Yeah. The buildings, they look, this looks like actually a building that is in Japan that I know of, but it's not. Oh, really? it's, yeah, there's the the, the eye uh, that's in Shinjuku and it's it's shaped just like this. It's really cool. Huh. But it's not like that because it doesn't have all the weird things on the outside, but it's like mm -hmm. very interesting. Okay, Dawn of the Elite. It's a Brennan series. <laughs> Brennan Lee Mulligan? Oh, is it? I don't know. <laughs> when an infamous murderer wreaks havoc in the kingdom of Brennan, will an elite force have what it takes to protect the queen? A chilling discovery has the kingdom of Brennan on high alert. The queen, thought to be barren, is pregnant with twins, and someone wants to destroy them. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> in desperation, the king and queen form a special unit known as the Elite, tasked with keeping the royal heirs safe at any cost. The kingdom's worst fears come true when the crazed murderer Rancor escapes from prison, bringing with him a plot to kill the twins and bring down the royal family. No one in Brennan knows why he hates the kingdom so much, but it seems he will stop at nothing in order to have his revenge. 
Raya, a trauma nurse, is a key member of the elite, but her job of protecting the royal twins becomes much more complicated when her former lover, Khaled, is given a spot on the team. Can she focus on the job as the dangerous escalates all around her? Can she find a way to confront her past and keep the children safe, even when everyone in the palace, including the queen, seems to have a hidden agenda? Don't. I get mad. Patricia Briggs. That name sounds familiar. I don't recognize it. <laughs> That's actually a well-written description. Gotta love the elite. Yeah, I don't hate it. I tend to not like stories involving, like, pregnancy, okay. children, and stuff. Like, I can handle some of it, but, like, I, especially pregnancy, I don't like reading about. But it, I don't know if this will... This seems weird, because they talk about protecting the twins. Are they born? Because at the beginning, she's just pregnant. Mm. So I don't know for sure. Again, I don't hate this. This might go on. I'm kind of on the on the fence. Yeah. Going? No teeth. King Tarrington Branagh. Fun. Yeah, maybe that that's that that could definitely be it. Oh, your sound went kind of weird on my end. It did. Oh, I think my it's okay now. My pop filter fell. Oh, okay. It fell on the microphone. I see. That'll do it. That, that will probably do it. <laughs> uh, let's see. And there's more twins. There's more twins. Uh, oh, they're not born yet. It's soon to be born twins. So I'm guessing by the end of the book, the twins are born. Oh, found her on TikTok. In a world where everyone is a twin. <laughs> that was one thing. Okay, so I know twins. Um, but I have these friends from college who are twins. And I don't, someone correct me if this is wrong. Twins can't have twins, right? Like, in the DNA code, like, an actual twin cannot produce twins again. I don't think so. That's what they told me. They could have been lying out of their asses. Yeah. I don't think so. Because I think you actually have to have twins that run in the family to have twins. But I, it's, it's like, well, like, that, yes. Genetically, yes. But I, I thought it, it's like a skipping generation thing so i, don't I actually saw a thing where there was, I, I saw a thing where a set of twins married another set of twins and they all lived in the same house together and they all looked like each other and um they also had twins both of them both of them it's so interesting false. okay so maybe <laughs> the twins were lying out of their ass to me <laughs> they're just messing okay. with me that, I, didn't I, never that in my, uh, I didn't learn about it in my biology class either, and I'm pretty sure they would have gone over that because we did talk about twins. Okay. Maybe. Maybe that's true. I could probably Google and do some research, but that's what they told me, and I just took it at face value. <laughs> yeah. You know, sometimes we do that. Oh, dog looked it up. Uh, women who are twins have an increased chance of having twins. All right, well then, my twin friends lied to me. <laughs> okay, I think I'm gonna give this one a shot. Give it a shot. We're gonna give it a shot. Gone of the Elite. Andrea Beverage. All right, this is the first one in the sci fi, this group. Whoa, oh, that's yeah. no, what? What? <laughs> Can I have the other cover, please? This is awful. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> okay. Goodreads, update your covers, please. 
Oh my goodness. That's wild. See, I just saw an article. It, this nothing due to twins, but it's like this guy, this man, and this woman got married. They both had the birth their birthday was on the same day, and just had actually maybe they did have twins who were also born on their birthday. So the whole family shares a birthday. That's insane. Yeah, I just saw that recently. Just why that twenty dollar cover? <laughs> okay, Thrive Earth Return. Um, can't tell if damaged ship or AI or I both. think it's damaged ship. Ginger Booth, also a very unfortunate name. That I have no no chance of believing is not chosen though. Yeah. Yeah, why that I name? Mean, yeah. Book one of seven. Okay, let's see. I don't know, is it? Maybe that might be her name. I don't know. Okay. That might they be her thought name. Earth was dead. Captain Sass Collier can't die. A century ago, the Colony Corps carried her away to the stars because Earth was doomed. She returns with tech advances from the colonies, hoping to restore the one best planet for humanity and save isolated pockets of desperate survivors. Instead, her motley crew from the boonies finds that not one, but three surviving worlds, Earth, Luna, and Mars. And, she with, and she's with the invading aliens. Her homecoming starts with a bang. The Northern League t uh, tyrannizes Earth now. They capture Sass and her ships separately to hold them hostage against each other. Can Sass... Oh my god. Can Sass save her crew from its most powerful foe ever? The Mother World. Is it just me? Was I just poorly reading this or is this really stilted? It is extremely stilted. Okay, I thought I was like just having a stroke while reading it for a second. Um, I mean, that's the genre, babe. <laughs> um, because of the way it's so stilted and starting sentences when they shouldn't, uh, it kind of says AI to me as well. This whole stream has become less of will it TBR and more is it AI? Yeah. <sighs> oh, hi. These are total AI. Yeah. This is all AI. Even the rats. My mousies. Yeah. Space minks. They're supposed to be space minks. Those aren't minks. Uh. Even, Even the, the author picture. This is such disappointment. Someone tell me. Someone tell me something. There's an AI in the book. Mm. Wait, is this one where we can like look inside? Get a get a preview. Well, there's maps in here. Captain Sassafras! Sorry, that's uh, a funny name. Yeah, no, this is just giving lady that doesn't really know sentence structure that well, rather than AI. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, why? No, 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 no. Uh -huh. Nope. Nope. Counter 
counterclockwise. Give me something. Come on. You mean Witter shins. Oh, it's an anthology. God damn it. God damn it. God damn it. Also. What? What? Okay. Anyway. Nope. All right. Well, their first row is done there. Baroque in Ascension. I mean, the fact that it's lacking debris, <laughs> it's just cleanly yeah. sliced it, tells me it's not AI. <laughs> just strange art. Yeah. Dave Walsh. The war is over and there are no winners, just a broken galaxy. Now humans and aliens must share this war-torn galaxy. None of this matters to Drake, though. He's just an artiste. He's tagging along on the busted-up ship Tristero, along with its ragtag crew! Sorry, I get excited over the word ragtag. Together, they burst the demilitarized zone. This is... This is Firefly. Also, you're using the DMZ? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, not a lot. Pretty much the same thing. Um, well, so, an anthology is is not related to each other. A series of short stories could be related, yeah. Be, like, serialized. That can also be called an anthology, though. Hit it? Yeah. Really? I didn't think yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I like the first Witcher book a lot, but it's all connected. Yeah. Is the well Witcher book? That's not short story, so I don't know. I haven't read the Witcher book. I mean, it kind of is. Yeah. Is it? It's, it's told. It's, it's kind of told as like a couple of short stories about Geralt's wanderings. Mm. At least the first, like, book or so. I think that's where it would be, like, that's, yeah, it's not, that's not an anthology. With an anthology, it's, they're all separate stories. They can be in the same universe, but it's not necessarily, like, the same character every time. It can't, I guess it, it's a blurred line. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, very blurry. <laughs> blurry, blurry line. Okay, um, anyway. Together they traverse a demilitarized zone between Terran and Gaal borders. Taking on any job they can find, big or small, human and alien. The galaxy changes when the crew encounters a derelict alien ship. Its crew slaughtered with his dying breath, a crewman points them to a box. In it, an abandoned alien baby. When their government refuses to get involved, Drake and the crew need to return the baby they've been calling Bruce. They've been calling Bruce home. A bloodthirsty uh, warlord on their tail. Wait, what? Bad sentence structure. His quest, find Bruce and claim the Graal throne, declaring a new war on humanity. Drake never wanted to be a hero. Now he's all that stands in the way of a fragile peace between humans and aliens in this metaphysical space opera adventure. It's like saying Graal. I mean, I am a sucker for, you know, not dad basically becomes dad with baby. Yeah. This is Firefly plus Mandalorian. There we go. Firelorian. Free is too high a price to pay. Oh, wow. To read the recap. Or, no, never mind. Sorry, to read crap. Okay. Too many swear words for my liking. Well, none of those put me off. Yeah. The aliens aren't alien. They just seem like humans, but more stupid and violent. So they're Americans. <laughs> mm. 
lacking an editor. Well, you know, we should have been doing this. I should have been looking into the books. Yeah. The two ships danced in the darkness of space, a soft, soundless ballet, while the sleek freighter Tristero matched the rotation of the blocky, abandoned Gra'al cruiser in the fringes of the demilitarized zone between Terran and alien space. Bring her in slow, back, Captain Vasquez said, hovering over the pilot, her hand braced against the ceiling of the cockpit, while the pilot inched the two ships together. She was lean, her jet black hair pulled into a neat, high ponytail. I don't like that. That's why you pay me the big bucks, Cap, Becca replied. Almost oh, always the opposite of the captain and how she presented herself. She wore an ill-fitting flight suit, half unbuttoned, the arms dangling behind her, only a white tank top underneath, contrasting her dark skin. Her hair was a majestic, frizzy beast of its own accord with splashes. No. I don't no. like it. No. I'm trying to restart the whole list and look in the books, right? <laughs> Granted, I haven't put a ton of them on the list at this point. Okay, hold on. I need to take a momentary break. I'll be right back. Okay. Entertain them. Uh, no! God damn it! Um. I like that your name rhymes, March Arch. Um. Um. Entertainment. You guys like mushrooms? Oh yeah, we got a mycology person in here. Come talk, talk, talk about mushrooms. Okay, so uh, I I'm a mycology person, which means that I study uh, mushrooms, or at least I'm going to be studying mushrooms. Uh, one of the things that got me into mycology in the first place is the symbiotic relationship that certain types of mushrooms called mycorrhizae can form between root systems and mycorrhizae specifically is capable of creating something called fungal roots which can basically attach on the other plants and help them trade nutrients between each other and this is very commonly seen in things like matriarchal forests where the soil has been undisturbed for a long amount of time and usually there will be a matriarch tree that will have a bunch of little baby trees that it's connected to via the mycorrhizae. And then from there, if there's one tree that's in an area that, for instance, has high potassium in the soil or high sulfur in the soil, it can basically use the mycorrhizae to send those nutrients somewhere else in the forest that doesn't have those sorts of nutrients. The cool thing that I found out about that is it doesn't even have to be the same type of plants. They do that with all of the plants in the forest. Mm -hmm. Tell us how deep the snow is, Q. Jesus Christ. Oh. Oh my god. It's double. I don't even think you can open the door at this point. I have lost my ruler. Oh, oh. no, no. Goodbye, son. It is deeper than my ruler. That's scary. You can have the ruler back when the snow melts. <laughs> Sorry, I have it, but the ruler goes all the way in and deeper. Oh, god. Holy shit! That I would lose a pie pie in there. She's gone. Yeah, and she's a black dog too. Yeah, she's gone. <laughs> oh my god! I haven't seen it like this high in years. Oh. oh, hi, March. Yeah. So we're, I'm in the middle of like a bad snowstorm right now. And the snow is accumulating so much. Earlier today, we had gotten to um, 11 inches. And now it's like this ruler, which is 12 inches. And the ruler gets in there about this much. So we're probably looking at 14 inches right now. Damn. It's so much it's so much Stacy I ain't leaving <laughs> holy crap this is wild the last time I got snowed in from a blizzard was when I came back from 
from band <laughs> from we went on our California trip and got stranded in the mountains, all of us in our sandals. Because we had just come from California. Oh man. You haven't seen snow in 16 years. Where do you live? Where do you live? If you care to share. In 16 years, I'm like, where in the plot of holes do you live? <laughs> that is a major drought. <laughs> All right, moving on to Nexus. Um, hmm. This man is, um, is, 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 is Walgreens Ben Barnes. <laughs> That's who that is. This is actually, have you ever read, um, Ashley Poston's no. Oh my god, I feel so stupid. Bookish and the Beast is that one. I love this book. Where the hell is it? Hold on. Princess and the Fangirl. Geekerella, oh my god. Geekerella. Very cute contemporary romance, Cinderella retelling, obviously, but oh, with yeah. geeky nerds. And the way, the, so she falls in love with an actor for this sci fi series. That is exactly, this guy here is exactly how I imagine the male protagonist looks like in Geekerella. Okay. So anyway, that's what it was. Space train. Space train. Space train. Space train. Oh, woo -woo -woo. What is this up here? What is all that? Oh. What is that? That's AI texture. Oh, it's Ginger Booth again. Oh boy. Thanks, Bug. Well. Alien Croc Ambassador? What? Sorry? When Nexus catches the attention of the Alien Croc Ambassador, his first space travel goes weirdly astray. A backwards woods earth terraformer, Nexus is awkward with people, good with creatures, at a time when the human worlds are bumping against the alien races who surround them. He sets off to explore human space. But to leave home, he must first repay a debt of honor and smuggle a highly illegal sentient robot off the planet. Memory, memory murky, the poor robot got stranded on Earth before Nexus was born. Nexus is delighted when the alien ambassador boards his space train to Luna. Most fear the enigmatic Crocs, but he's fascinated. Then an explosion derails the train car. But was the attack aimed at the aliens or his forgetful robot? How does train function in space? I'm confused. <laughs> it derails, but you're in space. They yeah. staple it to the rails. So... To make sure she was a poor computer nerd with a mean family, and she thought that was all her life would be. Till so she went to computer convention and met a wealthy tech president. Before they could probably meet, she had to leave, but drop the USB. He was determined to find her and hire her. What? What? What is this for? I don't know. Well, that's not the plot to Geekerella. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I'm just confused. Oh, it got you thinking. Gotcha. I'm like, well, that's not Geekerella. Uh, that, okay, I see it. Again, girling. Again, with the AI. Uh -huh. Wait, is that Glenn? That is Glenn. What? Oh, it's a. Uh... Oh, what's his actor's name? Shit. Glenn from uh, Walking, Walking Dead. Dead. No, it's not him, but definitely AI him. Yeah. This is the childlike Empress from Neverending Story. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. This is the homeless David Tennant. Yeah. Um, Childlike yeah. got snatched. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, this here is what I would call an actually super shitty cover. So maybe it's good. <laughs> I mean, oh, no! 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 <laughs> Okay, maybe we can find it in Goodreads. A lonely man rides the road. Was it by? I think it's this one. Here it is. There it is. Okay, so he gave her a bad link. That's what's happened here. Here's the other bad cover. Oh. Why? <laughs> this is terrible I don't cover. Know. This is one of, that's the worst cover we've seen. Yeah. Okay. The other it's one. 88 pages. Jake Mondi realizes this life isn't supposed to be like it is. Uh-huh. His time here was taken away by future forces. They are they are playing the past time and situations. The brain is a wonderful thing when it isn't being manipulated by traveling back in time. Jake's memories bounce between time and reality. He finds his previous family only to find out that there are 12 years past since he was taken away. No one knows who he is in this time. Jake stumbles around trying to piece together his absence. He soon realizes that the future is trying to capture him and take him back to the future. He recognizes the futility of fighting. This is no. This is reading AI written. This is really bad. That's bad. Mm. Song was the result of a song I wrote. A story was the result of a song I wrote in the 1990s. Is he the only review on his thing? Yes. He rated himself five stars. Wow. This is terrible. This is, that's, that's awful. That's just awful. I'm scared to read a sample, but I kind of want to see how bad it is. No, it's already bad. The only light, a full moon, seemed to glisten off the fog-clad blacktop highway. The mist lingered with billows of hazy clouds in the air. The headlight beams created ghostly shadows through the large oak trees that lined the highway. Smells of tar filled the air from the day's hot sun on the damp road. The fog parted as a man on a motorcycle punched through the cloud. <laughs> Silver <laughs> ring on the gas tank sparkled against the dark colored frame. The headlight from his fat boy did not help much in this fog. He wondered how long he'd been on the road. I hate this. Yeah, this is bad. Motoring quietly. <laughs> Oh, man, that's not good. This is awful. <laughs> oh, did I tell you your nephew's good with computers cover? <laughs> not to mention, like, that hurts my eyes. Mm-hmm. That hurts. God damn it. Even buzzing to look at from a distance. Right? All right, stealing time. Um... I guess the clock is meant to be backwards. I guess. Yes, this is a backwards clock. Okay, I'm like, wait. Mm-hmm. I guess because they're stealing time. Palm trees blowing in the wind. Running underneath the clock. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're going to go down here. This is really where it starts. As Hurricane Charlie turns a path of destruction towards Orlando, Florida, Ronnie Andrews scrambles to prepare for the storm and seeks shelter at her boyfriend's weather lab. What she finds there is more terrifying than Mother Nature's destruction. During the peak of the hurricane, Ronnie is hurtled back in time to 18th century London. Time and space? where she is caught in a web of superstition, deception, and lies in a life and death struggle to return to her own time and location. Her best friend, Steph, is thrust into the middle of a hurricane where it quickly turns into a living nightmare as she is faced with losing everything. 
I feel like this is unnecessary. Mm. But like, why, if she's in Florida, did she go to London? Why? Because 18th century London is where all of the women romanticize life being like. Well, yeah. Where Florida man lived back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> 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 yeah. <laughs> We have shattering time. The U.S. stole Florida from the U.K. History books didn't teach you that. <laughs> Come on, baby. If you delight in a disjointed story, physical abuse, and a cliffhanger. Oh, God. You just might like this book. I don't. I was 20% into it and 100% deleted it. One of the heroines is manipulated by a boyfriend who sent her back in time where she was physically abused while someone else stood there and watched. Yeah. <sighs> Mishmash of incongruent topics. A fake French speaking boyfriend. Oh, there's a dead cat. No. Mm. Nope. With no reason. Hell no. Nope. No. Nope. No. Nope. There's a lot of one stars in this. Jesus. Mm-hmm. They gave you the tea finally. They finally! Finally the one stars are giving me the tea. Oh boy. Okay. Gersterner. Okay. Race to Novus. Wow, we are Space Cowboy, literally. Look, it's Lucifer. It is. It's Blacksifer. That... Yes, it's not yeah. blue. We're Blacksifer. Maybe Violet Sifer? Well, it's not Violet. That's black. Well, I mean, like, the eye is Violet, and there's, like, no, the eye is turquoise. The, the the purple there is a weird shadow. Oh. Okay. I thought that the blue was a weird shine. No, nope, that's some, the eye. There's some weird shadowing around the neck of the horse. <laughs> oh. Ah, okay. Um. Oh, no, that's just the way the glove is. Okay. <laughs> I thought that thumb was weird as hell. Oh, like, oh, wait, there's a glove. Okay. It's R.A. Clark again. Wait. What else did we see for R.A. Clark? I don't remember. I remember that we didn't put it on the list. It must have been in the fantasy one, because we were looking at... I think so. Where? You think it would show up if you click on her name on the thing? On the other one? Yeah, so if you go back to the book and you try clicking her name. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. I thought was it was. one of the dystopians? I was thinking it was one of the dystopians. Maybe not. Maybe I'm just crazy. I don't know. Let's find out. Let's go back. Well, wait, hold on. Because it's going to do the thing again. Mm. Well, yeah, cloaked press. Wait, it's not. Why? I want. Why didn't you give me. Give me the stuff. Give me the author page. Where is the author page? There is no author page. Hold on. R.A. Clark. Two, two idle hearts. Oh! Mm, that's right. That one. Oh, yeah. We didn't like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, let's see if there's something that's any better. 
Fingers crossed. I'm going to do Southern on this one, too, because she's a cowgirl. <laughs> a daughter's last chance at redemption on an alien planet. A sweeping secret that could not only end her dreams, but her life as well. Finn Rucker boards the starship to seek a fresh start as part of a colonizing effort on Joya. Already hate it because we use the word colonizing. The race <laughs> by governess yields free land and start, I bet it's not free, and start up funds for the lucky winners. The number of entrants guarantees someone is going to lose, and Finn is determined that she and her bionic horse, Herc, are among the winners. Racing <laughs> from the uncharted jungle to the settlement of Novus, Finn and her fellow racers soon discover that not everything is as it seems, and governess withheld information from the contestants. I bet it's about colonizing land, and it's really bought by blood money. All right. Strange beasts attack the racers. Mechanical equipment begins to fail, and the very air seems out to get them. When all seems lost, the mysterious people arrived. Oh, I wonder if it's, you know, the people. I just went very misled in there. <laughs> mm -hmm. I wonder if it's the people native to the land. Oh my god, yes! It is! <laughs> Finn will have to keep her pulse pistols close and her new friends closer, but not too close, as they all race to survive the jungle. Hi, Hidalgo and Avatar. No Bye. Bye. Star Rider. On the razor's edge. On the razor's edge. How many fingies do you have? Oh, well, she looks like someone. Yeah, it looks like person, person. Let's look at her, her belts and stuff, make sure that they all have connections and everything. There's that weird line that I'm not sure where it comes from. This No, the line? That's going to her headset. Okay. Headset. I'll send her headset. She's about to put someone on hold. <laughs> <laughs> all right. He wanted to rule the stars. He shouldn't have murdered her family. Well, yeah, you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> so we all go in the space version of Dances with Wolves, which is what Avatar is. Avatar oh, is a space, space version of Dances with Wolves. Yeah, it actually looks okay. Okay. Tomika? Tomika? That's how I pronounce it. Why Tomika? <laughs> Tomika. Tomika Ganti won't rest until the universe is rid of the sinister sorcerer deity. Oh, sorry. Who killed her parents? Oh, God, it's 10 o'clock. <laughs> Fuck. I don't want to do a part three. I, don't, I can't do a part three, guys. <laughs> Working undercover to liberate a peaceful people from this ruthless usurper, she attempts to develop a weapon that can break through the tyrant's shields, but she's barely begun her work when she's captured by the despot's dark agents. Rescued by a mysterious and handsome warrior priest, Tamika and her team join forces with the planetary resistance. But without her device to knock out the enemy defenses, their budding rebellion could swiftly be crushed, and her time to complete it has almost run out. Can Tamika free an oppressed planet and light a spark of hope throughout the galaxy? Probably. I do not envy this author's last name. Scary? Ha Heidi Scary. She should write horror. <laughs> uh it's giving you know what actually this is giving uh it is giving um when they did the cgi young carrie fisher in oh, oh yeah that's what that's giving to me okay let's see anybody gonna spill some tea Amateur, amateur, amateur. Okay. Wait, what? <laughs> what? Revealing a lot about yourself. <laughs> what? Um. 
Is there spice in this? I, I was not thinking there was spice in this. This is a teen adventure read. Okay, I think this person is just outing themselves. Yeah. What they re I don't know what this is, but I know what this is. You know why I know what this is? Because all of those ads keep telling me to go there? No! Because of my ex-boyfriend who told me about it. Oh boy. Yeehaw. That was his, um, when he was trying to be, say that he was okay with me being ace. Uh, this is what he's like, don't worry, I have this. And I'm like, what? <laughs> uh, yep, we're coping. <laughs> okay, we broke up, people. <laughs> Gedali's not my boyfriend anywhere. Go, 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 go. Uh, I don't care that it's Tweety. I don't like you. <laughs> I don't like yeah. that. You did not tell me that this is a bad book. Okay, this is just not my kind of book. Okay, that's fine. Uh, you know what? I don't. I don't hate this. I think I might put this on here. I think we're gonna give 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 this one a shot. Star Rider on the Razor's Edge. Ugh, razor's Edge. Let's look at the reviews here, actually, real quick. That's Wait, the same thing I saw. Kind of covers afterwards. Yeah. Okay. Huh, you know. Uh oh god. Yeah. See now I would think more erotica with this. That that definitely reads erotica. <laughs> this is not. Well, I guess I'm gonna find out. Let's find out. I'm gonna find out. How are they gonna know? <laughs> okay. Two more lines of sci fi. Ooh. Lines. This. Oh, I love it. It's beautiful. Um, Isn't that the most beautiful font you've ever seen? And whatever the fuck that is? Bob. I think, I feel like I know this man maybe that's the name of whatever the fuck that is i think it probably mm -hmm. is why is there no apostrophe is my question or is it multiple there's so many bosons yeah there's so many bosons and they're waving at you <laughs> You're seeing one's title that's making you laugh already. I, I mean, a lot of them have made us laugh. We've tried to make a nice, friendly space opera. Sure, it has passive-aggressive families gambling, cheating, and double-dealing, but nice. Still, watch your back. Solar sail cargo ships travel between the populated asteroids in Goldilocks' core. And now Hive Mother at the Heliopause and the Hive Sisters in the Heliotail are fighting. It may turn into a full-fledged bio-gel war? The solar sail crew of Bosun's Wave and Captain Her Captain Herb, we're going to say Herb, an eastern mountain gorilla in the heliospheric navy are fighting the algae rocket ships for control of the biogels. On one side, we have tools and weapons invented by the sentients after eons of development. Biogel laser rifles, ham radios, ship-to-ship -ship bolas, nuclear bombs, biological weapons, and tomato surprise. On the other side, accumulations of brainless algae have joined with angry biogel computers calling the shots. Am I high? Can we look at the 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 uh, author photo? That's it. Mm. Um, it tracks that this was written by a microbiologist. Yeah. I don't. I don't think I can physically read this. Yeah. I don't think I have that ability. It's a little bit too far on the what the fuck scale for me personally. Yeah. 
It is for me as well. And I like weird. Oh, wait, this is book three of four. Also, I'm with March, except I don't think it looks so much like the the more you know thing as much as it looks like the reading rainbow opening. Yeah. <laughs> I'm. I, I can't even like critique it because I don't know what I just read. Yeah. I feel like I've taken drugs. <laughs> I understand. I mean, okay. <laughs> I'm Honestly. a science major. I'm going back through and reading that. And even the sentence structure seems very like. Oh. 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 Hi, Iris. <laughs> Welcome back. Oh, I wish Nina was here for that comment. I Ooh. wish Nina was here. <laughs> I also have never read Discworld before. I do own some of them. I just haven't gotten to them. Yeah, exactly. It's trying to be Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. But I'm more conf like I could follow Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yeah. No grades. I already did. Which ends that that. That ends that. <sighs> I'm out of I'm out of hydration. Blade Gunner! Crying, making me go be getting water. Blade Gunner! Oh, it's book two. Of liquid, liquid cool. cool. Is the name of the series. As opposed to that solid pool. Here's liquid cool. Oh, whoops. I read the, I put the wrong one. Eh, there we go. Okay. Just popping in to say hi and hydrate. We are. You want to stay around for liquid cool? Cyberpunk detective series in a high tech, low life world. <laughs> what are these? This feels like it's going to be AI. I am a little concerned. I see ramen! The hotel... I mean, there are actual words here. I don't think this is AI. I think I saw some kanji in the back if we want to check. Well, it's, it's ramen here. Yeah, oh, okay, okay. Ramen, and then there's kanji over here. Sorry. But it's a little out of focus. But it does. Uh, it's just warped. Like they were slapping it in and kind of warped it. Yeah. Not necessarily AI did it. Okay. All right. I take it back. Let's talk about Liquid Cool. Scares me and looks very high generated. So bye bye. <laughs> Okay, meet Cruz, a private detective with a cool hat, laser gun, and attitude. But don't touch his red hover car or you could get shot. Science fiction and crime fiction blend in the high-tech, low-life world of Liquid Cool as he faces off neon gangsters, sinister cyborgs, corporate samurai soldiers, and laser gun shootouts, solving cases in the rainy super city of Metropolis. It isn't a bad place, but it isn't a good one either. Uber governments and mega corporations fight for control of the super city, but so does crime. It's here we meet our unlikely hero in the super city of a million victims and perpetrators. Uh... This feels like this feels like cyberpunk Dresden files. Yes. I'm I I was this I <laughs> speechless. Uh I like that he's in a cool hat. <laughs> yeah. Look at his cool hat. It's a That's a cool hat, hat, I guess. Um the guy over his can't shoulder. Tell if this is trying guy. to be serious, or if it's. Oh wait, it says and funny. Yeah. So I think maybe it's not trying to be serious, and that makes me like it more. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> Neurodancer, the electric sheep massacre. So, um, I will say that it is definitely giving the vibe of Snow Crash. Which is the Big Daddy book of cyberpunk. I don't uh, know that eight. one. So it has that vibe. I'm hoping it's not as misogynistic or creepy. At least he's not AI generated. Yeah. 
Cyberpunk Detective Yarn? Yarn what? as in story? Maybe. <laughs> Five stars. Nice book. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good! This person's like, much as I find gritty writing enjoyable, sooner or later it seems that something really unforgivable happens to women or kids. I'm just not up for reading that. So this is not that. Wanted something near future, maybe some violence, but nothing that's going to keep me up at night. Some humor might be nice. Pretty much giving up hope. This is the existing yet. Here it is. And it's free! And there's a prequel. Also free! Okay. This might be fun. Yeah. I'm gonna put it on! Hell yeah! This seems fun! I think it knows. I think it knows. Liquid cool. Liquid cool. It's just funny. 403 pages. Okay. 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 What? <laughs> Nothing. What? What? I'm fine. I don't know. I'm hallucinating at this point. I've been doing this so long. <laughs> this is six How hours in right now. What? How many more do we have to go through? Well, we can only we can do this one because these are all in the same series. Okay. One. So there's seven here. And then is that the last section? No, this is. We're getting up on hour six now. I know! And I have an hour, really. I have an hour. Because I work tomorrow. Yeah. I can't do a part three, y'all! We could do it. We could do it in an hour. Come on, let's go. Let's, let's okay. go. Okay. 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 I'm about there. Okay, Aurora ascending. Armageddon is only the beginning. Is this book one? This is book one. Doesn't look AI to me. Okay. Okay. The origin story in the first one. <laughs> Summary. Here it is. In 2552, the United Terran Federation governed the world. And Commander Elliot Greyjoy was a highly decorated officer and leader of a special operations hostage rescue team. But when the aliens from the planet Ether or Ather. Ather? Ather? I mean, it's not actually combined, so I'm going to say ether. Land on Earth for first contact. Elliot faces a new challenge as he tries to protect this world from the Ethereans. As the story unfolds, we meet Aurora, an orphan from Detroit, who bears a striking resemblance to the Ethereum princess Ember Peregrine. When Ember is assassinated and Ether occupies Earth, Elliot leads the evacuation of the planet and takes 15,000 of Earth's best to Safe Haven, a refugee camp on a distant planet. But Elliot's quest for revenge against the Ethereum Emperor who destroyed his world leads him on a dangerous mission, and he discovers that Aurora is actually the hidden sister of Princess Ember Peregrine. Together, they embark on a journey of discovery, facing space battles, fleet engagements, ship-to-ship -ship combat, and a little romance along the way. With the help of a stolen Ethereum ship, Thunderchild, and a smart-ass AI! I like those. And bot, and bot. Yeah, and bot! <laughs> They set out to stop the Ethereum Emperor's plans and save the universe from destruction. But can they overcome the challenges ahead and fulfill their destiny? Find out in Aurora's ending. There's a lot in here. Edric yeah. Peregrine II, the sociopathic sadistic... Oh, God. Okay, okay, okay. Give me something. What do you got? Oh, no. Uh-uh. That's an instant no for me. Nope. 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 Bye. Sorry. Nope. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Going. Disrupted reality. First is an anthology. No. Okay. 
USA Today best-selling author. I feel like some people lie about this. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. That is definitely yeah, our, one of the pictures yeah. down there. I think this is too, probably. Yeah. All right. If we all vote, this is AI art. I'm not even going to bother. Yep. Okay. We're all voting it. I'm not even going to bother. We're only giving space. Hayden's world. Oh, this is a collection. Huh? This is a collection? Oh. Well, you... it, yeah, it looks like an anthology. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Sorry. Moving on. <laughs> May have been a bestseller for a few minutes. <laughs> Next to Dean in the Wellspring. This looks potentially AI. Why is it like that? That's so weird. Uh, I don't know if it's AI or it's just like it. Why does it look like that? I'm so confused. It's like we haven't blended yet. We need to blend. The the um strand of hair there, as well as the, the forehead jewel thingy, looks very AI to me. Her eyebrow in particular is definitely giving AI with the way that it rests on her head. Oh, whoops. Oh, they posterized an AI picture. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. I was so confused just by the way that the shading, because it's like, where's your blending? Like, <laughs> yeah, so weird. All right, AI, bye. This is like such good training. Wait, we did this one. We already did this one. Ha ha. Ha ha. All right, this is not AI, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. Despite you. What do you think using it covers on Wattpad or Royal World? I don't think you should ever use AI, honestly, in my yeah, opinion. No, don't just do it. Just art. I, I, you, I would just use Canva for Wattpad. Use those kinds of things. Don't use AI because it's it's just stealing. It is just yeah. blatant theft. Um, it doesn't matter if you're making money off of it or not. You're still thieving. Yeah, that's that's my hot take on it. I don't think AI art should really even exist at this point. And I'm not even an artist. <laughs> exactly. I, AI is clever plagiarism. Yep. So, yeah, it's a no from me. A vicious terrorist attack happening on a core world. A traitor fleeing to the farthest corners of space. A secret mission to bring him to justice. When Dolores' most peculiar special agent team teams oh agent teams up with a group of quirky troublemakers, the goal is to wrap up the job, prove her worth, and leave the galaxy none the wiser. Instead, Captain Eleonora Salazar is forced to tangle with criminal overlords, the possible invasion of a long-thought dead alien species, and the tenacious but alluring Commander Haggerty. With her crew getting closer and closer to discovering her true identity, she finds herself caught between her duty to her queen and keeping her integrity. Is betraying herself and those who trust her the only way to bring peace to her home world? I'm interested. I don't, yeah, I don't hate it. I'm trying to, like, piece together because sometimes when I read out loud, I um, black out. Yeah, no, I get it. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what did I read? <laughs> it's not giving a lot. This is, oh, this is the one thing. I don't like when in synopsis you immediately tell me a love interest like here, but this, but alluring. It's not horrible, but it is a pattern that I see that I just, 
I'm not a fan of doing that. Yeah. Like me discover who the romance is, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not many reviews. Mm. All right, we have one three star, but they didn't leave anything. So I I'll put this on. Hell yeah. Oh, 4.93 on here. That's pretty good. Oh, it was just published this year, too. It's a new release. Okay. I got to put it on that bit, too. Hey. Okay. Hey. That's three. Wow. On this category. And we're on our last one. Holler. Holler. Hardly know her. Sorry. <laughs> All right. What do we got? Uh, can you hover over the wheels again for a second? AI. State your case. Uh, inconsistent shape of the wheels, inconsistent angle could of the wheels. could just be a shitty artist. The thing <laughs> is, the thing is, it's done in such a way that even a basic artist would be able to change it. They wouldn't make mistakes in that way. They would make mistakes in a different <laughs> Look at the artist. Uh, they, need picture, credit their, they need to credit their, their cover artists. Yeah. Be a thing. Texture looks at yeah, as well. I agree. Okay. Same. I'm learning. Hi, Drewster. <laughs> Sorry. Interesting. Okay. Well, bye. Bye. All right. Well, that concludes sci-fi. I did three. That's all. Three out of, what was that? Um. Oh, wait. Where's my... I think 18. Right over here. Yeah. 18. Yeah. No. 24. Oh, God. One more section. I am at 51 books. 51. And all we have left is the 18. That's what we've got. Okay. These three look like they're all in a series. They do. So that's good. Um, I think that's it. All right. So we have really 15 to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oops. I did weird things here. Is this the first one? This is the first one. On these black sands. She must trust. Best of num of book talk. Okay. I'm worried now. Yeah. Look, Talk and I don't get along. In a world of lies and betrayal, trust can be dangerous and alliances can turn deadly. Declan's years as captain have earned him both a ruthless reputation and a slew of enemies. Add in the council which lords over the pirates and the painful past that haunts him and he'd do anything to be free of these seas. Even search for a legendary dagger with the power to grant victory to the one who wields it. When a chance stop back home brings him the information he needs to finally find the blade, nothing will stop him from claiming it for himself. Until an irritating council heir stows away on his ship. Despite his crew's pleas, Declan can't shake his protective nature and agrees to see her safely to the next port. But when she turns out to be the key to his quest, he'll have to throw he'll have to set aside his hatred for her and her family or throw away his one chance at freedom. Is this daughter of the pirate king? Uh I hate it when they use Declan as a name too. Um it's 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 overdone for uh it? Yeah. This is like the second one today that we've seen. Where the I, dude's name is Declan. I don't recall another Declan. I do. <laughs> Who's the other Declan? 
Huh. Well, okay. It's, I'm not it's, really giving, it's giving me Daughter of the Pirate King and um, All the Stars and Teeth vibe. Yeah, I'm a little worried, but I'm not gonna... Slow burn glacial. Wait, I don't mind that. <laughs> Went from <laughs> zero to 100 and not in a good way. Oh. 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 <laughs> this is this is a you review. Yeah, <laughs> many eye rolls. I <laughs> skim the rest of the list and get it better. Mm. Well, oh, triggering read. Oh. What's the triggering? Sexual Inside assault, unwanted touching, kissing, victim oh, blaming. Oh, and victim blaming. Okay, bye. Yep, bye. Bye on that. Okay. The dead saint. Is that one of Medusa's snakes from that other book? Yes. Okay. Uh, does it does it just fade off into nothing? I don't I don't know. This is giving Sims. This is giving AI Sims. Like, the, the way the snake's head is specifically is giving Sims. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the circly bits in the back are what, what, what I'm thinking are AI. But I could be wrong. It might, it might be, it might not. I don't, yeah, I don't have enough. I wish I could see more on the bottom and like zoom in further on that. Yeah. Okay. The saint will rise. 51. That's a light. Well, see, I'm adding this to my general TBR. Um, my actual TBR is over a thousand books long. And that's books I own. Yeah. No, it's not. It's under, it's 900-ish now. Including all of the sequels? Yes. And your ebooks? No, it's not counting ebooks. You count ebooks, then yeah, we're over a thousand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> don't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> Scales don't quite match in segments? That could just be really shitty rendering. It could be. All right. The saint will rise. Sorcha. A priestess raised in the confines of the golden citadel and sheltered from the world knows nothing beyond her small sphere. Chosen to be the vessel for the saint, a living extension of a god now more legend than reality, she has had every desire fulfilled. Really? No one, not even Sorcha, truly believes she will be called on to perform the ancient magic necessary to resurrect the dead god. But war is raging on the continent, and a terrible horde is marching thousands of miles towards the citadel. As kingdoms fall and cities burn, a rumor spreads. The Empire is searching for the saint. Blood will flow. Adrian, known and feared as the wolf, has won one brutal victory after another for the Empire of the Snake. Reviled as a monster and leader of the Empire's elite killing force, he has been tasked with finding the woman capable of resurrecting a myth. He doesn't believe the legends about the saint or in the woman's ability to usher in a new era. But there is no room for failure, and time is running out as a mysterious illness strikes the court and threatens the life of the empress he's sworn to protect. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, Thog, these are all romance fantasies now. Or sci-fi fantasies, depending. Resurrection is coming. Only Sorcha can bring together the scattered relics and perform the magic necessary to resurrect the saint. But her value to the empire vanishes the moment the saint is reborn. Adrian will make every sacrifice to ensure the stability of the empire and the continued existence of those in power. 
Even if that means the death of the woman who has opened his eyes to the world beyond constant war. Together, they will face danger and have their loyalties tested. Choices must be made. Is Sorcha the woman the temple raised her to be? Is Adrian the heartless killer the empire created? Only the saint can decide. Okay, uh, don't... It's on a cliffhanger. What? It does say it's on a cliffhanger. That's fine. Okay. I don't. I don't care about cliffhangers. I just broke this. Wow, good job, me. I don't know. Nothing. Sometimes you, you you complain a lot about them. What cliffhangers? Yeah. No. Okay. I mean, I get emotional about it, but I don't hate yeah. them. Okay. I hate them if there's not a next book. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> That's what I get. Or if the cliffhanger doesn't make sense, or like if it's like an ill-placed cliffhanger. Yeah. Like the it cuts off way too soon, and I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Where's the rest of the book? Uh huh. If, if the arc hasn't finished, then I'm mad. Yeah, that makes sense. So it does say, yeah, on their on their site there is trigger warnings. No reviews on here. Where's your website, Catherine Tratner? Let's see if there's any. Are your trigger warnings? Uh, that's a red flag. <laughs> hey, I was born in Oklahoma. That's a red flag. <laughs> Where the heck? Where? Wait, this. Oh, my books. There we go. Dead Saint. Where are your trigger? Um, where are the trigger warnings? Here, you can guys look with me. It's huh. Did you just lie? Did you just blatantly lie? I'm gonna Google it. What's the name of the book? Is it wait? Maybe it's in extras. I don't know. No. What it's was the name of the dead, dead Saint. The Dead Saint. By Sierra Simone. No. no. Catherine Tratner. Oklahoma is just North Texas. I can't. I can't find any. Just Googling okay, so we're just lying about having trigger warnings. Okay. That's a bit yeah. upsetting. That is. That's very annoying. Maybe Goodreads. Let's see if Goodreads tells yeah. us. I um I don't know anything about Oklahoma or what it's like. Honestly, I'm not a big fan of most of what I know of Texas. Uh, but I also haven't been there myself for very long, except for to drive. There are zero reviews of this anywhere. Hmm. I'm gonna add it because I want to know now. I I can be their first review, but I can also be cruel. Uh huh. I'm going to add it. There's one. I will be its first reviewer. What? No Oklahoma is very, very flat. Oh. <laughs> oh, I don't like Texas. I will, I will not. No, thank you. I'm good. My best friend lives in Texas. I will never visit him. <laughs> My condolences, March. I hope you get better soon from your Texas-related disease. <laughs> All right, court crows. Is it a crow? Um, that tail looks Did awful it? pointy to me. Looks like a pointy crow. I saw the Google image that's giving Raven. Uh huh. I don't remember. What um. I had to Google. 
I maybe that feather maybe that's intentional. I think that's intentional. Okay. Inclusive crows. I am not really reading too much AI Me either. Yeah. Okay. If it is AI, it's a really good AI. A young queen in peril, a city under siege, an elven mercenary with a dark desire. 19-year-old Eris Talari has was never supposed to rule Brucia. She's always been more interested in swordplay than courtly intrigue. After her brother's assassination, however, Eris has no choice but to take up the crown. God, I'm so sorry. <sighs> and defend her city against an invasion led by an undefeated elven warlord. When Brucia's forces decimated and a siege looming, Eris needs help. Who better to repel the elven invaders than a band of elven mercenaries? Their leader, Ruith, is as charming as he is deadly and used to getting what he wants. 6,000 swords strong, his crows have a reputation for winning against impossible odds. He won't take a fight he can't win. And now he has his sights set on Eris. Is it her kingdom he wants or her? With assassins and traitors still lurking around every corner and an army nearly 20,000 strong at her gates, Eris cannot afford to turn away the crow's assistance. Even with their help, the battle for Brucia will be hard won. Yes, we know. She's the goddess of chaos. That's why in um, Create-A-Thon, our little terrier demon thing is called Eris because it's a creature of chaos. That makes sense. Yeah. Again, um, you say we have this on the author's website. If you lie to me one more time. <laughs> Perfect. This is great. Uh, this is none of that. Hell yeah. Okay. Now I'm more on board. I was worried there was going to yeah. be. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you named it. Duh, fuck. <laughs> Duh. Uh, what? Mm. Oh, this is tra they're transphobic. Oh. Trans rep? Trans rep. Oh, it's got to be added. Now, well, yeah, I just want to know more. Yeah. Who's the trans rep? That is that a list of uh yeah. Possible triggers. Or yeah, we... I need to see. Let's get Eliza Evelyn going to their website. Where is your website? Where is your website? <laughs> Maybe they mean like her author page on YouTube? On f Nope. Uh, I just tried to go to their Facebook. Uh, it's not available. Their Twitter? Or, I meant their author page on Amazon. Yeah, maybe. They're a bi author of queer fantasy romance, says their I'm Twitter loving. profile. No. No. About. Maybe about? I'm putting it on the list. Yeah. I forgot what it was called already. Is it a Court of Crows? Yes. Court of, court of Crows. Oh my gosh. <coughs> Let's see if anybody here has it.
There's a dog. There's a dog. A good dog? A good dog. And it stays alive? I don't know, but I'm hoping it does. I'll fight a motherfucker. I think Ruith might be a trans man. Maybe. Based on what I'm seeing, maybe it's Ruith that is that is trans. I would love it if one of the main romance characters is trans. Yeah. All right. It's going on there. Fuck yeah. Cool. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oops, I did it again. Whoops. Oops. Ah, did it again. Okay. Generic cover, number 40,000. Yep. In a black tank top. Oh, look at me. I'm so badass with my little tiny knives. A random little tiny chain. Dinky knives. What? I said little tiny dinky knives. Yeah. Looks like Kristen Stewart. Eh, a little bit. <clears throat> um, the pillars are, are kind of given AI, but not too bad. I, not definitive. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. Welcome to Elementals Academy, where magic oh. is the only hope of survival. Forbidden romance beckons and an ancient secret threatens to end it all. Summer Donovan thinks paying her way through her expensive private college is her biggest problem. She's about to find out how wrong she is. Because when the president of the most exclusive sorority on campus goes off the rails and bullies her, Summer defends herself with something she never knew she had. Magic. It turns out she's a witch. That's the only start. That's only the start of the, of the surprises in store for her. I had a... Okay, we're good. Soon after her magical breakthrough, Summer learns she's destined to attend Elementals Academy, an exclusive ghoul dedicated to witches descended from the Greek gods. At Elementals Academy, Summer finds the thing she's wanted her whole life, a place where she fits in. Although that doesn't last long, thanks to her magic not working the way it's supposed to and no one knowing why. But her biggest challenge isn't schoolwork or magic. It's Zane Caldwell, the iciest, most attractive, and most mysterious student at school. Despite the way Zane's warm to her one minute and cold the next, Summer feels an irresistible draw to him. While struggling to understand her feelings for Zane, Summer soon discovers she has another problem, one far more dangerous. There are secrets lurking within the hallowed halls of Elementals Academy, and she may hold the key to unraveling them if she can survive long enough and figure out who to trust. This is giving Hex Hall by Rachel Hawkins. Yeah, anything, any, anytime it's an academy of whatever supernatural thing, mm -hmm. uh, I kind of lose interest, personally. I, I, I lost interest while reading it. It's elementals. I mean, that's something that I, anytime elementals are used, that's giving me in seventh grade. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what it's giving <laughs> Kind of a self roast, but like, yeah. I literally, the first book I ever wrote was called The Elementals. Yeah. Yeah. This is a no. That's a no for me. Whew, okay. We've got The Pr Princess Avenger. Mm, the sleeve. Fading into the cloak like that gives yeah. AI. The buildings the give building AI. Building. Ooh, we have purple eyes. That's also very 13-year-old me. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't like this. Definitely AI. Yeah, look at the way that hair goes on. That, mm, yeah, no. Uh -huh. Nope. 11 books? Holy shit. Jesus. All right. Oh, I'm going to hate this, I bet. I bet you all hate this. Yeah. I bet you I'm going to hate this. Oh. Those veins, though. 
on his fucking arm. Oh, shit! Oh! <laughs> Jesus Christ! Hydrate, my good sir! Hydrate! <laughs> and uh, how does his belt, like, perfectly... How sails do you need? Sorry. No, you're good. You're good. Uh, those sails look AI to me. Yeah, because there's like 40,000 of them! Yeah. What the hell? Oh, it's book two, by the way. Also this. Faded Mates Insta-Love Fantasy Romance. I'm out <laughs> anyway. I am so out. Outie. Outie. Oh, boy. Kingdom of Sand and Stars. Mmm, dubious hair. I was just, like, the hair is... Dubious indeed. Well, the hand isn't even actually holding that feather, for, or the, the flower, not feather. And the thumb kind of blends into the sand line. I don't even, that's not even the, that's just the sand. I think the thumb is, the thumb's not even there. Oh, that's a weird tangent. <laughs> Look at her backpack. Oh, there's some weird artifacting on that uh, uh, pyramid back there. And the backpack lines are kind of wonky. I would say AI. Look at the, the, the pyramid in the back there. Oh, this one? Yeah, oh. random texture. Curve, curvature, curvature. Yeah. Curvature on that pyramid. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Giving off not like other girl vibes. Because she's got a flower glue to her thigh. <laughs> purple dragon! Oh, purple wyvern. Maybe. Wait, what? What is the anatomy of this? AI. Okay, that's a wing that goes... Okay, okay, that's falling in the wing. It's got wing and arm on that side, but wing arm... No arm on this side. side. Yeah, what the... AI. God damn! Dude! AI anatomy. AI anatomy. Yeah. Why? Why would you do that to your poor baby dragon? That's unfortunate. <coughs> Ugh! Come on! Give me something better than generic purple girl on the cover! This is giving, um, Mal from Disney's Descendants, but sci-fi, but also Xenon. <laughs> Dude is even focused with the animal. Right? That's so much hair. Like, girl. Do you have a hair tie? Also, you have two not. different guns. She's not Can't like other thigh girls. gap. Can't forget that thigh gap. What? I, I said she doesn't need a hair tie. She's not like other girls. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. When the love of my life ghosted me, I reinvented myself as the best smuggler in the rebellion because uh, uh, it can change me. Yep, throne of glass pose. When the when that ex returns and claims he wants me back, I show him the exit hatch. But just when I think I'm free of him again, he's assigned to my crew, along with a shy techie, a flirty bounty hunter, a demanding soldier, and a caring doctor. Is this reverse harem? This is well, crap. Now I'm trapped on a tiny spaceship with these men on a deadly quest to save the galaxy from a centuries-long war. It doesn't matter how tempting they look. We're on a mission, and there's no room for emotions to screw it up, especially when Flynn and it broke my heart already and will again. No. Uh-uh. This is a why. It's a why choose. Yeah. Why choose reverse harem? Yeah. She just no. selected them. No. I hate this. No. Nope. Like, polyamory is wonderful. Reverse harem or harem polyamory is... Oh, no! This one has a broken when day breaks. 
Yellow Lamar. It has a broken link. The idea of hair and po polyamory defeats the entire point of polyamory to begin with. Yeah. <laughs> What's it called? People try to say, like, it's the best of both worlds. And I'm like, no, it's the worst, actually, of both. <laughs> Here it is. Yeah, their link is broken. Link is broken on the next one. Or this one. Um, it's just so pixelated. Uh, wait, hover over the, uh, the thing in the background. Hmm. Funny enough, I don't think it is. I don't think it is. It matches. Yeah. It's just very poorly. Yeah. Hi, Cheryl. Hi. Welcome to real chaos time here. Whew. Kidnapped and thrust into a harrowing existence, I find myself at the mercy of a mysterious figure who possesses a chilling ability to exchange minds. His power is unsettling, overshadowing my very essence as he assumes control, leaving me oh. trapped within the recesses of my own consciousness, a silent observer to his actions. But amidst the suffocating darkness and despair, something unexpected stirs within me as my captor influence a captor's influence gradually intertwines with my own. I witness a startling transformation, driven by an unconventional love. My captor's once brutal actions begin to wane, replaced by a growing tenderness that defies logic and expectation. As the I mean, weight of my brother's desperate mission to rescue me presses upon my mind, I confront an impossible choice that threatens to shatter my world. Will I abandon the captor who has ceased his reign of terror in exchange for my affection? Or will I seize the chance of, for freedom, risking the torment of countless others at hand? Hello, Stockholm. And I you're right. This, oh, this is disgusting. No. Stockholm. Book two of 20 books. can be read independently though yeah uh yeah no mm -mm. nope okay last Final six orc lord <laughs> orc lordy <laughs> orc lord look at him <laughs> my pedro pascal orc he's back <laughs> wait did i already do this one you did yeah Oh, I did. Did I add Orc Lord? Uh, either that or we 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 just bitched about it. Wait, I where did we? Where, it. Wait, was it was it in the featured? Where was it before? Uh, no, I think we were just looking. I think it was after our stream, and we were looking at the rest of them to see. Oh, we were just looking at them. Okay. Yeah. Um. Oh, okay. However, the background is giving AI, and so is the texture of his jacket. Oh. Oh, but I want to read about Orc Lord. <laughs> but he's Orc Lord. <laughs> I mean, we can read the synopsis. Okay, I want to read it. I want to read it because I think it's going to suck. <laughs> An Orc Crime Lord, a healer caught between family loyalty and a forbidden soulmate. The twisted threat forcing them to take a final stand. In hiding from a powerful Fey Lord, an Orc Warrior crashes through my front gate. Blowing my disguise and triggering the loathed soul bond. I oh. want to will submit to him whether oh. I like it or not. <laughs> but despite being one of Sienna City's three crime bosses, Lord Scythro has honor. He swears to protect me if I obey. He's controlling, possessive, and determined to keep me safe, even if it means keeping me captive! But my enemy circles and the secrets of my hidden heritage rise up and threaten the peaceful life I've built. It's time to step out of the shadows, even if that means exchanging freedom for an orc lord's chains. <gasps> no! <laughs> wow. I thought the last one was Stockholm. <laughs> this Are is full sure on non-consent. 
it it also says to to check the content warning uh, in the book. It automatically opens to chapter one, but scroll back. March, we're throwing up because Orc Lord is Stockholm syndrome bait Wait, type where is bullshit. It? Content, content warning is really it. I am a morally gray author, I can tell. Uh huh. Uh, these mofos gate, but the feather monkey. Okay. Adam Torture dubbed not non con, oppressive uh, sexist. No. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, Mart, we just read a terrible, terrible, terrible synopsis that made us die. I will submit to him whether I like it or not. No, that's not okay. That's not okay. No, 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 no. Have I mentioned no? No, no, no. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Okay, okay. Interrupting Starlight. Okay, not AI. Look it. Doesn't look AI. (coughs) The human composed a song in his heart, a pull he couldn't ignore, a draw that demanded further exploration. When he answered a distress call, Leden hadn't expected to find one of the invaders waiting for him. The tug he feels on his soul is even more surprising, drawing him closer to the woman in spite of her humanity. Both his second in command and Arch, how do you say that? His companion Mogha seems fine with leaving her behind and letting the desert deal desert deal with the problem, but he's not so sure. Essa. Tessa, Tessa. Tessa has spent the last two years hoping far away, far away off the harsh four. Oh my God. Do I yeah. read? I'm fine. Hoping for a way off the harsh desert planet where her research vessel crashed, watching her friends die one by one and befriending a strange creature of the sand. But when a rescue ship does arrive, she realizes she might have been better off lost. The Corthans, savage aliens bent on destruction of humankind, aren't happy to find her. And yet, despite her fear, she can't deny the pull she feels towards one of them. Corthans have only have one chance to find a true mate. But chasing after the human could risk the safety of the colony he swore to protect. Even though the call of a mating bond demands a higher loyalty, Leden never expected to have to choose. This book was previously published in Pets in Space 4. What? Pets in Space? What? <coughs> this, uh-huh. it's giving, uh, you know, Ice Planet Barbarians. Except it's Sand Planet Barbarians. Yeah. Um, although, I, I don't know. It seems to have more plot than Ice Planet Barbarians. True. This, this seems like it could actually potentially be okay. Yeah. Maybe. Like, it has room to be okay. <laughs> Come on, give me some tea! God damn. Uh, leaves you hanging, whatever, that's fine. Oh, refuse to pay for a book done in serial format! Uh, it was only a hundred and something pages. Yeah, that's fine. Let's give it a shot. Let's do it. At least it's not faded mates. It's just a uh, yeah, like like purely monogamous race of some sort, I guess. Yeah. All right. Anybody? Anybody? Nope. Okay. All right. Excuse me. There we go. Look at that. I feel like yesterday I was adding a ton more books than I am today. Am I more, uh, like, I don't know. Am I bitchier today? I don't know. 
I think we are taking a closer look at the covers for AI. That's true. Four more. Unknown identity. The Silver Moonstone Pack. Oh no. Oh no. Hold on. We're, we're not on the same page as you. Oh god. There we go. I'm worried we've got Omegaverse going on here. This looks... Hi! <laughs> Discount Milo Ventimiglio? Okay. Yeah. Um, I know someone IRL that looks like that. <laughs> I think this is just stock photos plastered yeah. on top of each other. Yeah. With, with All right. Okay. All right. Get ready for Omegaverse again, I bet. Give it. She has no memories of her past, but is haunted by nightmares. She is embraced, welcomed, and treated back to health by a seemingly normal community, though she knows they hold secrets from her. Can she trust him enough to... Who? You said the community. You didn't say a him yet. Can she trust him enough to start a new life with him? What will happen if her memories are restored? She can't run from her past for forever, or can she? Kane. Wait, who? There's, who's she? I think we forgot. Okay, Kane. Betrayed by those closest to him, he questions when he will be ready to take over his pack. He should have already been the alpha, but tradition has held him back. When he meets a woman in distress, will he be able to open his broken heart and help her start a new life? He may lose her before he even has a chance as the worst betrayal of all strikes. As the alpha son, he has his duties to his pack and businesses. Businesses before all. <laughs> this is exactly those short movies I was telling you. <laughs> There's book warnings, okay. A lot darker than they thought. Please check the one on the list for this title. Mm. What? Okay, well, tell me what the triggers warnings are so I don't have to go look for it myself. Oh, yeah, there is rape. Uh-uh. You know, bye, 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 bye. Three more, and I don't have a lot of hope for them. That one automatically looks like it's going to be AI. Or a screenshot from a 90s video game? <laughs> Why is this so bad? What the hell? It's so bad. It is. Oh, there was child torture too? Yeah, I did not. I, I saw rape and went boom, bye. What would you do if you woke up in another realm where the residents are beings from fictional tales? Where all those things that go bump in the night are real and other realities do exist! Double exclamation point. Damaris Max just woke up in a world where all those things that go bump in the You said it already. An alternative realm where the residents are beings she thought only existed in fiction. Will she find a way to keep norm life normal or and simple for the unknowing without losing her own sanity? All she has to do now is find a way to protect people in her world from the nightmares that have fled over from another realm. Fulfill a prophecy that says she's their huntress queen or doom both worlds to a bleak and violent existence. I don't care about this. Yeah, no. I don't care about it. Sorry. It's nope. like there was no effort given in the blurb. No, none at all. <laughs> all right. Memory lost. Not AI. Not AI. Okay. All right. In the planet Tatrix in the Dane system, Cooper Hadley has made it to the top in his underground world. He's the security chief of the Tunnel Corps, as well as a patrician, the most privileged class in the kingdom. But when politics force him to marry, he needs a bride. The perfect candidate is Y. Botero, his one-time best friend. But Y is a drone, a member of the lowest class, and she has hated privileged Cooper for 10 long years, ever since he threatened to have her recycled. Damn. <laughs> Permanently. Y is hiding a terrible secret about where her loyalties really lie. If she ends up in a fake marriage with the sec chief, what will happen when he finds out who she really works for? As the physical attraction between the two of them grows, the two slowly learn to trust, but will it be too late? After all, the supernova is coming. Uh, I don't hate it.
Mm. Wait, a movie? No, oh, no. They're just like, a movie would be rad. Wondering why it's called memory, though. Yeah. Friends to enemies and lovers of the chest. I don't like that his name is Cooper. That seems exceedingly bland for a, a sci fi. Uh huh. Okay. This one, I don't, I don't hate it. It's kind of giving me, um, Orbit's Winter's Orbit. Uh, Just not gay. Yeah, I can see it. Straight Winter's Orbit is what I'm getting. So let's let's throw it on there because I think that's going to be the last one that's going to make it because I do not think the next one's going to make it. Oh, Thog would try it out and they don't like romance. Boom. Adding it. Okay. All right. We are on our final book. Dangerous Bond. <laughs> <laughs> Mated to the alien universe. Give him uh -huh. thoughts. It's, again, this is Justin Bieber. I think this is just straight off of one of his album covers or whatever. Is that not Justin Bieber? I think that might be Justin Bieber. <laughs> they just do pop up. <laughs> He's as cold as the void of space. Soulless warrior Drex has been cast out of the Detian Legion. Eking what? Ecking out an emotionless life on the edge of the galaxy, he knows his days are numbered. There's no future for a man who's already sacrificed everything. Then he rescues Pippa, and his whole world ignites. She can fix any machine, but can she fix him? Oh. Pippa all the uh -huh. machines that keep nebula outposts floating in space, but Drex isn't so easy to figure out. But the more time she spends with him, the more she's eager to know. When tragedy strikes, Pippa and Drex are the only people who can solve the case. Every clue only leads to more questions and even more danger. But Pippa can't walk away from the mystery or from Drex. He might call himself soulless, but she sees the heat in his eyes. The only question is, will the conflagration burn them to cinders or ignite a bond that lasts a lifetime? This is straight up fantasy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, also... Yes, I think that actually is like just a picture of Justin Bieber. No, I yeah, I legitimately believe that is a Justin Bieber like picture, a very famous Bieber picture. I literally, if I judge, I'm just gonna Google him images. If I fucking find it within the first goddamn page, I'm gonna lose it. Oh, it's, is it one of his? Is it? Is it, is it a Calvin Klein ad? What? Hold on. I saw something similar. It's one of these. It's got to be one of these ads. I'm like, uh, he's like. <laughs> Christ. I don't, why am I looking at Justin Bieber? <laughs> I don't want to be looking at this. I know, he's all over my fucking uh, really? Swear to God, I know this photo. <laughs> I'm purposely drawing harder at the moment. <laughs> oh my God. Where is it? Oh God, okay, I'm done looking, but I swear to God, that is an actual photo of Justin Bieber, which I think they could, like, suit. Like, this person could get sued for using. I don't yeah. know if it is, or maybe it's just a really good look-alike. Or something. 
hate the name Pippa and Drex. It's it's Drex or is it Drex? <laughs> okay. Well, I will say that there's a bunch of people um, who are making fun of his ads, um, and they're hilarious. Uh, but anyways, go ahead. We got my favorite number. Forty-two. No. Oh. Which That's one? The universe and everything. Out of a hundred and ninety-nine books from actually 197 books as I'm not going to count mine. Uh-huh. I have TBR'd 57. 57. Yeah, that's my favorite number. Why is that your favorite number? Cuz it's weird. Oh, okay. Cuz it's a prime and like nothing gets to it and it's cool. It's yeah. a fun number. Yeah. 57. Which, what's the percentage? Well, 57 divided by 199? Only 28.6% of the books in this book fair made it onto my TBR. Wow. Oh, wait, I did that wrong. No, no, no. Yeah, because that's it at 197. 28.9. 29%. Cuz we're not counting my own books. <laughs> hey, yeah. 57 figures into your whip. Oh, does it? Does it indeed. So, there we have it. And we did it just in time too. I have to go to bed. That was 7 hours. 7 hours plus yesterday. <sighs> We spent We're entirely too long. 13 hours there. in total then. Because yesterday I yeah. did six hours. Yeah. I started an hour earlier today. Rough. Wow. Well, there it is. We'll be on again tomorrow for regularly scheduled stream and productivity sprints. Tomorrow. Hey. We won't have to do this again, but I hope you know everybody could find some new books for their TBRs, even if we disagree on the yeah. books. I think a lot of us agreed on most of them, though, I will say. <laughs> <laughs> I think there was a lot of agreeing here. Um, mm -hmm. Again, if I made fun of something that you personally like, don't take that personally. It is just my own opinions of what I like for my TBR. Um, yeah, I don't think any of us are going to really judge you, really, for your taste. No. Unless, read know. whatever you want. I don't care. Maybe you do read Literatica. I don't care. Yeah. I don't care. Read whatever you want. Just don't lie about it. <laughs> don't yeah. lie to, don't recommend it to me to and lie about it. Yeah. That's what I don't like. You're like, oh, it's a clean romance and it's just straight up smut. That will piss me off. <laughs> but if you did find something you're like, I want you to read it, the viewer pool link is in the description. My Kofi page is in the description. You can commission me to read stuff or just donate because I just spent 13 hours looking through every single one of these books. Yeah. A lot of my time when I should have been doing other things. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> y'all have a lovely night. Thank you, Fee, for joining me on this adventure. And Saru, thank you for joining us in suffering through a lot of stuff. That was. <laughs> Oh, but we did find some interesting things. We, we found did. some bangers. I yeah. found 57 bangers. So oh, yeah. well, potential bangers. I got to actually read them and then I'll let you know. So maybe I'll do like a recap video later when I finally read all 57 of these. Yes. And uh, I'll put them in their own special list on my spreadsheet so I can track them. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. Cool. Have a lovely night, everybody. See you tomorrow if you're going to join us. I'm hitting the button.